this shirt, I ain't telling you to tuck in your privates. My clothes express my individuality. Stop trying to census me. How about this? It says material girl with a hint of like a virgin. What the hell are you talking about? You know, Madonna. Lady Gaga's grandma? If we weren't in public, I'd smack you right in your stupid mouth. Teen troubles, Cookie? Oh, hey, Annabelle. You know how it is with teenagers. Can't live with them, can't drown them in the river. Well, we can't all be super parents. How do they fit, darling? Like I'm wearing miracles, Mother! What's with Billy Elliot over there? That's my son, Donnie. He's testing a pair of dance pants for this year's Regina's Got Talent competition. Regina's Got Talent? It's a performing arts contest. No, I'm asking. Regina's Got Talent? Yes. And my Donnie's won three years in a row. Right, Superstar? Ain't you two a pair? More like a team. It's amazing what happens when you don't threaten your children with abuse. Hey, me and Teresa are a team, too. Well, Twinkie, your teammate just abandoned you. Teresa, get back here right now, or so help me, I'll hug you so hard. Why do you want me to sign up for a talent show, Ma? I thought about what you said in the store. You were right about expressing your individuality, and this is a great way to do it. So it's a wet t-shirt contest? You got a beautiful singing voice, Teresa, and I want you to share it with the world. <sighs> My nose is crying. I'm not used to you saying nice things about me. Well, get used to it, teammate, because you deserve it. Take it easy, Ma. Who knows what's in that blood? Jimmy, what are you doing here? Regina Tourism sponsors this event, so I gotta sit here and sign up all the wannabes and losers. Well, Teresa's signing up. Did I say losers? I meant shining stars of tomorrow. <laughs> you guys are the best! You're talented too, Gina, but this contest ain't for you. Pop, I got no intention of entering Regina's Got Assholes. Well, that's good, because you can't. What do you mean, can't? Age limit's 10 and over. You're too young, so you can't. 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 Let it can't. go, Gina. Can't. There's some things can't. you can't do. Can't. Can't. This ain't one of them. Can't. 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 Shut up! Now, McCool, just because my daughter's in this, I don't want you showing any favoritism. Unless you're open to that. In which case, I can make it worth your while. Do you know why I've been asked to judge this contest three years in a row, Jimmy? Because no one else will do it? And my integrity. I am unbribable. I'm always the bribe's maid, never the bribe. <laughs> Toby for Jimmy. Toby for Jimmy. Hey, Toby, what's up? Toby for Jimmy. Come in, Jimmy. <sighs> Go for Jimmy. Oh, there you are. Aren't these headsets amazing? Anyway, I have terrible news! Turns out Dick Clark is dead. We need a new MC! Did someone say MC? Have you ever MC'd before, Uncle Cheech? I certainly have, young lady. If any of you's got any allergies, whip out your EpiPens, cause here comes Peanut Butter Cookie! Sorry I'm late. I had to finish the word parts for my first number. Number? It's like the one I sang at Uncle Luigi's thing, remember? He's shaking his ass just sharp as a knife. It's non-stop booty, just don't tell his wife. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it at Club Afterlife. Yeah. Yeah! Wait till they hear my new song, Labia of Love. Teresa, honey. The judges want to hear classics. Then I'll sing one of my classy ballads, like Angel with the Fake Tits. You cried when I sang it at Christina's communion. We all did, honey. But if you want to make it past the first round, you gotta keep things wholesome. Okay, I'll try. But let's not go overboard. Of course not! Now tape down your boobs and put on this nun's outfit. Now to help us forget the human pretzel practically licking his own balls, Here's our next act, g Doll and Enviro Pete. Now remember, I'm not your sister, I'm a doll. You sure are. Thanks for encouraging me to do this. My unique brand of edutainment is just what the people need. Shut the f up. 
We're on. Hey, G-Doll. Do you know why the ecosystem is in so much trouble? Because the owners of big factories are a bunch of dummies. Just like me. <sighs> Talk about an ecosystem. <laughs> Remember, everyone, think globally, act jokily. The ventriloquism's quite impressive, but the material's atrocious. Bring back the ball liquor! <laughs> It's only 60 pounds. Cause you'll have a great old time at the good old ball game. Stay neutral, old chap. Stay neutral. Looks like Teresa might make it through to the next round. And it looks like you might be crapping your pants. Well, get ready to eat it. Next up, we got a three-time winner, a one-man dance armada. And a true patriot. Let's give a warm vagina welcome to Nani Westminster! It's freaking amazing! Makes that nun's routine look like a bowl of piss! That nun was Teresa! Oh, sorry. This kid makes Teresa look like a bowl of piss. You want us to fix the talent contest? Not the whole contest, just that freaking Donnie! He's unbeatable! Then I guess we'll have to beat some beatable into him. Anyone asks, I've been here all day. You have been here all day. Exactly. Cook, I'm not hurting a kid over a contest. Unless there's a cash prize. How much are we talking? It's a trophy and bragging rights. What am I, an amateur? And trust me, no one in that show is going to do any bragging. Especially that boring nun. She's next on my list, Cook. That's Teresa! You want to end this contest or not? Okay, forget it. I guess I'll just have to be a better mother and put way more pressure on Teresa. Everywhere that matters. Stay on the high note. The high note! I don't believe the lamb's following, Mary. Convince me! Visualize your goals! Reactualify your happitude! You're just making those words up. Don't talk back to your life, Coach Muffin Top. This is un excuse my language freaking acceptable, Mother. Why didn't you hire me a life coach? Uh, I never... Never wanted me to win? Obviously. Ugh, I'm getting flushed. Fan! Donnie, you have nothing to worry about. Too dry. Spritz! Oh, are you trying to drown me? Donnie, calm down. Teresa's good, but you're better. I guess I'm gonna have to handle this because you're more useless than a donated appendix. Oh, Donnie. Fly like a dove. It's a labia of love. Hey, we agreed. No original songs! But I'm almost done writing it. I just need something that rhymes with reach around. Do you want to win this thing or not? Original songs, eh? <gasps> that gives me an idea. Go get the car, Annabelle. In <laughs> five, six, seven, eight. God help you if I get to ten! We barely squeaked into this round, Gina, so we really have to nail it. Don't forget. Be the message. Sure thing, Petey. Folks, if you need to use the crapper, now's a good time. Because it'll smell better than this next act. I hate this guy. Oh. By the way, I changed our name. Oh, it's nice you're getting involved. Please welcome Little G. That's fun. And Dick Bart. Gina. Uh, ahem, <clears throat> okay. Hey, Little G. Tell us what you know about fracking. That's when you dig a hole in the backyard and fart in it. <laughs> then this cracking loser shoves his head in and sniffs. <laughs> right to the kisser. <laughs> oh, jokes aside, 
Um, do you know the size of your carbon footprint, little G? Two inches, just like your dick. <laughs> Gina, cut it out. Yes, um, carbon emissions should be on everyone's minds. Along with the polar ice caps. Yes, thank you. Do you know why the ice caps are melting? Because you jerk off in the shower? <laughs> you ask me out, Donnie? I like you, Teresa. You're a good kid, and I want to give you some advice about the biz nasty. I got it directly from Al Pacino, as acting coach's website. Wow, you are connected. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've slept my way around the entertainment block, sweetheart. Had my fair share of mouthies, VTs. VTs? Oh, vagina touches. <laughs> so naive. Donnie, have you ever actually been with a girl? Are you kidding? Any more tangy poon for me and my G-spot's just gonna fall right off. What part of this is the advice? This part. If you want to stand out from the crowd, you need to do something original. You mean like an original song? Yes! Oh! But who has those, right? I, I do. I write my own songs. You do? And you're not singing them? Um, are you trying to lose? But I promised Ma I'd wait until I won. Waiting's for tables, baby. Speaking of which, who do I gotta blow jam to get another shake around here? <laughs> Petey, we always laugh at you, but who knew you had real comedy chops? When that creepy troll doll accused you of clear-cutting the cheese. Oh, my ribs, Petey, my ribs. Gina, you should have seen this kid. He's a natural. Yeah, but his material's a little highbrow for Gina here. Now, let's not forget about the environmental message. I'm an edutainer, first and foremost. The reviewer says you've redefined the fart of self-deprecating humor with refreshing brilliance. Um, I heard the dummy's pretty hilarious, too. Yeah, but without Petey, there's no act. It's just a hideous little puppet. Ooh, creepiest thing I ever seen. What's the G stand for, anyway? Grotesque? I thought it was just, God help me. No, it stands for, guys, look what just fell out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> now that we eliminated all the riffraff, it's time to hit the snooze button for the opposite of entertainment, Teresa Meduga. It's super drama, Fraggle Rock spaghetti is delicious. Ah. Forget that crap! Regina, make some noise! Clap <gasps> your hands, come on! Ah, oh, ah, oh, yeah! This is a Teresa McDougal original Christmas jam! It's called Bust Your Chestnut on an Open Fire! There's a super cool guy made of big snowballs, and he's having a bush party for all y'all! Frosty's his name, and be a chill is his game! I don't know what's sadder, how hard you tried or how badly she's failing. So get your butts to the bonfire. This is a race. He's gonna bust some Christmas cheer all over your face. Snip my foreskin and color me Jewish because Christmas is dead to me. Relax, Ma. I made it through to the next round, didn't I? Only by the skinny of teeth, thanks to that humpy dog act getting disqualified. <laughs> Toby, for security! Toby, for security! Where are you, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell told you to do your own song? Donnie, he told me to be original. Teresa Falcone, you got played! My song got played, and once I find a rhyme for Reach Around, I'ma be dropping another sound bomb, yo! Now the only way we'll beat Annabelle is if Donnie gets kneecapped. So that's why you made me enter this, to beat Donnie's mom? Who's playing who, Ma? I wasn't playing ya. I was encouraging ya. By making me dress like a nun and sing about baseball? You were a nun trying to keep orphans off drugs by getting them into sports. It's called a backstory, Teresa. You know what? You're in this for you, not for me. Teresa, wait! Ah, oh, balls. You're welcome, Mother. Once again, I solved the problem. Now, can you handle getting me a smoothie, or is that too much for you, you dried up old cow? Oh, and I'm gonna need a new phone, because this one's broken! 
I freaking hate other people's kids. Kickball change and a funky hips. Eye on the prize. Eye on the prize. No, 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 no. Who's a bad boy? That's me. Who's a bad boy? That's me. How do girls pee? Who knows? Do the running man. Go, Donnie. Go, Donnie. It's about time. You best have my smoothie. Hey, who, who are you? No. No! Are you ready, little G? What do I know? I'm just a dummy. Dick Fox! Say, little G, I bet you have something funny to say about me and the terrible effects of nanopollution. <laughs> little G? <laughs> Do you have a frog in your throat? <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, frogs in mountainous areas are most affected by climate change. What do you think about that, little G? Make the troll talk! Come on, say something! Yeah, make the gargoyle emasculate you! <laughs> I'm a gargoyle? This from a guy with a baboon's ass for a face! <laughs> Does old McDonald know you left the farm, you f***ing donkey? <laughs> hey, McCool, a shot says pardon me? Pardon me? Oh, oh, I see what you did. Hey, everyone, the gremlin called me a shark. <laughs> Stop the show. Look who I found out by the dumpster. Uh, Donnie, I've been knee-banged. Calm down, everyone. I'm a police officer. I'll get to the bottom of this. Donnie, tell us who banged you. I was out back waiting forever for my mother to bring me my smoothie when someone ran up and hit me right in my knee. My dancing knee! Did you recognize the assailant? He was wearing a mask. You mean she was wearing a mask? How could you, Ma? Yeah, how could you? I had dibs. Me? I had nothing to do with this admittedly fortunate turn of events. Oh, right. So when you said the only way I'd win is if Donnie got kneecapped, you were being psychic. Oh, my God, Ma, are you psychic? She's a witch! Is someone going to call an ambulance? Cookie, I'm afraid I'm going to have to inquire as to your wear up. <laughs> Shart. So good. <clears throat> anyway, where were you when this happened? I was nowhere near Donnie. I was backstage working on Teresa's song. I even found the rhyme you were looking for. Just reach around and make a happy sound. Huh? Why did you finish my song for me? Donnie may have been playing you, but he was right. You gotta be yourself. Stop upstaging me! It's my time to shine! Mine! None of this would have happened were it not for the incompetent shrew who birthed me. Donnie, don't. Shut your kale hole. If you'd have been there on time with my smoothie, you could have taken the hit for me. But you didn't. Why? Because you're a selfish, greedy, evil... <laughs> Fine! It was me! And I would have got away with it if I didn't just hit him again in front of everyone. Damn it! <coughs> Kneecapping your own kid? That shit is cold. I'll tell you what's cold. Diva Donnie making me walk beside the car on the way home from his singing lessons in the dead of winter because I was taking up too much oxygen. Oh, I could go on! He's a monster! Mother, how could you? Oh, shut up, you fucking drama queen. You know, we may not have the best relationship, but at least we're not these clowns. I love you. I love you too, Bob. Aw, now you got my nose crying. Not so fast, madam. A real crime has been committed. I have no choice but to arrest... Oh, the results are in. This year's winner of Regina's Got Talent is... Dick Fart and Little G! What? Who's Little Dick and G Fart? <laughs> you said I was too young to enter, but I did, and I won! Take that, you mother... Porky's Revenge! It's alive! Run! Run for your life! <laughs> but Canada, where even the most heroic must sometimes flee in terror! <laughs> oh, so everyone gets a shot but Cheech? It's my oh. turn, kid. <laughs> 
Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, former good fella currently freezing his ass off in Canada. Back in the old life, I never saw snow. And I don't mean drugs. I delegated that to Big Blow Belucci. I'm talking real snow. Jimmy complained about the cold. I want you guys to make it summer around here. Thought it was calling for a huge snowstorm. Not that I'm complaining. It worked. From now on, it's gonna be summer all the time. Except Christmas. I like a white Christmas, but warm. Capiche? I love New York in November. I look dolphin! <laughs> Palm trees in New York? If global warming means the end of the world, so be it. Hey, Rocco, that counts as a break. Now I live in Regina, where global warming ain't hit yet. It snows all the freaking time here. I mean, it never stops. Don't worry, Jimmy. I got your back. Cheech, what the hell are you doing? There's too many snowflakes. I can't get them all. Tell them all I went down fighting. If you think I can even remember what summer feels like, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. You two-timing son of a bitch! What's her name? I don't know what you're talking about! What? <coughs> hey! Oh, you have been working out? Oh. Uh. Say hello to the devil when you meet him, you two-timing greaseball! <gasps> I just took the last soda! What? Ah. Jimmy, Cookie, for God's sake, the entire neighborhood can hear this hullabaloo. Jimmy's cheating on me, McCool. Let me shoot him. Cookie, I surveil Jimmy regularly, and I can assure you he's doing nothing of the sort. Though he did glance at a copy of Jug Lover's Quarterly at the gas station. Shame, shame. The feds won't forward my subscription. Don't you see? Cookie's busy with the kids, you're busy with your job. When's the last time you two spent some quality time together? Does drunk angry sex at 3 a.m. count as quality? It barely even counts as sex. Heed my words, quality time is the key to a happy marriage. This, from a bachelor whose best friend is a fucking horse. Cook, why would you think I'm cheating on you? Because you snuck out last night. I would have chased you, but the ambient was kicking in. I swear on the soul of my mother, that wasn't me. Then who was it? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. Wanna grill the kids? I'll get the waterboard. No, we gotta catch them in the act. Like when Gina stole money from my wallet. She won't be doing that again. Look at you slaving away! How much is Dad paying you for this? Five bucks. Five bucks? You're getting screwed by the man. He's inside, nice and warm, and you're out here freezing your ass off for no money like a sucker. I like helping out. You're getting exploited. And so are all these other kids. <laughs> Sounds like you're developing a social conscience, Gina. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But I'll tell ya, if anyone's doing any exploiting around here, it's me. So it's Cheech sneaking around. Sorry I punched you in the face, Jimmy. I don't remember that. You were sleeping. That explains the loose tooth. Look at Cheech's clothes. In the old days, he only ever dressed up to pull a job. That knucklehead's gonna get us all in trouble. We better follow him. How are we supposed to do that if he's got the car? 
I know we're probably following Cheech on some depraved crime spree, but this is fun! This is what McCool was talking about! I got a bicycle seat up my ass! How exactly is this fun? Why didn't you just take Petey's bike? I thought this was Petey's bike! It's worse than we thought! Cheech is going into a crack den! Nah, nobody dresses up for a crack den. It's probably just a whorehouse. We gotta get Cheech out of there before he gets pinched. Let's do this nice and quiet. Ah, screw it. Let's just do it loud and mean. Yeah! Jimmy, what are you doing here? Me? What about you? You sneaking around for a dance class? Why didn't you just tell me? No offense, Jimmy, but I got a life outside of you, you know. This looks like fun. Jimmy, maybe ballroom dancing is just what we need to spend some quality time together. Why not? Beats riding bikes. May I have this dance? No, no, no. You cannot dance together. Your bodies are, how you say, incompatible. You are built like pickle barrel, and you are bag of oatmeal. Hey, you more suited to Juan Carlos. Nice to meet you, Juan Carlos. <laughs> oh, someone's a smooth talker. <laughs> you, what is name? Name is Jimmy. I, Svetenka. Now dance me. Dance me long and hard. Please don't hurt me. So, Gina, what is this union of yours gonna do for us? Suppose you hurt yourself shoveling, huh? Who looks after you? If your shovel breaks, who buys your new one? Our parents? They're the ones who sent you out in minus 20 weather in the first place. Them grown-ups are playing you for stooges. Yeah! I shoveled Mrs. Wilson's place, and she didn't pay! Sign up with the Brotherhood of Snow Shoveling Youth, and she'll definitely pay. They'll all pay. Who's with me? Union! 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 Jackets are mandatory for members. 50 bucks a pop. What? 50 bucks? Gina, are you serious about organized labor, or is this just a cash grab? Don't worry, Petey. The jacket money comes out of wages. You won't even notice. And if I hear any more of that scab talk, I'll cut your fucking eyes out. That was freaking amazing! It was like I was on that show, dancing with the people who used to be stars. With Juan Carlos, I was dancing on a cloud of tacos and vending machine cologne. McCool was right about us spending time together. Except we didn't really spend any time together, because our bodies are... How you say incompatible? Ah, she don't know what she's talking about. I'll prove it to you. Oh! Jesus, when's the last time we danced? Sorry. No problem. Let me think. Was it at a wedding? Ow! Oops. Nah, I got nabbed for that diamond ring robbery before our first dance, remember? Oh! My bad. Did you guys get electrocuted or something? Maybe oh. ballroom dancing ain't our thing. Well, if we can't dance together, there's no point doing it at all. I agree. Ballroom dancing is out. Good call. You look like a couple of seagulls fighting over a french fry. Jimmy. Ah! I need you ride me, Jimmy. Ride me right now. Svetanka, no. I'm married. Ride me to dance studio. I am late. Oh, you mean drive you. Sure. You know, every time you talk, it sounds like a come on. It's Svetenka's accent. You know, Yimmy, dancing with you last night made me so wet. Okay, you really should stop talking now. What? You are a sweaty man. Come in for one dance. I don't think my wife would like that. You know you want to. We keep forbidden dance a secret. Come, Yimmy. Again with the sexy talk. Jimmy? Care to tell me what you're doing here? You're sneaking around behind my back, ain't ya? What are you flipping out for? I just came in for a quickie with Svetanka. Dance! Quickie dance! I thought we agreed ballroom dancing wasn't for us. Says the broad who's standing in a dance studio. I had to double cheech down here on Petey's bike. I popped in to use the washroom. 
You know what? Juan Carlos asked me to be his partner for the Golden Bollies. Well, you ain't touching no one else's Golden Bollies. It's a dance contest, you moron. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I'm going to enter, too. I just need to find me a dance partner. That's right. I'm going to win them Golden Balls with Swatanka here. Oh, Jimmy, it is so on. It couldn't be honor. Jimmy, can I get a ride home? Cookie broke Petey's bike. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? I got rehearsal. These tap shoes ain't gonna tap themselves. Well, I got rehearsal too, mister. Who's gonna stay home and watch Gina? Gina? She ain't even home. I ain't seen her in days. In that case, dibs on the car! I got no time for this. I gotta pick up sequins for my fancy pants. Wait, I just heard that. Catch you later, sucker! You come back here. Oh, oh man. All this dance is really <sighs> whip me into shape. How you doing? I'm Gina, business agent for Bossy Local One. My comrade here says he performed snow-related labor for you, and you didn't pay. What gives? I didn't know he was doing it. Didn't know? What, are you blind? Legally, yes. Can you see good enough to fish a freaking 50 out of your purse? I'm on a fixed income. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Things are tough all over. Now make with the money. In my day, we didn't... Well, your day's done, Stegosaurus. <whistles> Give it a snow job, boys. You want it cleared? That's another 50 bucks. <laughs> Ow! Ouch! I don't know how those ice dances sew these sequins on. By using a double top stitch. How many times I gotta tell you? Ah, I can't focus. Cookie's so competitive about this dance contest, she's driving me crazy! You want me to pull a Tonya Harding, take out a knee? Say the word, she'll never walk again. That's my wife you're talking about! Besides, I'm way ahead of you. I slashed her tires so she can't get to rehearsal. Isn't that your car, Jimmy? Yeah, but it's also her car. That's why you're the boss, Jimmy. Always thinking. Now give me some change for the bus. Uh, I entered this contest to stick it to your father, but he's really giving me a run for my money. You really want to win? You're gonna need an edge. Oh, Teresa Maria Falcone. This is just lewd, crass, and totally hot. Nice work. <laughs> this shouldn't bother me, because I grew up around Italians. But your dance partner is really greasy. He drinks olive oil. Says it keeps him young. He's actually 72. <laughs> oh, I ain't paying you jagoffs to stand around gawking. Get back to work. Gina, I've been elected shop steward, and as such must tell you, the bossy membership feels they're not getting a fair shake. That's crazy. I'm paying five bucks a house. It's market rate. But you're charging our customers 50. What happens to the other 45? You think them fancy jackets pay for themselves? Teresa bought them, and you still haven't paid her back. I got a, a health and retirement plan to pay for. Them things don't come cheap. You know what else don't come cheap? Us. On behalf of the members of Bossy Local One, I hereby declare a strike. Yay! Yay! Just as soon as Brother Oliver has his potty break. Whoa, look at the balls on this room. I suddenly feel inadequate. I, I feel nervous. You nervous, Juan Carlos? <laughs> Do you even speak English? <laughs> Hey, Cook, geez, you look great. Just like one of them old-timey prostitutes. Aw, oh, Jimmy, thanks. Look at you. That costume makes me want to say, Olay. Jimmy, why you talk to old whore? <clears throat> oh, sorry, old whore is kooky. Eh, don't listen to her. I just wanted to wish you luck in the contest. And sorry I saw the heels off your dancing shoes. Thanks, babe. And I'm sorry I put horse laxative in your dinner. When'd you do that? <laughs> I gotta go! I won! I won! Did you 
your fucking face, Jimmy. Way to go, Cheech. Wait, what did he say? Yimmy, we won second place. Uh. Hey, get your Chernobyl licking tongue out of my husband's mouth. Is that what I think it is? It's these pants. They make me look huge. And like I'm pointing up. Listen, slut anchor. You boinking my husband? Da. Oh, da means yes. What's the Ruski word for no? Yet. That's it. I haven't boinked her. Yet. You haven't boinked her yet? <laughs> well, have fun with your Russian floozy, you pig. What's wrong with you? You're gonna get me killed. Oh, you die for me. So romantic. No, I die because of you. You and I got no future, you understand? Forget future. Taste present. Ah. Yeah. Present tastes like vodka and lip gloss. Look, get it through your skull. I ain't interested. Svetenka, no believe you. All right, then, I'm gay. Ooh, it's hot. I bring man to bedroom for Yimmy. How about Juan Carlos? <laughs> I watch. Yeah, my answer to that is... Hell no! We won't blow snow! We won't blow snow! Would you guys just get out of here? I don't need this crap! We are not leaving until our demands are met. Fine, let's just settle this thing. You're willing to negotiate? Wow, I thought you'd just hire a bunch of scabs from the hobo jungle. Yeah, I tried that. Didn't turn out so good. It's cold. You wanna have sex? So, there it is. I accounted for every day right down to the minute. You tell me, when could I have possibly slept with Svetanka? I know what I saw, Yimmy. Okay, fine. You got me. I've been riding it like a freaking tilt-a-whirl. I knew it! Wait a second. You'd never admit to something like that unless you're lying. And if you're lying, it means you didn't do it. Aw, oh, come here, you big lug. It's official. I will never understand women. <laughs> I vant you. Signed Svetanka. Gabadana Velianovich. Who was that? Is that for me, you big sweetheart? Let's do that right now. Bring the bear. What the hell are you doing out there, you wacko? No more wait. It's time for sexy. <laughs> I told you before, I don't fool around on my wife ever. Maybe this changed your mind. Oh! Swatanka, for the last time, get out of here! <laughs> and take your two perky friends with you. <laughs> if Cookie finds out this broad stalking me, she's gonna go ballistic! She'll kill Svetanka, I'll be next, and a couple of the kids might get clipped in the crossfire. It'll be a bloodbath! But surely she won't blame you. You're an innocent victim here. Clearly, you've never been married. And don't call me a victim. It makes me sound like a candy ass. Jimmy, don't you see? You're keeping a secret from your wife. That's just as bad as cheating. Again, clearly, you've never been married. Cookie's your partner for life. Are you going to start with that quality time crap again? Because that's what got me into this shit show. I know this is highly implausible, considering your background. But I think you should tell the truth. You think? All right. Today's as good a day to die as any. But just to be safe, I'll take Svetanka into protective custody in the morning. For Canada, where most men would pay to be stalked by hot Russian girls. Where you been? Seeing McCool. Don't worry, he'll corroborate. Look, you and me gotta talk. What's up? You know Svetanka. Yeah? What about her? She's been stalking me. Here we go. Oh boy, thanks for the crappy advice, McCall. Well, I can't say I blame her. You're not mad? Oh, I'm gonna slice her up later. But I ain't mad at you. You didn't do nothing. What was that? Whoa, this is just like, like that movie where the crazy stalker broad cooks the rabbit. Oh, God. 
You, you think she's in the house? Behind us. Yeah. Why? I'm making beans. Oh, won't you budge on anything? Hey, I gave you a 2% wage increase over 10 years, didn't I? What's taking so long? Those kids are still on the picket line. Mary's got frostbite, all of us crying for his blankie, and I don't even know why I'm still there. Now what? Running a union is too much hassle. I'm out! Oh, no, you're not. You have a responsibility to those kids. Don't make me sick the labor board on you. Oh, uh, Petey, I already paid him off. Speaking of which... What's this? You and Teresa's cut of the money I made off the scam. Count me in! Um, I don't know. I don't think I can... And I just sold out. Hey, Petey broke his cherry! Is Fetenka can't have Yimmy? No one can. I never understood that about stalkers. You love the guy, so why kill him? It's stupid. So, I kill you first? Did I say stupid? Let me rephrase that. Svetanka, you're never gonna have me, so you might as well just kill us. <gasps> but before you do, can I have one last dance with my wife? Da, one more time you flop around like puppets, then I shoot you. <laughs> you look like circus bear boxing kangaroo! <laughs> now that's what I call dancing. Jimmy, you're a genius! Well, I got my moments. Yeah! Jimmy, look out! Gina, good job! Beat! Why'd you hit Cheech? Yeah, I was on a roll. Pop, you get the quick lime, I'll chop her up. See, isn't this nice? We're doing stuff together. It's quality time, just like McCool said. Good news, Jimmy. Svetanka's visa has expired. We can deport. Oh, God, is she dead? Nah, but give us five minutes. La 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 Greetings, citizens. The Falcone family aren't the only ones who had an old life. Before I became a witness protector, I was head of Saskatchewan Crime Scene Investigations. And that's when he slipped on the ice and hit his head. I suppose one could say... I hope he says it was an icy reception. It was an unfortunate accident. Give him time, he'll get better at these. Sadly, my fellow officers watched too much TV and expected me to entertain them. Looks like he had a heart attack while going through the car wash. I guess he's all... Washed up. Say washed up. Done getting his car washed. <sighs> this guy is boring. Shortly thereafter, I was pulled off CSI detail because I refused to belittle police work with corny one-liners and catchphrases. <laughs> For Canada, where self-awareness isn't our strong suit. I wonder where he goes when he takes off like that. Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan Forget about it Forget about it Forget about it Oh, forget about it Thank you, Jaden's father, for telling us about your exciting job with Canada's space program <laughs> And now, from Regina Tourism, let's do our best to welcome Mr. McDougal. Why didn't anyone run this by me? 
Webster's Dictionary defines tourism as a neurological disorder characterized by compulsive utterances of obscenities. That's Tourette's, you stupid illiterate f***! Huh? Oh, oh, uh, right. It's... We all know why the chicken crossed the road, but do you know how? With the help of tourism, that's... Too bad you can't tell him about your old job. The one you crapped all over to become a paper-pushing desk monkey in a fake-o industry made up by the government. Ooh, you're a senator. Screw you. I work for a living. Yeah, like every other sucker. You make me want to puke. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for helping me practice driving, but... Why the disguise? If I'm seen with a full-on nerd, the other kids will think I'm downtrending. I am not a full-on nerd. Oh my god, look at that cumulonimbus cloud. It looks like Schrodinger's cat. <gasps> Victoria Huntersmith, the kind of girl guys like me admire from afar, but never, ever get to speak to. At least that's what the principal told me at orientation. Forget the insurance! Just get out and start punching yourself in the balls as a sign of inferiority! <laughs> hey, I know you from school. You're one of the total losers who... Whoa, is that your girlfriend? Who, her? She's gorgeous. What's your name? Petey. You're kinda cute. Sorry I rammed you from behind. Maybe you can ram me from the front sometime. See you at school. Why'd she leave? Why isn't she suing and or humiliating you? I have no idea what just happened. Ha! Who's the dumb one now? Gina's right, I'm a loser. I used to run a crime syndicate. Now all I do is run out of pencils. Which reminds me, Toby told me to order more pencils. Where's my pencil? Here, stuff a couple of these down your pants to fill the void. Oh, very funny. It's not my fault nothing ever happens down at Regina Tourism. The Jimmy I know doesn't wait for nothing to happen. He makes nothing happen. And when the chips are down, my money's on him. Every time. Really? Yeah. You were once the king of New York. There's no reason you can't be the king of vagina. Regina, but whatever. Take the bull by the balls, Jimmy. All right, let's do this. Ah! First thing tomorrow. Oh, yeah, no, it's getting kind of late. Hey, Pete. Wow, I'm a Pete now. Want to hang out, or will your hot mystery girlfriend get jealous? Oh, uh, she doesn't even go to this school. Ooh, then what she doesn't know won't hurt her. Come with me. Are you skipping? What? No, I tripped on something. Rhythmically, several times in succession, not skipping. Hey, guys, this is Pete. I'm confused. Why am I here and not being stuffed into that garbage can, for example? You know how you look at someone and they're, like, a total loser? Only in the mirror. But then you see them in another light, and suddenly they're really interesting. <sighs> it's too bad you have a girlfriend. Who knew pretend dating my own sister would have a downside? And so I present to you our new promotional campaign, Regina. Now with 30% less black flies. You want to bring some real tourism to this backwater berg? Talk to me. Um, this is Jimmy, whom we can thank for the pencils we're using. Pencils. Oh, pencils. Uh, Fellas, pencils. I got an idea that'll bring so much money into this town, the black flies will be driving Bentleys. And I can sum it up in one word. Gun show? Apple reunion? Porno convention? How about all of those and more? Hit it, Cheech! Ah! I got a plan that just won't lose. So drop the beavers, flies, and moose. The crowds will come on planes and rockets with tons of cash to line up pockets. A rub and tug on every block? Dabernak, that sure would rock. Legalizing marijuana? We could be like Tijuana. That ain't it, you stupid rubes. 
No blowing loads of smoking dupes. They got these joints in Vegas and Reno. You know what I mean? It's a. It's a. Rhymes with Reno? Uh, Holocaust Museum? No, you jackass! It's a casino! <laughs> There's no one here, Schwa. I hope you have a song for how we're gonna pay for all this, Schwa. Oh my god, I blew it, Cook. I think I really am a schnook. That's the spirit, Jimmy. Keep singing! Don't fold them just yet, Jimmy. Like I said, when the chips are down... <laughs> I always bet on you! Oh, Jimmy? Hey, sweetie. You wanna get out of here? <sighs> sure, Cheech. Whoa, Cook! Sorry, I thought you was a hooker. <laughs> Amazing work, Jimmy. Fun fact, in Canada, profits from gambling are reinvested in health, education, and infrastructure. That fact is nowhere near fun. What are you doing here, anyway? Don't you got a gambling problem? It's horse. He's excited about the casino, but I worry it might prove overwhelming for him. There's an old saying in the casino business, McCool. Who gives a shit? It's a fucking horse. I got three Japanese businessmen cleaning up the blackjack. Want me to tap and yucky their faces? Don't bother. I sent in a cooler. Bust, heart attack, oh. space debris. That old prick's lifetime losing streak is finally paying off. Hey, go tell that slob at the poker table about our dress code. It would be my pleasure. Look at you, Mr. Casino Manager. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Maybe you got a little something for the person who inspired all this? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> I know what you mean. Follow me. Wanna kill you to wear a tie? This is my thanks? A job at the coat check? I also got a tip. Lose the attitude. It's bad for business. Yo, Gazangas. I want you to show Mr. Takamori here a good time. Need I remind you that I'm your mother, young lady? Need I remind you that I'm your boss, sugar tits? You are so grounded after I punch out tonight. Hey, Pete. I just wanted to tell you that Mystery Girl dumped me. So I'm single and ready to tingle. Uh, Petey, that's not cool. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm fine. Hey, you called me Petey. What happened to Pete? Pete got dumped. Cool kids never get dumped. We do the dumping like this. <laughs> you guys are really good at this. I haven't touched the side once. Hear that silence? It's how things sounded before white people came. I sure hope they come back soon. Oh, it's a dark day when we're asking for the whiteies to return. Yo, Pop, Crybaby here's got a beef. You stole my customers, Jimmy. I can almost taste the food you're taking from my children's mouths. I'm just giving people what they want, Terry. By that, I mean loose slots, not, you know, starving kids. Could you give me some tips? I'd love to help you, but I can't. Because I'm native? No, because you're my competition. Why do you guys always get so racial? Funny, you get that way after you've been beat down for centuries. Look, I'll make it up to you. We got a nice steakhouse here. You'll always have a reservation. Oh, you're hilarious, Jimmy. What? What did I say? What are you doing here, Terry? Getting screwed by your husband. It's been so friggin' long, I almost forgot what that's like. If I could get in to see him, I'd punch his fat face. I had to slip Gina 50 bucks. Why didn't I think of that? Come on, let's have a drink. Okay, but you're buying. I can't, I gave Gina all my money. If this works, I'll be back at the cool table with Victoria before you know it. Be right back. Hmm, this should cover Jetsy's high nipples. <gasps> This is not what it looks like. I'm just trying on your bra to see if it'll fit Jetsy. Those are my swimming goggles. Well, where have you been all my life? Anyone ever tell you you could be a model? <laughs> so if I break up with Jetsy in front of everyone, I might have a shot with Victoria.
That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. There's no way Jetsy could play Mystery Girl. What else am I supposed to do? Use the actress who originated the role. You do that for me? Of course. Every great star gives back to the underprivileged. Now here's my contract. This is a stereo warranty. I'm playing along, can't you? Look at you, you degenerate gambling lowlife. I gave you two grand mark and you blew it already. <laughs> if you shrug them weird horsey shoulders at me again, I swear your head's gonna wind up in someone's bed. Think I'm joking? Mm, try me, motherfucker. Okay, okay, I've got him, Gina. Come on, old friend. I'll take you home. You've crapped out. Literally, I'm afraid. For Canada! Where even the hopelessly addicted get a free ride! Why the hell are we so empty? Cheech probably cooled the whole joint. Nah, he called in sick today. Well, word on the street is the Blackpool Casino's really cleaning up. Maybe I should go over there for a little powwow. Do you hear yourself? Show some sensitivity, will ya? Go watch Pocahontas or some shit. How you doing? You can spice in my joint, I'll beat it out of you. I swear. Mark my words. Ho oh, ho! Is that a shrimp boat? Well, Jimmy, looks like the moccasins on the other foot. Part of the rebranding. Free moccasins for everyone. Huh? Jeez, what the hell are you doing here? Hey, Jimmy! I mean, uh. <coughs> this is not the doctor's office. Oh, Jimmy, stop! She made an offer I couldn't refuse. Working for tips. What do you mean, she? Take your hands off my crap stealer, Jimmy. Cookie? What are you doing here? I'm running this joint. Oh, yeah. Hey, Takamura. I told you she was lucky. What the hell do you know about running a casino anyway? More than you, I worked in Atlantic City. On the boardwalk, guessing people's weight. To these guys, that's the big time. And it beats working the coat check. That's what this is about? Fine. If you don't like the coat check, we'll find you something in the kitchen. Get out of my office. I'm warning you, if you don't quit right now, I will bury this casino. Like you buried your face in that shrimp boat? Bring it on, fat man. <laughs> That's me. I got a new ringtone. Hello? Hey, Jetsy, how you doing? So come on down to Saskatchewan Casino, where we don't have roaches infesting our buffet. We don't have roaches, but we do have the loosest sluts in town. We also got the loosest sluts in town. <laughs> Ain't that right, sweetie? This week at Saskatchewan Casino, the incredible Kevin will give every audience member a new car. <laughs> new car, my ass. They're ripping them off from my parking lot, see? <laughs> but you won't care about that when you're cruising the skies of Regina in our new free helicopter tour. plane cost me? But do I care? No. Cause this week at Saskatchewan Casino, we've got Canadian rock legends The Guess Who. <laughs> Tribute band? The Guess Whom? Cook, I can't take this no more. Let's call a truce. Your casino takes senior citizens and welfare moms. I'll take guys cutting loose on business trips. Who gets all the chronic gamblers? We'll divvy them up with some kind of lottery which they will no doubt gamble on. Cheech, tell this ungrateful egomaniac to go f himself. But edit the swear for the kid's sake. Cheech, can you also ask Jetsy to call me? I miss him. She's known as Juicy now, and I took away her cell phone. Speaking of Juicy, did anyone ever tell you that you could be an escort? That's Teresa! Oh, I didn't recognize you, kid. It's cause I'm in character. Come on, Petey, let's go to makeout points. Have fun, kids! Wait, what did she say? Come on, Cheech. We gotta pick up our headliners at the airport. I don't wanna keep Paul and Ringo waiting. <gasps> Hear that? She's got the Rolling Stones. It's time to pull out the big guns. 
I meant it metaphorally. Put this back in a garage. So this is Makeout Point, Regina style. Let's begin. <clears throat> so, what did you want to talk to me about, Petey? You look so serious. I brought you here so I can officially dump you. Um, did we land on a name? You are dumping me? Anastasia Champagne Superstar? Oh, Christ, we did. You sleep with my mother. You kill my father. Kick my dog and steal our family fortune, leaving us homeless and prostitute. Destitute. OK, good texture, but roll it back a little. Yes, I am dumping you, Anastasia. <gasps> <gasps> what the hell? Where did you get that? The garage. Where else? I won't live without you. None of this is in the script. I'm an artist. I improvised. Yeah. On second thought, if I can't have you, no one will. Teresa, would you stop? Did he say Teresa? <gasps> oh my god, that's Teresa McDougal. Ugh. Ugh. He's dating his own Sister! Wow. <gasps> that is so gross! Fucking inbred Scottish weirdo! <laughs> and scene! Webster's Dictionary defines impossible as the act of placing private property in custody of an officer of the law. That's impoundment, you ignorant banana! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Saskatchewan Casino is pleased to bring you from the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, the Titanic. Paul and Ringo Chang's miniature rodeo was a total bust. <laughs> Hello, Stonehenge? How much to ship them rocks to Canada? You druid motherfuckers want to play hardball? I got the hardest balls in town. Hey, Cook. Listen, I can't run the casino no more. I'm going to ask Toby to transfer me back to my desk job. Yay! Oh, really? So you beat me, and you're retiring before I get a chance Look. to... Oh, that's sweet and gross. Now look over there. That's the guy who ran the casino on this tub. That'll be me if we keep this up. You're going to die on a boat? No, I'll be alone. I wouldn't have had any of this if it wasn't for you believing in me. Was that so hard? You had to raise the freaking Titanic to avoid showing me a little gratitude? And look at those stupid skeletons. Oh, the ship's sinking. I better go have a nap. Morons. Come here, babe. Jeez. What were the odds of that thing going down again? Unsinkable, my ass. Hey, guys. Any chance I... <laughs> <sighs> I guess tis better to have loved and lost your own sister than never to have... Ugh, no, that's not right. Teresa, why aren't you being ostracized? Because I don't use words like ostrich size and I don't fool around with my sister, you sick pervert! But fooling around with your brother is okay? It is if you're hot. I don't make the rules, Petey. Wish I had a brother to fool around with. That is so gross! <laughs> Did I just wake up in crazy town? Neither of you works at a casino no more? Sweetie, with Pop's casino gone, the Black Paw don't need me. You mooks threw away the best thing that ever happened to us. You know what would make you feel better? Do not condescend to me, Ma. Ha! It's condensate. Who's the banana now, Gina? All right. How about you hop up on this here bed? And help us count all the money we skimmed. Uh, why'd you have to get all mushy on me? Anyone seen Cheech, by the way? And who's giving the bride away? I am, Your Majesty. <laughs> Pull yourself together. He's a good catch. Freeze! That bride is underage! Good luck!
Fuck, you see? I'm keeping the dowry. La 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 how you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, former New York capo. In the old life, the feds were always up in my business. These guys had ears everywhere, and by ears, I mean bugs. But I didn't let that keep me from being a normal family man. Someone! That's my girl. Messing with the feds was a game. I got the fat bastard right here, and I'm gonna chop off his legs and feed him to the dogs. On the ground, now! Ha <laughs> ha, gotcha. Oh, good one, Jimmy. I'd offer you guys a turkey sandwich, but f you. If it was real important, we talk in code. But that came with its own problems. Cheech, I need you to pick up the magic potion from the Maharaja and take it to the wizard. And make sure you look into his crystal ball. Gabish. Gabish. By magic potion, you mean he ate keys of heroin, right? On the ground, now! Now that I'm in witness protection living in Canada, I don't ever gotta worry about bugs again. Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Cookie, that was superb. You're a regular George Foreman in the kitchen. Thanks, Jimmy. And now for the knockout, cannoli. <clears throat> James McDougal. Who's asking? Angus McTavish. Don't ring a bell. Do I know you? No, lad. But our ancestors fought on the moors for three centuries. This weekend, you and I pay tribute to their bravery at the Regina Highland Games. Uh, speaking the English? I'm throwing down the gauntlet, laddie. See you at the caber toss. Go, McTab! Who was that? Some Australian lunatic in a skirt. <laughs> Oh. I'm gonna regret asking, but what's your problem? There's this Dutch exchange student at school, Yetzi. No one pays attention to him. He said he feels invisible. And you care about Dutchy, why? I consider it a civic duty to aid new students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bleeding heart, save the whales, help the Dutchman. I get it. Here's my advice. School's like prison. He wants a rep? Tell him to kick someone's ass. Gina, not every problem can be solved through violence. Ugh, I'm not helping you with a dishes no more. You got it? Okay. See, Petey? I had a problem and violence solved it. Want me to demonstrate again? No. I'd appreciate it if you could keep riffraff like Scotty McBozo off of my doorstep. But you're a McDougal now. The Scottish community is finally inviting you into the fold. You just had to go and make me Scottish, didn't you? Why couldn't you just make me Italian? Because you'd have been too easily identified as ex-mafioso. Oh, so Italian automatically means mob to you? You racist sack of shit. I ought to put one in your head, run your body through a meat grinder, and bury you in cement! But I take your point. So you'll attend the games then? Not a chance. If you refuse this challenge, the Scottish Canadian Times will brand you a coward. You'll wind up on their shite list, along with other things Scottish people hate, like the Queen, underwear, and fresh vegetables. Do you want your friends back home to find your picture in gear, Jimmy? I guess not. Then have fun at the games for Canada, where every culture gets a ridiculous summer fair. Remember, everybody be cool and act like you're Scottish. Just be crabby and cheap. Don't worry, Jimmy, we'll blend right in with these weirdos. 
Uncle Cheech, stay out of my closet. That's a good color on you. So, your lily-livered McDougals grew up here and showed up. Welcome to the Highland Games, you wankers. Thank you for inviting us. Don't get a swelled head, lassie. Every Scot in the phone book was invited. Right, to the kitchen with you, Nessie. You're on Haggis duty. Go on! Those sheep's stomachs don't stuff themselves. Blend. Ah! Oh. To the field of combat, lads. Or should I say lassies? <laughs> See? Blending right in. Let me get this straight. We gotta cook this thing's stomach. How we gonna get it out, ma? Same way your father did with Joey the Fink. Oh! Oh! Hey! Oh! 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 Look at that! Hammer toss! Beat that, McDougal! You know. This kind of reminds me of collecting protection money back home. <laughs> Off the field! <laughs> oh, you throw like a bloody Englishman! Thanks, Angie. That's supposed to be an insult, you tit. Come here, you. Come here, cut, cut. I salute you. <laughs> Wheat sheaf toss! Snack on that, McDougal! This reminds me of the time we threw Big Cheese Romano off the roof! <laughs> Something's missing. <laughs> ah, there you go! <laughs> and you call yourself a Scot? Why don't you change your name to Scott? Ah! Ooh! Oh, it's on! <laughs> what are you doing? That's my girlfriend! I mean, uh, my mascot! There's a raft of sheep stomachs in the fridge, you daft Marys! Oh. Watch your back, lamb chop. <laughs> Caber toss in your face, McDougal! This reminds me of something, too. <laughs> uh, I guess I never killed no one with a tree trunk before. What, you've been living in a cave? <laughs> <laughs> Off the field again! Oh, victory for Clan McTavish! Good game, Anus. <laughs> Jimmy, aren't you mad he beats you? You're the sorest loser I know. Did I lose, Cheech? Did I? My car! My hoose! William! Oh, William, me baby brother! Ah, but that's what you get for not going to the games, you bastard! Sorry, Yetzi. Who would have guessed the Saturday Academic Achievers Jamboree was just a bunch of grade grubbing dorks? But don't worry, we'll find you some cool friends. <laughs> My sister suggested you pick a fight with someone to get noticed, which is totally absurd. Yetzi, cut it out! That's not going to work! Will you stop it? That's enough! <gasps> ah, sh**. Yetzi, I'm so sorry! Wait, you forgot your teeth! Hey, everyone! Thought I'd drop in. <laughs> oh, look! It's eccentric billionaire Richard Wheatthin. Do I smell haggis, or is that Jimmy's feet? <laughs> and he brought a studio audience to laugh at his dumb jokes. Might I say, Cookie, you look delicious. Can I try a bite? When it comes to haggis, I'm a bit of a gastronome. I've eaten it all around the world. Around the world? That would make you a gastronaut! Seriously? That was gold! Mmm, amazing. You can barely taste the intestines. Cookie, I have a proposition for you. I've been getting propositioned all day. <laughs> that gets a laugh? You're a bunch of dicks. This is my Scottish restaurant, Wee Wee Wheat Thins. For some reason, business has been slow. 
But I think we can turn this place around with Cookie as my new executive chef. Wow. Jimmy, what do you think? What's that think about? You can do this in your sleep. But who'll run the house? I will. How hard can it be to take care of two kids? Three kids. See? We'll all be learning new things. Go for it. It might be fun. In that case, Mr. Weathin, I accept. To whom, Betty? I was stirring in the kilt, and I'm feeling a wee bit bad. I'm your new chef, Cookie McDougal. Now, I'm a little new to Scottish cooking, but I've been doing a wee bit of research, and I'm sure all you lads and lassies will be great. <laughs> These have been in the freezer for three months, and you want to serve them to customers? This is a restaurant, you jag off, not a Viet Cong prison camp. Are you sweating in the soup? What the hell is wrong with you? You know what? Screw it. Let's just serve them warmed over piss. Squat down. No? Then start over. You can't cry in the kitchen. If I see one more of you motherfuckers crying in here, it's in the fucking oven you go, head first. You think I'm playing? <laughs> and let that be a lesson to all of you. Brown meat in pan. This stuff's red, but it'll have to do. Add onion. Done. Why doesn't it look like the picture? Daddy, I need help with my homework. I'm a little busy, but... What's the capital of Canada? That's easy. Capital C. Daddy, I only eat gluten-free. Is that gluten-free? Don't worry. I ain't gonna charge you. Pop, I broke Yetzi's jaw. Good for you, son. But he's my friend. So you straightened out your friend. I'm proud of you. But I feel like a monster. I said I'm proud of you. I quit fishing for compliments. Daddy, can you hand wash my bras and panties? Oh, I ain't touching that stuff. Pop, what's in a nook shook? Mom does it. Pop, is that meat sauce? I don't eat anything with a face. We're having face for dinner? I want a chicken fingers. Daddy, I gotta make a solar system. Daddy, uh, I need clean panties. Pop, I almost killed Yetzi. I want a chicken finger. I think I need counseling. Daddy. Pop, Daddy. I almost killed Yetzi. Daddy. Chicken Daddy. fingers! Yeah! That's it! Go to bed, all of you. But it's only 6.30. I said go to bed! <sighs> you know what? Change my order to face. You too, Cheech. Bed! But Jimmy! Do I have to take off this belt? I'll be good. I hope Yeti's in school today. I feel terrible about... What the hell? Aw, oh, poor little Yeti. Do you want another blended cheeseburger? Hey, there's the bully that did this to Yeti. <clears throat> Gina's wrong. High school's not like prison. Though I do have goo all over my face. I bet that happens in prison. Amazing, Cookie. In just one week, you've totally turned this place around. How did you do it? Get the hell out of my kitchen. I'm trying to work here. <laughs> now, now, I am your boss. Sorry, sorry. Mom, Pop ruined my underwear. He made me go to bed at 6.30 last night. I've been up since 3 a.m. I ain't naming no names, but a certain fat ass ruined my homework. Jimmy! I need a change. What the hell? Look at this freaking place. There's footprints on the ceiling, the TV's on fire, and why am I standing in three feet of water? Oh, for God's sake, where's your father? Jimmy! Hey, Cook. What the hell's going on here? Nice to see you, too. Look at this place. What exactly do you do all day? Besides work nine to five? Okay, 10 to three? 11 to 2 with a long lunch? I'm busting my butt at the restaurant 24-7, and you can't even keep this house going? Me? 
What kind of mother leaves her family starving and laundryless and having to figure out the capitals of Canada all by themselves? What about your womanly duties? Oh, of course, my womanly duties. How could I forget? Remind me again what those are. Like having dinner ready on the table for your husband? Like it says in the Bible? What part of the Bible says that? You know, the part where Jesus fights the whale. I thought this restaurant thing was gonna be a nice little hobby. Did you just say nice little hobby? That's it, I'm out of here. Where you going? Back to work, where I get some respect. I respect you plenty. It's not like I told you to get in the kitchen, take off your top and make me a sandwich. Which actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> Since Cookie won't listen to Reason or the Bible, we gotta shut this place down. You know, for the good of the kids. Kills me to see him neglected like that. Special Agent McCool, nice of you to drop by. <laughs> Full disclosure, Cookie, I sometimes moonlight as the regional health inspector. Well, I'd offer you a bribe, but my kitchen is so spotless, you could eat off the floor. Speaking of which, you done licking the floor yet, Rodney? Don't worry, Cookie. My visit tonight is strictly as a haggis and cockaleeky craving customer. Waiter, there's a hand in my soup. <laughs> and you're closed. You can't do this. Sorry, Cookie. Wee Wee Wheat Thins is now officially a crime scene. Jeez, tough break, Cook. But hey, you had a good run. No shame in that. Oh, for shame, there's a foot in the salad bar. You're a great chef. You deserve success. And you would have had it, but what are you going to do? It's the unpredictable hand of fate. Actually, it was the hand of Lorenzo. What I'm saying is, maybe this is a sign that your place is at home with your family and their laundry. You're right, Jimmy. Nothing to do now but take my failed ass home. Bada bing! <laughs> What the hell? Excuse me, sir, do you have a reservation? What are you talking about, Teresa? It's me, this is my house. Nope, this is Mighty McDougal's House of Haggis. You turned our house into a restaurant? You said you wanted me home, so I came home. But it ain't fair to my customers to shut down, so I brought them with me. Thanks for being so supportive, sweetheart. I do not remember being supportive. And I do not remember you having a reservation. <laughs> Cheech, will you look at what Cookie's done to this place? I know. If I do a good job, I could make dishwasher. Gina, how about getting the old man some food? I'm starving here. No can do, Pop. We're full up. Yeah. Now, I'll get you a shrimp cocktail. And a beer. No dice. All we got here is Rob Royce. Can we get a Heineken, a spritzer, and a fuzzy navel? Three Rob Royce coming up. For the last time, I do not want to buy a f***ing rose. Finally, a little peace and quiet. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, seriously? And he's like, toast, seriously. Wow, so you do have genital warts. <laughs> ah! Restaurant's uh. closed! You want a doggy oh. bag? Bag this! Ah! Hey, Jagger, soup's on! <laughs> Jimmy, have you lost your freaking mind? I can't stand it no more, Cook! I tried being supportive, but this restaurant thing is tearing our house apart! Shwash! Baby, I need you! The kids need you! Shut down this circus and let's be a family again! Wait, you said I was great! You said I deserved success! And now you're running around like a freaking animal killing my business! We're shutting this place down too! Oh well, beat sawn off hands. Ah, crap. That was you? How could you do that to me? Cookie, I'm sorry, I was losing my mind. You have no idea how hard it is to run a household on your own. I don't? You looked after the house for a week, Jimmy. I've been doing it for 16 years. Enjoy sleeping on the couch, mister, cause you ain't getting nowhere near my meat locker tonight. That's kind of a weird thing to call your Oh, you mean the bedroom. Ow! If you want this <laughs> shrimp cocktail, you're gonna have to throw some pants on. Oh. Cookie's miserable, and I feel terrible. That's marriage for you. What are you gonna do? She was happy working at the restaurant, and we blew it. I gotta go make this right. How much writer can you get? 
She's back in the kitchen where she belongs. She was in a kitchen, you moron, and I'm putting her back there. Jimmy, she's already there. Teach, maybe sit this one out, all right? Fine by me. I want off this freaking emotional roller coaster anyway. All right, what do you want? I've realized that prison rules don't apply in Canada. Here, people reward the victim, not the aggressor. If I want to be surrounded by girls like Yetzi, I need to get my ass kicked. Wait a second. You want me to beat you up in front of the girls? I want some of the action he's getting. What better way to get sympathy than by being unjustly trounced by a thug? Edie, think this through. <gasps> Hurry up. Come on, hit me. No, get lost, you whack job. Come on, just a few good shots. Real quick, give me what I want. Let go of me, you freaking psycho. <gasps> now Yetzi's bully is assaulting a little girl. Get him! <laughs> hey, what are you doing? What? When in Rome. <laughs> Okay, what are we doing here? McCool called, said there was a major situation happening. Jimmy, what's going on? And why are you dressed like an undertaker? Good evening, Chef Cookie. Welcome to the reopened Wee 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 Thins. I'll be your new matron D. Good news, Cookie. Your husband helped us solve the mystery of the severed hand. <gasps> Thanks to Jimmy, you're back in business. Oh, Jimmy, you big sweet moron, you. Sorry I messed things up for you, Cook. Gosh, it's kind of slow tonight. Only two customers. It's 8.30. The place should be packed. Maybe they heard about the hand in the soup. People talk, you know. Or maybe it was the fat, naked, hairy guy hitting people with his junk. Hmm. I was worried this might happen. You see, Cookie, haggis is strictly a novelty food. People only ever try it once, usually under the influence of alcohol. So... There won't be any repeat customers. Not a one, I'm afraid. Wee Wee Wheat Thins has run its course. Then why'd you bother reopening? Yeah, why'd I get my hopes up? What can I say? For me, Scottish food can be very haggis-forming. <laughs> Give it a rest. You know what? You and your stupid restaurant just about ruined my marriage. Well, I guess I ain't a cook no more. Baby, in the kitchen of my heart, you'll always be head chef. <laughs> A round of drinks for everyone! We're celebrating the birth of me son! La 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 how you doing? I'm the FBI informant and shell of a man formerly known as Jimmy Falcone. One thing I don't miss about the old life is how nobody did nothing without an interior motive. Oh, Frankie brought cake. Really? What's the occasion? What? I need an occasion to do something nice? Mm. Kill my brother-in-law. Before or after the sugar high, you lazy bastard. Thanks for helping me move, Joe. No problem. Just help me get these on the truck. And it didn't matter how small the favor. They always expected something in return. Really, Joe? You moved like one box. Thanks for driving us to the airport, Bruno. Here, swallow these. You'll need a laxative when you land. Your brother-in-law says, hey. <coughs> I'm gonna need that laxative. Here in the great bland north, People are nice for no reason at all. It gives me the creeps. I still haven't figured out their angle, but if you think I'll ever get used to Canadian polititude, you can f <laughs> Hey, the drugs came out. Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they helped that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. 
the answer to what sexual position are you is missionary. Stupid online quiz. I thought for sure I'd get Belgian wishbone. That was there when I got here. And I need a new computer. No problem, Jimmy. So last night I was at home thinking about you. Long and hard. <laughs> it occurred to me what a breath of fresh air you've been to this office. And I wanted to show my appreciation. So, what do you want? Nothing, Jimmy. Want me to whack somebody? Oh, gosh, no. Move some merchandise? Not at all. Then what is it? It's just a cake, Jimmy. I also wanted to give you a hug. But provincial guidelines forbid it. So I got you a hug mug instead. I don't know what to say. I'm... I'm very confused. Oh, look, your uncle is here. Hey, Slugger. <laughs> Look at you! <laughs> I love this kid. What a face! Now get out of here, champ. Who's that schmuck? What are you doing here, Cheech? My printer's on the fritz. Paper jam? Nah, I shot it. No one tells Cheech Falcone to load cyan cartridge. I gotta print some pictures of cats asking for cheeseburgers. No, you don't. How else am I supposed to share them with my friends? Get with the future, Jimmy. A, you're not stealing my printer. B, you got no friends. And C, get the f out of my office. You didn't say there was going to be a test. I'm out of here. Vagina tourism. Yo, this thing prints in color, right? <laughs> God damn it! What did I say? You printer stealing motherfucker! I had to rip your fucking head off and shove it straight up your fucking wazoo! Okay, Jimmy, thanks. Ah, uh, Jimmy, we should talk about that anger <laughs> right after I change my pants. Sorry I had to knock with my boot. You can knock boots here anytime, McCool. <laughs> it appears Gina somehow got a hold of my uh, handcuffs and I need the keys. Well, looky here. Our big Mounties in handcuffs. <laughs> oh, I wonder if he's ticklish. Will you stop? <laughs> oh, this is highly irregular. <laughs> Ladies, stop. <laughs> you want those keys? You're going to have to give us something, McCool. Yeah, dance. Certainly not. <laughs> 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 For crying out loud. Here, let him go. You're taking all the fun out of illegal confinement. Gina Madonna Falcone, you're confined to your room for the rest of the day for this little stunt. <laughs> I could do that standing on my head. That's gonna give you a bald spot. I'm not actually standing on my head, genius. Cookie, have you ever thought of enrolling Gina in the Scared Straight program? Is that when hardened criminals yell and intimidate kids? Because that's dinner at our house. Early prevention is crucial for wayward youth. In my spare time, I volunteer with at-risk children who... Yeah, yeah, Scared Straight, you're a saint. I get it. Now, what are you going to give me for these keys? I'm confused, Toby. You never get mad. What do you know about anger management? <laughs> oh, Jimmy. I'm angry in ways that defy logic and international convention. But I manage my anger issues. I don't got angry issues. My uncle was just driving me nuts. Can I go? You can't blame family for pushing your buttons. That's called deflecting. Guess who's getting a gold star? Boop! You try living with a nut job like Cheech. He doesn't just push buttons. He craps on them and doesn't flush. I have a family member who's hard to deal with, Jimmy. Why don't you come to my house for dinner and see how I deal with my hard member? Oh, can I come too? Any more questions? Why do I have to go to prison? You got your damn keys back, didn't you? Yes, but I had to promise your mother a summer of yard work in my Daisy Dukes. In any case, this is the intake where they check convicts for contraband. You missed a few things. Gord Downey's impenetrable lyrics! What do you need with all these weapons? How else am I supposed to make someone my bitch? What was that for? She was reaching for the rubber gloves! I know what that means! All right, now, take me to jail. Where are you going? Out for dinner. Great, I'll get my coat. <laughs> 
Keep your coat. I'm going alone. But I'm starving. There's never any food around here. Aw, leftovers again. <sighs> what are you gonna do? I'm here now. All right, fine. But be on your best behavior. That's my boss's house. Church rules, okay? Right. The pants stay on. I know Cheech wasn't invited, but he tagged along anyhow. See what I mean about this guy? This is why you're here. To see how I deal with my own Uncle Cheech. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Good one. Who are these dicks? <clears throat> Uh, this is Jimmy and his Uncle Cheech. Guys, this is my mom, Greta. Hey, jerks, check this out. Come on, how about now? What I have for lunch? Guess I'll get dinner on the table. Ah, oh, my thong's chafing. I'll be right back. Jesus, what a monster. Toby didn't even flinch. That's impressive. No, Jimmy, that's impressive. <laughs> An ugly statue of a goose? That ugly statue is the Gibraltar goose. It's worth a fortune. People have been cutting each other's throats to get their hands on it forever. I had it once, but it slipped through my fingers. I killed my best friend, double-crossed my mother, and betrayed the woman I love. But I finally got you. This time, Coney Island. Oh, roller coaster! I tried to get it back, but I was out of subway tokens. This here goose is the stuff dreams are made out of, Jimmy. Well, don't get any ideas about stealing it. What's eating you? Toby's trying to help me. You're not robbing him. Rob him? I don't even know who he is. <clears throat> Give me the, the hand. <laughs> Let go of the... <laughs> I said hands off! Jimmy, <laughs> stop abusing Uncle Cheech. This is not how you deal with anger. <laughs> it's hummus, for Christ's sake. I had hummus. <laughs> The barista gave me cinnamon sprinkles instead of chocolate. I spoke very sharply to her manager. <laughs> I'm a monster! I just want to cut myself over and over and... Hold that thought, Agnes. I want to focus on someone who really <laughs> needs help. Jimmy, is there anything you'd like to talk about? Why, yes, there is. I move that these meetings be catered. Someone's deflecting again. What was it Cheech did last night that made you wanna, what was it, skull bang him straight to hell? Whatever he did, <sighs> I have learned that I can't be responsible for his behaviors, only for mine own. Question for the group, who's getting a gold star today? Not Agnes, I'll goddamn tell you that. Boop. And speaking of Cheech, did you know he asked my mom out on a date? And she said, fuck yes, end quote. Isn't that great, Jimmy? We'll practically be brothers. Call off the date, Cheech. No can do. I really like this broad. Give me a break. You're just using her. Keep your hands off that freaking goose, cabish. You got it all wrong, Jimbo. I want to woo this dame, show her a good time, make her feel good, then Rob her blind? Nah. Bang her in the back seat. Of the car. In her butt. Oh, and I'm borrowing the SUV. <laughs> Think you're tough? I eat tough for breakfast. Sometimes a smoothie. I'm doing 10 years for robbery. Got caught because my tank was empty. Worst part is, I was robbing a gas station. Isn't it ironic? Get out of my head, Alanis! What a mook. What'd you say to me? You're a mook. A gaffon, a stronze. Don't you speak English? Robbing a gas station? Get some fucking class. Banks are where it's at. You strap a bomb to your chest and pretend you're a victim. Empty the vault, or they splatter me all over this joint. You with me so far? Then hand off the money to the accomplice while the cops are busy with a bomb on your chest. <gasps> You give the fuzz a bogus description of the robbers so they don't know who the hell they're looking for. Then meet up with your friend, get the cash, and stick a knife in his back. Right, McCool? Sweet, blessed monarchy. Yo, this advice ain't free. Give me all your cigarettes. <laughs> 
Oh, Jimmy, this is so romantic. I can't remember the last time you wined and dined me. Let's say we sneak into the bathroom for a little appetizer. <laughs> sure, get an appetizer. Who gives a shit? Are you even listening to me? Why do you keep looking over there? <laughs> oh, God! You brought me here just so you could watch Cheech? So what? I can't sit by myself like some pathetic loser. Hey! Oh, where you going? You're spying on your elderly uncle while he's on a date. You got some serious problems, Jimmy. Who's pathetic now? Still you. Yeah. <laughs> he's giving her the old Belgian wishbone. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ooh, that's nasty. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Moussaka! Oh, you hear that, Toby? He got it on the first try! Who's Toby? <laughs> oh. What's your game here, Cheech? Ha! I could ask you the same thing. Toby, I can explain. No need, Jimmy. You're under a lot of strain coping with your feelings towards your uncle. Not to mention the ridiculous pressures at work. Actually works pretty easy. Oh, you're such a trooper. That's why you deserve that cake. Toby, listen. Cheech is going to rob your mother. Too late, Jimmy. He already stole her heart and some change from the bedside table. But don't worry. We're going to get you the help you need. My name is Jimmy McDougal and... Uh, Jimmy? <sighs> My name is Jimmy McDougal, and I am a peeping Tom. Uh, that's my seat. Finally, some action around here. But I can sit somewhere else if you're already eating. Oh, look, you are, aren't you? Sorry, I'll just go. <laughs> <laughs> Cheech? How you gonna steal the goose if it's already stole? Stolen. Damn it. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Jimmy? <gasps> Are you spying on Cheech and my mother again? What? No, no, no not at all. <sighs> I think maybe you need another session at Peeping Tom's Anonymous. You got it all wrong. I'm just trying to stop Cheech from robbing your mother. Look, let me show you. God, no! I don't want to see it! Ah, crap, it's stuck. Jimmy, please, don't show it to me! It's very inappropriate! Come on, baby, come on. Here it comes, right there. Right there. <laughs> For the love of God, right Jimmy! There. Stop masturbating in front of me! Right there! <laughs> Peking duck. Nailed it! <laughs> Why are we having a stapler safety meeting? It sounds made up and stupid. You know what they say. An ounce of prevention is worth 0.4 kilograms of cure. <laughs> oh, I can't lie to you, Jimmy. But you're gonna thank me after this. After what? Your intervention! Oh, Jesus Christ. These people are here because they love you. Except my mom. She's here because her finger's stuck in Cheech's zipper. I was giving him a diddle. Everyone has written a letter about how your problem has affected them. All we ask is that you hear us out. Yeah, come on, Jimmy. You're tearing this family apart or something. Don't you start with me, Cheech. Will you listen to what the people who love you have to say, Jimmy? You bet your ass he will. Wait a sec. Where's Gina? McCool took her to prison. That's about the only thing that makes any sense right now. All right. Cookie, you're first. <sighs> Sorry. This is hard for me. <clears throat> okay. Dear Jimmy, you owe me a dinner! Love, Cook. That was beautiful. Sometimes we have to listen to what isn't being said, Jimmy. Can I listen from the bar down the street? Okay, who's next? Dear Jimmy, you know when you got a whiz at night, but you don't want to turn the lights on because it hurts your eyes? Well, what if you put lights around the toilet seat? So, Cheech, what the hell are you doing? I'm reading my invention letter. Okay, 
Teresa? I didn't know we were reading these out loud. Be brave. This is a safe place. Sad face, angry face, thumbs down, dark clouds, Japanese goblin! What are you talking about? I wrote my letter in emojis. That is so dumb face. Dear father, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to write. You are more important to me than- Boring! You make me want to be a better man, you know that? All right, that is it! But I'm not finished my- Katie, I'm talking here! You want to know what my problem is? I'll tell you. The only reason Cheech is going out with Greta is so he can steal her goose. Don't you mean gobble her goose? Ew! I just pictured it! It's the Gibraltar goose! It's this famous old statue that's worth a lot of money. <gasps> Ain't that right, Cheech? You have always been my rock. Jimmy, you of all people should know how hard I've tried, how long I've searched for the one thing that has deluded me all these years. See? He's after the goose. I'm after love. And now that I finally got it, you want to take it away from me. My port in the storm. But now... I think you owe Uncle Cheech an apology. I got Cheech's apology right here. I'm not the one with the problem. It's you people. You're all crazy. Call me when you're having a real stateless safety meeting. Ever since I was a little boy, I longed for... I think that went well, don't you, Uncle Cheech? Have we met? <laughs> <laughs> Canadian prisons are the kindest in the world. Why are they doing this? Stop, Stop rioting, rioting this, this instant. instant! Screw you! Someone's coming out with demands! I say this at the risk of being unsportsmanlike, but as soon as the bastard shows himself, make an example of him. Cancel that order! Stand down, stand down! Gilbert, lower the shotgun! Gina, thank goodness you're all right. Those cowards sending a child to do their dirty work. You want to hear the demands of what? Yes, but first, let's get you to safety. Never mind that. There's only one demand, McCool. Don't ever try to scare me straight again. That's why they're rioting? Yeah, they do whatever I tell them. Now, do we got a deal or what? Yes, fine, but how? All right, Jagoffs! Back to your cells! No one mentions this at the staff meeting, understood? I'm looking at you, Gilbert. Ah-ha! Oh! Ah-ha! 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 You're adrift in a sea of sorrow, and I want to- What's going on here? Aw, oh, come! On. See? I caught him red-handed. Cheech is trying to steal the goose. In fact, they all are! If I wasn't so damn mad, I'd be pretty proud right now. For the last time, I ain't here to steal no goose. I'm here for love. Greta, I want to say... Smith? Will you make me the happiest man in vagina and become my wife? Oh, Cheech, yes! I can't wait for you, me, and Toby to start our new life together. Who's Toby? I'm Toby! Me! Me! How can you not know that by now? I co-signed your small business loan! I gave you a bath! I helped you design the toilet light! Oh, nice to meet you. I am Toby! Nice to meet you! I'm Toby! Toby! Got that? My name is Toby! T-O-B-Y! Toby! Oh, H-E double hockey stick! What a freaking head! <laughs> you never mentioned you had a kid. I was young. I needed money. But no one would buy the baby off me. Yo, back off. I can't be in a relationship without trust. I don't suppose you learned anything from this experience? Just how to turn a toothbrush into a knife and make a bomb out of coffee creamers. What am I going to do with you, Gina? I don't know, but after this debacle, I'm gonna have your badge. Because I placed you, a minor, inside a prison among hardened criminals and a riot broke out? No, because I lifted it just now while you were yakking. That's your cue to hop on your horse and yell something stupid, hotshot. <sighs> What's this for? I brung you a cake. I gotta have a reason. Look inside. I knew it! 
You were gonna steal it the whole time. Not at all. But that bitch lied to me. You lie to me, I steal your goose. General principles. So? What's it worth? Nothing. It's a Chinese knockoff. Hi, Chief. <laughs> it's Tracy, right? La 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 which one's the button again? Ah, there it is. Hey, how you doing? I'm Chief Falcone. Well, McDougal. I got the alias in witness protection because of my nephew Jimmy. I don't like it, but I had no choice. So there's a contract out on me. Big deal. I mean, maybe I spilled a few secrets to anyone who'd listen, but there's a lot of other secrets I'd never tell a soul. Like the fact that we faked the moon landing. We were the ones that shot Dick Cheney's friend in the face. And we took the weapons of mass distraction out of Iraq. Someone got the memo wrong, but still, us. So, anyway, my nephew's gonna straighten things out with Don Gambini, whose first name, oddly enough, is Don. So if he wanted, he could call himself Don Don, which I would do. I mean, how cool would that be? Cheech don't mean no harm. He's just a little light in a cranial region. I got nothing to worry about. Jimmy will get me off the hook. Maron! Don Don's a pancake. Then the mob tried to kill us. Jimmy ratted everyone out to the feds, and we wound up in Regina. Vagina? No, wait, you were right. But if you think that's gonna stop me from shooting my mouth off, you can just... What is it? I forget what it is. Forget about it! That's the one! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war. <laughs> okay, 12 nothing. Hey, Ma, I just saw Petey upstairs with one of them magazines where nobody's got no clothes on. What? Peter Frampton McDougal, you stop right now. No son of mine is washing with the devil's hands, so... All right, that worked. She's gone. Listen, I got a line on something big. Really? Sounds big. First things first. Every time I hatch a scheme, you two Gavones cut me out. Not this time. Either I'm in all the way, or I keep this to myself. Isn't she cute? Playing hardball like her old man. Okay, it's a deal, sweetie. All right. You know Al Capone, eh? Only the architect of modern crime. I love his work. Truly an inspiration. Well, he ran a bootlegging operation from a town near here. He dug all these tunnels to hide from the cops, and that's where his famous secret vault is. You kidding me? What's this town called? Moose Jaw. Look, Gina, there's no town called Moose Jaw. It's just a crazy made-up name, like Albuquerque. What do you know? The kid's onto something. There's one thing I don't get. What's that? Fractions, Jimmy. I never understood fractions. Hey, Anna, what's wrong? I'm just feeling down, because no one ever asks me out. How do I get someone to ask me out? Sorry, I have no frame of reference. Well, of course not. You can get any guy you want without even trying. Heck, I even get guys I don't want without even... Yamahama, who's that? Oh, his name is Johnny. Can't talk, lusting. Okay, bye. Hey. Hello? Is somebody there? There sure is. I'm Teresa. Teresa. From Mr. Henderson's class. You've shown up twice in getting straight A's. Guilty as charged. Wanna frisk me? No thanks. What's wrong with you? I'm hot! Are you blind or something? Hello? Oh, thank God, you can't see. I thought it was me. Yep, lucky you. How about you and I... Uh... This is weird. I usually seal the deal with hay. Sorry, no offense, but I like women with brains. Ideas, something going on upstairs? Come on over to my house. We'll get something going on upstairs. 
Oh, so it's not enough you blind people get all the best parking. Now you think you're too good for me? Well, I'm too good for you, mister. Who am I kidding? I am so in love. I'm starting to enjoy these clandestine meetings, Jimmy. The subterfuge, the intrigue, the covertness of it all. Me too. And by the way, if Cookie ever asks, we meet here every night. Anyway, I need permission to go out of town. Impossible. Your witness protection agreement strictly forbids it. But it's really important. Important? How so? Um, all right, I'll level with you. Cheech built himself a rocket. He's always been a, what do you call it, amateur rocket. Rocketeer, yes. So, he was going to go out to the woods and launch the thing. We don't want to do it in the city and blow our cover. James McDougal, I know you well enough to know when you're telling a lie, and frankly, this one is a doozy. All right, you got me. We just want to go to Moose Jaw. We hear the tacos are pretty good. Moose Jaw? That's hardly out of town. It's just down the road, practically a suburb. Permission granted. For Canada! And naming cities when you're drunk! What are you doing? I'm in love with the blind guy, so I'm trying to learn sign language. Ah. Uh... But it's useless. I should just forget about him. He only dates smart girls. I faked a lot of things in my life, but never smart. All right, Petey. I searched your room, the attic, and the garage. Where's the pornography? Mother, I don't have any pornography. Don't give me that. If you've got porn, you're a pervert. And if you don't have porn, then why the hell don't you have porn? Because boys your age have porn. That's not to say I don't know my way around a woman's body. Ew. What I don't get is how the kid knows where Capone's vault is. I told you, I'm only doling out information on a need-to-know basis. This kid, she kills me. Al Capone's tunnels. I'm impressed, and I'm not easily impressed. Hey, look. Cows. What? Cows? Whoa, would you look at that? Cows, Jimmy, look. Jimmy. Just being in the same place Al Capone hung out has got me all excited. I've been excited since we pulled out a vagina. Yeah, me too. So let's get to it already. Crack open a sewer cover, let's find them tunnels. Tree, please. <laughs> all right, we're in. All right, you mugs. I'm your tour guide, see? You do as I say, see? One wrong move and you get it, see? <laughs> Who does this punk think he is ordering us around? Take it easy, it's part of the show. Let's start the tour, see? This way to Al Capone's tunnels, see? If he says see again, I'm blowing his head off. Did Capone dig these tunnels himself? No, they were dug by Chinese immigrants working under terrible conditions. Terrible, I tells ya. Did the Chinese then use these tunnels to deliver food? Pull back. The vault should be somewhere around here. Again, how does she know all of this? Shut your pie hole and make yourself useful. <laughs> Careful, my soft spot. It's this one. For the last time, how the hell does she know all of this? Al Capone's treasure. Get ready to be rich! Whoa! It's actually Al Capone! This is unbelievable. That's it? That's the treasure? What a f***ing rip-off! go through all this trouble, and what do we get? Jewels, cash, gold? No, a stinking Al capone Hey, a little respect for a dead homie. Oh my god, you're alive! Oh my god, you're fat! Hey, is that nice? I thought we were having a state in the obvious contest. Who the heck are you, Muggs? I'm Jimmy. This is my Uncle Cheech. I'm your biggest Jimmy, Mr. Uncle. I'm Gina. I'm the one who sprung ya. You. You're a legend to us gangsters everywhere, Mr. Capone. Thanks. Why don't you call me Al? So, fellas, we back in business? Uh, the short answer is no. The word no makes me sour, Jimmy. Give me the long answer. Well, for starters, it's the 21st century. You pulling my leg? I got into that contraption in 1932. I was facing hard times, see? One day, my associate Frank Nitty found a hobo who looked just like me. It was like looking in a mirror, see? So I offered him a thousand beans to do my time for me. This egghead who made booze for me invented a freezing machine. He wanted to use it to freeze cats up, but I had another idea. Thaw me when they paroled a the hobo. Ah! I wonder what happened to that fella. 
So you two are gangsters, eh? I could use a couple of mugs like you. I'm gonna start over, see? You two are getting in on the ground floor. It's the second coming of Al Capone. How does two grand a year sound? Really? You want us to work for you? You're darn tootin'. First things first, we gotta find a supplier for our whiskey. Uh, booze is legal now. They repealed prohibition. Damn that, Roosevelt. You get his. Well, there's still gambling girls, all sorts of rackets. Stick with me, boys, and know what I'm doing. You are 11 kilometers from Regina. This gal sounds like a real dish. Thanks, little lady. What do you say we meet up over Manhattan, and I'll tell you a thing or two? Prepare to exit right. Fine, be that way. Boy, 21st century dame sure can give it a hi-hat. Your face feels very handsome. Teresa, I'm supposed to do that to see what you look like. Oh, right. What's your finger reading? Shakespeare. Shakespeare, born in Stratford on Avon? You know, that's where makeup comes from. Teresa, look, I'm flattered, but when it comes to girls, it's what's inside that counts. I don't care about looks. Oh my god. You're into fat chicks. I'm sorry. Oh yeah? Well, as the saying goes, turn me down once, shame on me. Turn me down twice, go to hell! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, I present to you, Mr. Al Capone! Nice to meet you, Mr. Capone. I'm Bonnie, and this is Clyde. Over there is Amelia Earhart. <laughs> Something tells me she's giving me the business. Let's break out the good china before John Dillinger gets here. I am so sorry about that, Al. Hey, if I weren't me, I wouldn't believe I was Al Capone either. Now be a doll and fix me a gimlet, will you? I have no idea what a gimlet is. Well, kid, once we're back in business, I'll teach you to mix a hundred different drinks. You know, she'll make a good cigarette girl. I ain't gonna be no girl in short skirts for nobody. I got bigger plans. You got moxie, kid. All right, I'll find something for you in the organization. Stick with me and you'll be Charlie Potatoes. Now you're talking my language. Here, have a beer. Beer in a can? How do you like that? How do you open this thing? Can you believe this? We're gonna work for Al Capone! You think the Mountie will let us do that? We don't need him. We'll be big shots in the new Capone organization. We'll be on opposite sides of the law like nature intended. Oh, wait. We can't work for Capone. He'll find out I was a rat and he'll deal with me the Chicago way. Well, uh, what does that mean? He's gonna kill you with a lot of wind? I'm talking a baseball bat to the head. He can't ever know. And the only way to make sure he never finds out is to tell him we can't work for him. Damn. Come on, Jimmy, he's a stand-up guy. If he learns it straight from you, he'll respect your honesty. Have I ever steered you wrong? How can you even say that with a straight face? <laughs> What's wrong? Blind boy is treating me like a stereotype. He can't see how hot I am, so he thinks there should be more to me. I said, duh, you just need eyes. Then he got all mad, stormed off, and fell into a fountain. For starters, maybe you should stop calling him Blind Boy. Okay, fine. But how do I snare this Blind Boy? I mean, cripple. First, go back to Blind Boy. Second, stop trying to act smart. Stop acting anything. Just be yourself. I don't know what that means. Well, if you don't know, how's he supposed to know? I found this in the bathroom. Tell me something, Petey. When Jesus comes back, do you want him to see you abusing your body like that? Do you want our Lord and Savior standing over you while you're slapping the salami like some kind of depraved zoo monkey? Mom, it isn't- oh, you expect me to believe that, do you? Well, just know this. Whenever you think you're alone, Mama's watching. That won't cause problems later in life. All right, Jimmy, if we're gonna run a 21st century business, I need to learn your 21st century gizmos. Show me something. Listen, Al, there's something I gotta tell you. What's this? It's a cellular telephone, but Al- a telephone? How do you like them apples? Operator, get me Klondike A21. Hello? Hello? That's Chloe Dame sleeping on the job. Al, I really got it. Look at that! You got moving pictures in your living room. It's called a television, but- Who's your colored kid talking? He's the President of the United States. I like you, Jimmy. You make me laugh. Look, Al, I gotta tell you something. Cheech and me, we thought it over. And we can't work for you. Come on, Jimmy. You can't back out now. I need you. It's just that I done some terrible things. We all done terrible things. 
that's what makes us so good at our jobs. No, but this one's really, really bad. Even you wouldn't approve. Come on, Jimmy, you think I didn't do stuff I wasn't proud of? I once shot my boss's dog. I had to. I shot my boss and the pooch shot the whole thing. Now, come on. Tell your Uncle Al what you did. Well, promise you won't get mad? I give you my word. You no good stool pigeon! You gave me your word! I don't gotta keep my word to you, she. You're a squealing little squealer, you low-down rat. Not the words I choose, but yes. But you said you needed me, Al. You call me Mr. Capone. There's rules in this racket, and you broke them, she. Damn it! Mr. Capone, come on. Don't do this. Go ahead and shoot, because I won't rest until you pay for what you've done. I can't do it. Then I'll be back for blood. Uh, your blood. Yeah, no, I got it. Hey, Jimmy. Don't sneak up on me like that! It's just me. What do you mean, just me? Did he tell you to say that? What's wrong with you? Al Capone's trying to kill me. Jimmy, I put up with a lot. But give me a break. That guy is not Al Capone. Yes, he is. We went through these tunnels in this other city and found him cryptomagnetically frozen. What? You went out of town and he didn't take me? Where's Uncle Al? He's not your uncle, but if you see him coming, whistle twice and throw Cheech in front of me. Gina, switch seats. I want my back against the wall. Pop, that was a car backfiring. Sounded like a shot. I know the difference. Look, Pop, for the record, if it comes down to it, I'm on Capone's side. I don't blame you, kid. With me out of the way, you're gonna need a father figure. Jimmy, this can't go on. You're hiding in like a little girl. No offense, Gina. Up yours. You're intimidated by the fact that he's a legend. Think of him as just a guy who puts on his underwear one hole at a time. You're right. He's just a guy. I can take just one guy. Hell, I could take ten guys. In a fight. I want to be clear on that. Interesting outfit, Jimmy. Shh, you hear that? What? What is it? It's too quiet. I don't like this. What are you talking about? needed a city map. Check out the water slide. It's a lot of fun. Eat up, men. There's plenty more where this came from. Boy, this is the best barbecue sauce I've ever eaten. Who made it? I did. I got the recipe from Barbecue Build. What's in it? What's in it? Why, I'll tell you the recipe. When Barbecue Bill left the Mounties, he handed it down to me. A little of this, a little of that, a piece of old shoe, a part of a hat. Mix together and eat your fill, said old barbecue bill. <laughs> Who could this be from? <sighs> you gotta help me, McCool. Someone's trying to kill me. My God, who? Al Capone. I left my Mountie barbecue for this? I'm serious. We found him underground in Moose Jaw in a big block of ice. Now he's out there stalking me and he wants my blood. Hmm, this is indeed serious. We must get you to safety before Al Capone finds you and does his worst. There, there, Jimmy. We'll find a safe haven for you. Thanks, McCool. I know I could count on you. Ah! No, God! You can't lock me up! He'll get to me in here! Nothing stops this guy! This is for your own good, Jimmy. Obviously, the strain of relocation has gotten to you. The doctor assures me that a strenuous regimen of enemas and testicular electroshock will put you right in no time. Yo, no one's zapping my boys. You're too far gone to realize it, but I am your friend, and I will see you through this. Pipe in some Kenny G to soothe the poor man. No! 
time to talk. <sighs> Teresa, please. Put down your bumpy book. I got something to say. All right, what is it? You will write about me. The truth is, I don't know who I am. I look to other people to define myself like some crazy one-way mirror. And I'm always afraid that if I don't live up to what they want me to be, they'll ignore me. Or not pay any attention to me at all. Wow. Underneath the makeup, the fashion, the unbridled sexuality, you're just a scared little girl. And you're the first boy I've ever met who wants to know that girl. Oh, Teresa, come here. Yamahama, who's that? Doc, I'm fine. As soon as they come, now you gotta let me out of here. Yeah, all right, Jimmy boy. You outsmarted. Yeah. Come with me if you want to live. I thought you was on Capone's team. What am I going to do? You're my pops. Besides, Capone's broke. He's a schmuck. Nurse, you got to help me. Someone's trying to kill me. Oh, crap. I got an apple to peel with you, Buster. Al, be reasonable. I'm wearing a dress. Reason went out the window days ago. We have a code, see? And you broke that code. Hold on. According to the code, if someone saves your life... Hold on, I got it right here. If someone saves your life, you have to recipro... Recipro... Sound it out, honey. Reciprocate. It means never try to kill them. Let me see that. Well, what do you know? Can't argue with the code. Well, I guess we're even. Put it there, Pally. Thanks a lot, Al. Let's dust out of here. I guess this is where we part ways. But what will he do? Where will you go? Every time there's a buck to be made for a legal hooch, I'll be there. Every time a lonely young girl comes to the big city for the first time, I'll be there to force her into prostitution. Every time a truck leaves a warehouse full of valuables, by God, Jimmy, I'll be there. Bye, Uncle Capone. So long, Al. Oh. Come now, Jimmy, we've got to make you sane. Doctor, fire up the electroshock room. Jimmy, drop your pants. <laughs> Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? You know, back in the old days you found out someone was getting whacked after it was done. You'd be all, hey, where's so-and-so? And everyone get all quiet like someone farted. But with Cheech, I found out in advance. It was the day I had four root canals. Wise guys ain't big on dental work, but Cookie made me go. Word came down from Gambini. Cheech has got to die. <laughs> but I forgot where he lives. I know, I'm a terrible friend. Now where is he so I can go kill him? <laughs> what would he say? Quit stalling, Jimmy. I promise I'll make it quick and painless for him. Okay, only one of those is true. <laughs> what language is that? Stroke victim? I was trying to plead for Cheech's life and explained that I'd just been to the dentist, but I couldn't get a word out. Ah, so this is where he is. There's a good boy, Jimmy. They didn't find Cheech, but they came away with something. And that's why four out of five gangsters never go to the dentist. But if you think Canadian healthcare covers dental, forget about it!
Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Then Mario says, Witch Head, I got a suitcase full of them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew as much. As I settled in for an evening of whittling in CBC Radio, I heard a report of two rowdies causing a ruckus. Surprise, surprise, it's you two. We ain't drunk enough to cause no ruckus. <laughs> now we're ruckus. McCool, you know what your problem is? You don't know how to have fun. I certainly do. Why, just last week I snowshoed across a barren, unforgiving tundra to go ice fish. Oh, very funny. Face it, you're boring. Boring, eh? We'll see about that. Bucky, fix me three prancing mounties. <gasps> What's that, a girly drink? Certainly not. Each ingredient of the Prancing Mountie is culled from Canada's finest fermenters and distillers. Plus seven ounces of 180 proof Jamaican rum. Yeah, girly drink. To Canada, where 0 .08 isn't the limit, it's the minimum. Jimmy! <laughs> oh, what happened last night? <laughs> Where the hell am I? This place looks familiar. <laughs> Jimmy, how much did we drink? I don't know, it's a blur. I had a horrifying nightmare in which, for some reason, we left Regina and... <gasps> Holy balls! Joni Mitchell's paved paradise! We're in New York! Why are we in New York? You tell me! You're the detective! This is clearly some kind of fever dream brought on by last night's debauchery. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to will myself unconscious, and when I awaken, everything will be back to normal. McCool, that's nuts! You can't... Morning, Jimbo. We really tied one on last night, huh? You made coffee? Do you know where we are? We're in New York. What are you, stupid? I had this nightmare that we were in some frozen crap hole in Canada. And our name was, get this, McGillicuddy. McDougal. <gasps> oh my god, it's the Mountie from my dream. Wait, no, this is the dream. Or is it? <laughs> what does that mean? This is the end of my career. I can't call for help. What would I say? I thought I'd take the Falcone boys to New York to reconnect them with the people who want them dead? <laughs> oh, lovely. That's probably work wondering where I am. So don't answer it. This is my work phone. I have to. No, you don't. <sighs> Special agent, straight McCool. Oh, hello, Cookie. Thank God you answered. Jimmy went out for a beer last night and didn't come home. I'm so worried. What if something happened? I don't know what I'd do without him. Don't worry, Cookie. He's, uh, with me. He had a little too much fun last night. Oh, I'm so relieved. Now tell that useless fat f not to come staggering home until he sobered his ass up. Because I am not dealing with a giant sweaty man baby all day. Oh, and Cheech is also with me. Don't care. Jimmy, is this your old house? Yeah, it is. But how do you know? <gasps> I added the last part. They always leave me out. Why do I have to help clean out the garage? I didn't do anything wrong. Mom found cigarette butts outside, so until the culprit comes forward, we're all paying for it. Only time I touch smokes is when I buy them more for reserve and sell them at the high school. Gina, that's wrong. If a 300% markup is wrong, I don't want to be right. Who's this guy with mom? And why does he look like me? Maybe it's your twin brother. That's impossible. This guy's at least 20 years older than me. Besides, this is what happened to Petey's twin. Yum, 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 yum. 
Why would they make a flip book of that? Probably so you could do this. Eee, talk about shame eating. It would appear the parts of your house that haven't been vandalized and or used as a toilet have been converted into a veterinary clinic. That's because this is a mob doctor's office. Mob doctors are usually greedy, money-grubbing veterinarians. No kidding. 50 G's for a baboon heart, and I can barely climb stairs. Uh, I think the doctor is in. <gasps> Did you do this, Cheech? I didn't touch the guy. I leave him bloody, not naked. Well, I didn't do it. <clears throat> I have no idea what happened, but the good doctor is wearing my handcuffs. Attaboy, McCool! Yes, we can congratulate my decline into degeneracy later, but right now we need to focus on getting out of here before... Doc, it's Leo! Open the door! Tutty got shot in the ass. Again! Oh, crap! It's the Gambini crew! Dino, kick it in! Good day, gentlemen! Oh, yo! Where's the regular Doc? I'm his, uh... brother? His brother, huh? And who are these guys? Uh, these are my interns. They're, uh, deaf and mute, so they won't be able to say a single word. Not a single word. Now, let's uh, get the patient into the, um, examining room. Jimmy, what's wrong with you? We're deaf and mute. Close your eyes. <laughs> Is the garage cleaned out yet, Smokey? <gasps> what the hell are you doing with that? I want to know who that is. That's... that's none of your business. Forget your sort and do not bring it up in front of your father, you hear me? But who is he? Who is who? The man in the picture. What picture? I don't see any picture. There's no picture. Damn it, my ring came off. <laughs> See what you made me do, you nosy bastard! Shouldn't you clean any uh, potential obstructions around the abrasion collar of the contusion so he don't get necrotic fasciitis? I... I'm sorry, what? Shave his ass so hair don't get in the hole! Oh, of course! You two, prep the patient. You're quite knowledgeable. I grew up around here. I've seen more shots in the ass than a Catholic altar boy. Look at these clowns. Shaving asses for a living. Come on, Dino. Let's go smoke. <laughs> Who's he calling a clown? Hey, I thought you was mute. Now nah, he's the deaf one. Oh, so you are the mute? Exactly. Got it. Wait a minute. We could argue all day about who's mute and who's deaf, but we really should be focusing on your ass, Tootie. You, focus that razor on this man's ass. <sighs> Thanks, Cheech. No problem, Jimmy. You killed Gambini for me. It's the least I could do. <gasps> Jimmy! Guys, get in here! It's Jimmy Falcone! And Cheech, who do I gotta blow to get remembered around here? <laughs> Relax, gentlemen. Tootie had a reaction to the anesthetic. He's fine now. Well, what was all that about Jimmy Falcone? He's probably just upset about being in the man's former house. Wait a sec. How'd you know this was Jimmy's house? Well, no one breaks into a random residence and paints kill Jimmy Falcone on the wall. Just hearing that stinking rat's name makes me want to kill him and kill anyone he's with. And then kill a bunch of other people on account of being so keyed up. Come on, Dino. Let's go punch something. <laughs> Quit flopping around. I'm sorry to have to do this. Nice shot, McCool. I'll see if I can find us a way out of here. Cheech, put some stitches in Tootie's behind, will you? Why? What kind of pretend doctor would I be if I allowed this man to get necrotic fasciitis? Maron, look at all these drugs. Hit me! Hit me! Hit me! Don't worry, fellas. I'm gonna pick all of you. Yay! I found something. It's a long shot, but it might work. Follow me. Did you sew up the hole in his keister? Yeah, both of them. But there was only one. Oh. Who 
are you? How do you know my mom? And what was your major at Harvard? <gasps> of course! Y you're my father! And that's what I'd look like with boobs. This is never gonna work! What's the matter with you, McCool? It's all I could come up with, Jimmy. I'm a little stressed out, so cut me some slack! Okay, sorry. Where'd you find this get-up, anyway? Just inside the door of an escape tunnel in the basement. <gasps> Calgary Stampede! Let's go back! Where you going, Doc? Say, that's a nice animal. Wait a sec. I don't remember seeing no horse inside. Dino, shut up! What's the matter with you? He's a vet, you moron! See, this is why you still live in your mother's basement. Leo! You son of a bitch! Where the hell have you been? Ah, oh, crap. It's Marie. <laughs> remember Marie? There's a piece of work. F***ing shoot me now, Jimmy. What are you doing out here with these mooks? I bet you forgot our anniversary, didn't ya? Oh, baby! Of course not! I was, uh, just talking to the doc here about your big surprise. I, uh, no, you weren't. Sure I was. I was explaining how if you didn't help me out, I'd put you and your fancy fucking horse in the East River in small packages. Oh, yes, that. This better be good. Great! I'm back in New York and I don't even get to see it! Oh! Smells like New York back here! Oh! So you're the one who was smoking, Teresa! You saw nothing. I guess it makes sense. Everyone in this family is a big fat liar. Who you calling fat? And who you calling a liar? Wait, no. I'll give you that one. Now I know why I don't fit in. Because the man in that picture is my real father. But you and Papa are so alike. <laughs> I can't even finish that. Maybe this needle thick is your father. Does that make Petey a bastard? Yeah, so nothing's changed. Mark all you want. I'm going to Harvard to find my dad. Ah! The guy graduated from Harvard. It's not like he lives there. Yeah, the only people who live at their schools are janitors and Harry Potters. I know, it's just a starting point in my search for my- Is somebody smoking? It's Petey. I knew it. Going to Harvard, bye. Ah, uh, this is the slowest goddamn horse in New York. Somebody give him some hay or something. <gasps> Yo, Doc! What gives? Jesus H. Diefenbaker, did we steal a plane? Uh, you're killing my anniversary here. Tell the horse to go faster, or someone's gonna be shaving your ass tonight. Help me out here! <sighs> what the hell's that? Horse stimulant from the vet's office. Jesus, Cheech, who finds random drugs and then just takes them? I do, Jimmy. It's called living. Yeah, well, don't get any big ideas. Ow! I don't feel nothing. I think that was a dud. <laughs> Hell of a thoroughbred you got there, Doc. That gives me an idea. That horse better come up a winner, or it's the glue factory for him, the cement shoe store for you, and the supermarket for me. Killing makes me hungry. I think we can totally do this! I think we can totally do this! Every moment of my life has led me to doing this. Let's do this! <laughs> It's a beautiful morning in Belmont. The sun is shining, the horses are ready, and the great Canadian invasion was a false alarm. I don't know what you did at the park, but do it again as soon as you hear the bell. We took a speed. <laughs> Lots of speed. I never thought I'd say this, but thank God for illegal drugs. In gate five, we've got saucy buckets, and in gate six, we have obviously a pantomime horse. That's the horse's name, folks, not a description. It's a good name.
The important thing is, did we have fun? And no, we did not. Damn it. I needed that money to buy my way out of this horrible life. What did you just say? I uh, said, uh, let's go put that stinking animal out of our misery. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Ooh. So this is Harvard. I always wondered when you would realize the truth, my son. Father! <laughs> Come join my research team, Peter. I'm developing a pill that cures global warming. But how? It makes human flatulence refill holes in the ozone layer. You said flatulence. That's science for farts. Hey, come home to Mama. <laughs> Mama, no! I'll be your Mama. Okay. <laughs> Peter Frampton McDougal, get off this bus right now! I want to meet my real father! Keep this up and I'll see to it you meet Jesus! Whoa, now oh. come on! I always thought that if I died inside a horse, it would be more... sexual. That's shaky Dino Bonzini. Guy can't shoot to save his life. Keep moving till he runs out of bullets. Hey, yo, Silver, keep still! Leo, you gotta see this! You kill him yet? How do you like that? The horse has got moves. That gives me an idea. So, this is just a horse dancing for three hours? See what happens when you gloss over rehearsals? you think I'd have a kid with someone other than your father? Because I look so much like that guy. Ugh. He's your uncle. My brother, Pauly. The Brainiac. You have a brother? Why'd you keep him a secret from us? Your father put him through Harvard. But when he found out what Pop did for a living, Pauly ratted him out on a two-bit gambling thing. Pop did a year in Attica. Oh, so obviously Pauly's dead now. Jimmy let it slide as long as we never spoke of Pauly again. You are definitely your father's son. Mainly because you're both dopes. And because Polly got picked up exposing himself in the subway. What a sicko getting naked in public. Weren't you once a stripper? That was for money, which is socially acceptable. I told you the script needed work. We should have hired David Mamet. And have the horse saying f and sh all over the stage? No thanks. We gotta retool. Maybe do out-of-town previews? Bottom line is, the horse is done. I'm replacing him with Nathan Lane. Obviously a pantomime horse. Your time is up. It's gonna be horse stakes tonight, boys! So this is how it ends. To be fair, I knew we were dead after Rex Reed's review. McCool, where you been? Not trying to get tickets for this debacle, I'll tell you that. But thank the Northern Lights, you're still alive. We won't be for long if you don't get us out of here. Boys, I owe you an apology. This escapade was clearly the result of my trying to prove I was fun. We owe you an apology. You're a freaking wild man. Yeah, this is the best time I've had in years. Of course, I can't remember that many years, but still. Thank you, gentlemen. That means a lot coming from you. All right, let's mop up the circle, jerk, because we're in big trouble. Buck up, boys. We're going back to Canada. Yeah, in a pine box. No, the same way we came, on the backs of prancing Mounties. I'm scared, Jimmy. Me too. Who knows where we could wind up? Where you been, Pop? I got drunk, dressed as a horse, ran for my life. You know, weekend stuff. I did some stupid stuff, too. You know what they say, Petey? 
If you like my father, then you'll like my son. That's not at all what they say. Whatever. You're the one with the brains. <laughs> Do I smell smoke? It's probably Petey! What's wrong with you? Don't you know smoke it'll kill you? All right, see you later, Broadway. And not a word of this to anyone, Jimmy. For Canada! Well, la 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 How you doing? You know me as the card carrying ex capo from the New York mob. Let the record show, I'm also a hopeless romantic. I met my wife the same way as a lot of people at work. See, Bobby Peltz was behind on his protection money, so we went over there to discuss payment options. Ah! I never let emotions get in the way of my job. Until that night. She was the classiest fraud I ever laid eyes on. The face of an angel and a killer, but... I mean that figurally and literally. From that moment, I was head over here. I quartered her through the arraignment, trial, and sentencing. And on visiting day, she agreed to be my wife. Yes! Yes! Now that we're in chilly vagina, we still know how to keep it hot. Wait a sec. How'd you sneak the engagement ring into prison? He stuck it up his wazoo. Oh! What? It was romantic. And kind of hot. The ring, I mean. On account of it having been crammed so far up his... <laughs> <laughs> ah, Cook, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Remember our wedding day? You look so handsome, strangling the DJ. Happiest day of my life. What about when we had the kids? That's the day happiness died. Thank God we sent him to... Where'd we send him? Summer camp. You know, to get in touch with nature and crap. I'd like to get in touch with your nature, if you know what I mean. <gasps> what the hell is this? You keep an album of your stinking gumars with the family photos? Cookie, I can explain! Actually, I got no idea how this got here. Oh, you guys found my memory journal. <laughs> yeah. Those were the days, huh, Jimmy? Remember them two broads? Twins, Jimmy. Double your fun. And their Suki blows good. And I still don't think that was a real name. Jimmy, I know floozies on the side were part of the old life, but I don't need them shoved in my face. And here's Patty Pontoons. Boy, did she ever have big feet. Good night, Jimmy. Uh-oh. You made her quiet angry. The kind where you think she forgot. And then, bam, your nuts are in a vice. Baby, wait! These memories ain't even mine! I don't know what you did, Jimmy. But, uh, think next time. Okay. I'm confused. Where's the spa at this crummy freaking resort? There is no spa at summer camp, Counselor McDougal. Counselor? I've never even been to law school. I object. Okay, to review our whistle signals. <whistles> means rabid cougar. <whistles> means escaped maniac with a chainsaw. <gasps> now, who's ready for a hike through Cougar Canyon to the abandoned mental hospital? We're all gonna die. Could you kids take off your boots so my ride's not so bumpy? All right, time for some real fun. You hungry? How about a shish kebab? <laughs> Yo!
you missed! No, I didn't. The raccoon's kids were in there. <laughs> nice shot. Name's Carmine. Gina, what's a wise guy like you doing out here in the weeds? Two months for pissing off a juvie judge back home. I guess you can't escape from the wilderness. You're telling me. This place blows. So, let's mug someone. Screw that. Let's mug everyone. Good. After screwing up my weekend, you should move out. No, oh, I booked you and Cookie a romantic getaway. Spared no expense. Got you lots of points on your credit card, for which you are welcome. That's not going to work. She's so mad, she's selling a wedding dress on eBay. Look, I've been married six times. I know women. Take her to this place in the country. Make her feel special. She'll melt like butter. <laughs> hey, remember Butter Picaro? Nothing melted in her mouth, huh? Cook, I'm sorry. Let me make it right and take you away for the weekend. Why don't you take one of your bimbos? Maybe Butter Picaro's available. Oh, Butter was always available. Jimmy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, shut up, Cheech. Look, I just... I don't know how you idiots forgot that... Da! Da! Means hornet's nest surrounded by poison ivy! What? I said it's a loony for number one and a deuce for a deuce. Or five bucks for both. Yo, Carmine, give me a sec. I gotta go make fun of my brother. Hmm. <laughs> Only you can come to summer camp and catch the leprosy. Gina, what's that boy's name? What are you, a cop? It's Carmine. <gasps> I think that's Carmine Gambini. As in his father was Dawn Gambini? As in dad killed him, Gambini, and that's why we're in witness protection, Gambini? You been drinking from the rusty fountain? Cause that's two bucks. I'm telling you, that's him. We were at his christening. I christened thee, Carmine. <clears throat> Come on, just cause he's from New York and his pop worked in sanitation and fell from the 19th floor window. Oh my God, how did I not see this? You have to stay away from him. What if you let it slip that Pop killed his father? I don't let things slip. What am I, a cheech? You can't go near Carmine, okay? Stay away from him, he's trouble. Carmine equals trouble. Petey, if you're on your period, be careful. There's bears out here. Dinner at five, dress code in effect. Enjoy your stay. Hear that? A dress code. Only the best for my cookie. Don't pin your hopes on any undress code when we get upstairs. Uh. You were informed of the dress code, were you not, sir? Of course I was. What, are you blind? You believe this prick? I guess he just knows a sleaze bag when he sees one, Jimmy. Can we stop? Let's not mess this up by being mad about the past. Let's just enjoy tonight. What do you say, baby? Amazed at the size of your freaking balls. Thank you. To bring me to a swingers party. I had no idea, I swear. Come on, we're getting out of here. Oh, no, we're not. You want to swing? You got it. I'm going to powder my nose. Try not to get anyone pregnant. And order me the tube steak. <clears throat> Cheats residents. You humongous idiot. Hey, Jimmy, how's the weekend? How the hell did you find this pervert parade? Ad in a magazine, where else? What did the ad say? Uh, couples only, like you two. What else? Loving environment? Again, tailor-made for you crazy kids. Okay, did you read the top of the ad? Uh, yeah. Midsummer Bangapalooza. So you two all made up? Hello? The other counselors are gonna feel pretty stupid at their makeout party when they realize they forgot dish duty. 
<sighs> I'm so lonely. <gasps> oh, hey, Camper. I heard you talking about me to Gina. Oh. oh. Want to hear a joke? Knock, knock. Who, who's there? Orange. Orange who? Aren't you lucky this ain't a bag full of hammers? Ow! No, I'm sorry! I'm sorry about your dad! What about my dad? You know how my dad killed your dad? That's why you're beating me, right? No, I'm beating you because you told your sister not to hang out with me. So, this isn't about your father? Well, it is now! Some snacks for the makeout party. <gasps> Ew, is that pee? Some of it is. Ahem. <clears throat> Your lack of nudity is making the other patrons uncomfortable. Well, we wouldn't want that, would we? I can be just as adventurous as your little New York skanks. I'm going to the SM Grotto to spank me an accountant! That's it. I'm calling McCool. Special Agent Straight McCool. McCool? <gasps> Please, tell me you're here to watch us. <laughs> Only if that's what you're into. Oh, God, don't come over. Well, I was nervous my first time here as well. You can always use the safe word, kumquat. Last year it was harder, which we really should have thought through. Isn't this stuff illegal? Cause it ought to be. Not at all. Swinging is perfectly legal, consensual, and, quite frankly, beautiful. Beautiful? There's a skid mark on this chair. Don't panic, Jimmy. You're free to walk out at any time. Though I recommend staying for Randy Mouthfeel, the erotic hypnotist. Oh, the things he makes people do. There's Cookie. I'll go say hello. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You thought taking me to the Royal Pork Hotel would make up for that photographic walk down Mamory Lane? There's nothing to make up for! That was the old life! Well, the old life was a two-time in scumbag! You know, I never heard you complain about it when you were sitting pretty in Brooklyn with a big house, fancy cars, and piles of money. How dare you! <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> well, looky here. You folks done blew yourself a foursome. There's a whole lot of that going around tonight. Hop on in. We'll run you to the gas station. So you can introduce us to Cousin Leatherface? Forget it. We'll just stroll back to the hotel for some kinky karaoke. <laughs> bunch of natural born stool pigeons. He beat it out of me. Then he got angry. Quiet angry. The most dangerous angry of all. You think they forgot? Then BAM! It's sunny at the toll booth. What's nice weather at a toll booth got to do with anger? You never saw The Godfather, did you? No! It's one of the many things I'll never get to do after Carmine rats us out to the mob. I'm too young to die. I'll never know true love. Or learn advanced Klingon. You know there's a connection there. Leave this to me. We'll have an old-fashioned sit-down. Oh, thank God. That's for squealing. Go! And that's for never seeing the Godfather. Hey, this ain't no gas station. Ah. Now it is. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Well, chubby man and red lady, these here are my brother, cousin, father, sons. So, it's a deliverance reunion. Cookie, in these situations, scatterguns trump wisecracks. Let me handle this. What do you want? Cash? Credit cards? Our skin to make a suit? We're from a tight-knit community in the black prairies of northern Saskatchewan. And y'all got something we need. 
You ain't getting nothing from me, Hills Have Eyes. Yeah, you stay away from my wife. I'll go bang a whore. I'm still mad at you. Oh, shucks, ma'am. I don't know what you're thinking, but we don't want nothing from you. We want your brother. He's my husband. Well, excuse us, Mrs. Highfalutin. Look at me. My husband ain't my brother. I ain't got no blood disorder. My head's a regular shape. whoop a dee doo Shut up, will ya? Uh, boys, just show them we mean business. Wow! <laughs> Easy, Mick. You're too excited. Well, feller, you can either help us out or you can eat a buckshot salad. I never thought I'd say these words to a gang of horny hillbillies, but please be gentle. Hang on, hang on. You idiots drove all the way from the Black Prairies to get it on with this sack of crap? Hey. What? No, ma'am. You see, as of late, we noticed something real wrong with our youngins. We reckon there's been too many cousins and siblings and whatnot making babies. <laughs> Uh, bottom line is, our chitlins ain't right. Yikes! Stands to reason we need a new swimmer in the old gene pool. I don't think you hoot nannies understand how this works. I can't birth no babies. We know. We ain't stupid. Ours is a matriarchal society, and the women folk demand to be babyfied forthwith. Now, the standards of beauty in the Black Prairies be what y'all are used to. I love it. After years of hot stripper body bimbos, you're gonna have to bump uglies with a bunch of barnyard fuglies. Ha! <whistles> All right, ladies, he's ready. Come on in. Close your f***ing mouth, Jimmy. Having a sit down in a boat was a good idea, because you're not allowed to stand. Safety first. So, you know who we are. And you know what I gotta do. And you know what I gotta do about what you gotta do. And you know what I gotta do about what you gotta do about what I gotta... Oh, Jesus, sit downs are boring. What a fight? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> I better intervene and call an adult. He's more chicken than I am. Three full whistles and two semis means stop fighting. Come on, you guys. I know they ain't pretty. Just close your eyes and think of something sexy, like a sibling or barnyard animal. It'll all be over before you can say webbed feet. Find yourself another stud, Toothless. Uh, Jimmy? You're gonna get us both killed. I'm giving you permission. For the record, ma'am, we'll only hurt him. You will integrate into our community. Come on, you've done it a thousand times with Cheech and your crew. Wait, you know what I mean. Sorry, ain't happening. Oh, I see. Big stomach Jimmy's got to prove a point. You're going to feel real superior when they turn your skeleton into a side table. <sighs> now, now, ladies, be patient. We've been outmaneuvered in this round of the chess game of reproduction. So, you're going to let us go? No, ma'am. We're going to have to resort to science. Bring in the doodad! <laughs> 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 Do that don't sound good. Oh, it don't feel good neither. Are you gonna Ow! Stop it, you two! You can't settle an old mafia vendetta with violence! Ow! I like ya, but I can't trust you not to rat us out. Wait, do you like like me? Shut up! Why would I rat you out? I hate the mob. Yeah, right. And I'm gonna be prom queen. I mean it. When your pop killed my old man, the mob left us high and dry. <laughs> That's the mob for ya. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wait a minute, what am I doing? He's six years old! I can totally take him! Gina, tag out! Ouch! Oof, bad idea, terrible idea! Gina, tag me out! Look, the mob screwed me. I'd never help those jerks. But, but I gotta avenge my old man. I know, but you're not touching my old man. He's a kafone, but he's all right. Fine, but somebody's gotta die. Not Petey. Too easy. That would just make me sad. How about my uncle? Technically, he's the reason for all of this. You don't got a problem with me coming after... Cheech? Nah. But I'm not gonna hand him to you on a platter. You gotta earn it. Of course. There's no free lunch. If you can find out where the feds put us, be my guest. But is it worth all that trouble? It is if I get to see you again. Hey, keep it down! We got people trying to make out in here. Okay, I'm just gonna come right out and ask, what the hell is making out exactly? Don't look at me. I don't know what those f***ing animals do in there. This here's the suck nozzle. The claw's painful, but essential. Where the hell'd you get that thing, anyway? eBay. I'm also been on a nice wedding dress from Jimmy Eats Ball 69. Jimmy, don't put yourself through this. Just nail those broads, will ya? Do it for me! No, cook! I never cheated on you, and I ain't about to start now. If it means my brazool gets chewed up by that thing, so be it. For Christ's sake, cut the act! It's no act! All the broads back home are for show. Part of my job is capo. I take them to dinner and drop them off after. No messing. Really? Since the day we met, Cook, it's only been you. Oh, Jimmy. All right. Let's do this. Wait! I got a better idea. Step right in, ladies. And don't forget to sign up for Kinky Karaoke. Sorry, gentlemen. The swinging community has a strict no unaccompanied men policy. Oh, I wanted to see the sex restaurant. For Canada, a country so freaky, our national animal is the beaver. We still got a room here. Want to hit the sheets? <laughs> nah, let's steal a car and go home. I hate the fucking country. La 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 Doing. Back in the day, I made a lot of money selling protection. That's when someone pays you not to hurt them. It's like buying insurance, except you don't get nothing in return. Oh, wait, it's exactly like buying insurance. There was this one guy, Don Gambini's wife's cousin. The Don said we were allowed to collect protection off him, but we had to do it nice. I couldn't break his face, so I had to be creative. But I was a wise guy. What the hell did I know about creativism? Give me, give me, give me, give me money! I learned how to play this stupid thing for nothing? I got blisters on my fingers! It's me stomping on your head because you didn't pay protection. You don't see it? I thought it was a duck riding a pony. Or maybe a giant wang. <laughs> <laughs> he was laughing at me like I was some kind of clown. So I figured I'd show him who the clown was. It was me. <laughs> that tickles. <laughs> Stop it. Ah, screw being nice. Let's go with plan B. Being 
creative is fine, but sometimes you just gotta kick some ass. Well, one thing ain't changed since Brooklyn. You're still a fucking clown. Gina, don't swear when you insult your father. Forget about it, kid. Fuck you. Don't tell me to fucking forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the Gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Good morning, big boss man. What are you doing, Cook? Just wanted to say I love you and that you're the best husband in the world. That's real nice, but this ain't exactly a good time. Cook, if you want something, you don't gotta butter me up. How much do you need? Forty. You French me while I was dropping a deuce to get 40 lousy bucks? No, 40 votes. I'm running for VP of the PTA on a healthy snacks platform. I need you to help me win. By being nice or with a bat? Can you be nice with a bat? I don't want to make a bad impression. McCall, why is Petey in handcuffs? Your son was protesting at the site of the new oil pipeline. Oh, Petey broke his cherry. Good for you, kid. Even if it was a candy-ass crime. I didn't arrest him, I simply gave him a ride home. If there's one thing Mother Canada respects, it's an orderly protest. Granted, we don't listen to them, but we damn well respect them. I asked McCool to cuff me so the other protesters would think I was cool. What do you got against oil? How else are we supposed to lubricate engines or maintain fine hairstyles? To answer, I will recite one of my incendiary poems on the matter. <gasps> oh God, he's reading another one. For Canada, fill in the blank! But soft, what shame on yonder pipeline breaks? Tis the government trading blood for oil. How hot! See, Petey, that's how you get things done. Reading poems, singing songs, and waving signs of a pussies. You want to get ahead, you got to have balls. And you got to show them. Like you are right now, big guy? Oh, sorry. Hello, friend. Can Cookie McDougal count on your vote for the PTA? Sorry, I'm voting for my husband. Is that so? Cheech, show her the incentive package. Next time, your husband will be in there. My husband was in there. Vote Cookie. Do I have your word you're gonna vote for Cookie? Uh, no. <laughs> Are those cookies? What else am I gonna wear on laundry day? Not so fast. You voting cookie for the PTA? Right this way, madam. That's better. Come on, Jimmy, let the kids out. They can't even vote. No, but their parents can. Good point. We shut the pipeline down for 15 whole minutes! <gasps> Don't engage the police! We may have taken ballsy hardcore action, but we must remain peaceful. Three. Run for your lives! They're gonna murder us! <laughs> Don't shoot! But if you have to, tell the world I wet myself after you fired. Don't be silly. We don't shoot suspects in Canada unless they're mentally ill or don't speak English. Those were mere warning shots for interfering with the pipeline. Pop said I needed to show more balls. Well, thanks to your balls, I'm going to have to report you. That means I'll have a record. Ladies love a badass. <laughs> after nine recounts, it's my horror. Uh, uh. Honor to welcome the new PTA Vice President, Twinkie McDougal. That's Cookie McDougal, but thank you, Mr. President. Yeah! <clears throat> My first order of business is to get rid of school vending machines for the sake of our kids' health. You suck! Um, no, you can't get rid of those machines. They're a source of revenue for after-school sports programs. Which kids wouldn't need if they stayed off junk food. 
On that note, as president of the PTA, I'm going to put you in charge of the vending machines. So, cookies in charge of the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, snack Nazi! Psst! I heard on a grapevine how your wife got elected. I don't know what you're talking about. No, I'm not here to dangle your chubbies over a fire. I want your help passing Bill 158 through the provincial legislature. Politics? Do I look like a criminal to you? Actually, don't answer that. Too bad. I could pay you from the public trough. And it's a big trough, Jimmy. How big we talking? And what, if I may ask, is a trough? Caramel-coated jelly butts? Chocolate-covered cheese puffs? Cheese-coated licorice nipples? Why do these say, for sale only in schools and mental hospitals? Cause President Annabelle doesn't care about good nutrition. You know, this garbage is why there's a child obscenity problem. Oh, I'm fucking starving. Ma, you got any, ooh, jackpots? Absolutely not. No kid of mine is eating this junk. Delicious junk? I can live on this stuff. Young lady, if that's all you ate, You'd be so unhealthy that Annabelle would have to ban these machines forever! Challenge accepted. Gina, that's so bad for you. So are STDs, but that don't stop you from gobbling any old... Eat your fudge holes! I am proud to announce with the support of my enormous caucus... Ha! Caucus! <laughs> ...that Bill 158 has passed! How do you like that? We did our part to change the world. The real satisfaction is that we were paid a buttload of money. Jimmy, I need to see Petey right away. What did he do? Hug a tree to death. Worse, the recently passed Bill 158 makes any environmental protest an act of terrorism. Bill 158? Which I... Uh, had nothing to do with. Of course, if you did, you'd be a terrible father because this new law means Petey is a terrorist. I'm here to place him under arrest. Uh, Jimbo, maybe some time in the big house is just what the kid needs? Sure, sure. Wait here, McCool. We'll go get him for you. Take your time. Let Petey cry it out before I bring him in. If the other convicts catch him weeping, they'll pass him around like a pumpernickel bowl of spinach dip. You know they took off, right? No, no, they're upstairs right now, preparing Petey to face justice. Uh-huh. Oh, why am I so naive? How long are we supposed to stay here? I'm claustrophobic. I need my mouth guard and my neti pot to clear my sinuses. Kid, it's been two hours. Relax. I don't know how you could stand going on the lam in the old life. It was tough. Hiding at the Plaza Hotel under an assumed name, Doing blow all day, surrounded by hookers. God, I miss it. I got supplies. You know, if you hadn't made fun of my lack of balls, I probably wouldn't be a wanted fugitive right now. You don't know the half of it, kid. We're the ones who rammed through the bill that made you a terrorist. Ah, oh, Jesus, Cheech! That was you? In my defense, I got paid a lot of money. Way to man up and fight for what's right, Pop. You're nothing but a two-bit bag man who sold out his own son! At least he's not a Taliban. Neither am I! And I'm gonna fight this like a man! Whee! The kid's a monster! I don't know, Ma. This junk food diet you got Gina on feels like a bad idea. It's just temporary. I'm trying to prove a point for the greater good. Did you feel that? Felt like an impact tremor. And his guys were so big. Someone message with you? You give him a little belly buck. Boom! That down for the count. But you're turning into a whale. Ah, zip it, Skeletor. You're nothing but a chubby, hating fattish. Ma, this is child abuse, and I'm not gonna stand for it. Ooh, ooh. There, now you're not standing. All right, we're conducting a hard target search of every roadhouse, outhouse, chicken house, and steakhouse in a three-kilometer radius. Actually, our targets are tree-hugging enviro terrorists, so skip the steakhouse. Meanwhile, I have a plan so crazy it just might work. 
What took you so long? The vain hope you'd have a change of heart and bring Petey back. Ain't happening, McCool. We're on the land. You can look for us, but it'll be like chasing a wind. Keep looking for them. Petey and I are shadows in the night. You might get close, but we'll slip through your fingers like smoke. He just showed up. Damn it! I'm surrendering peacefully, McCool. Good for you, Petey, but Bill 158 is very specific. I'm sorry to have to do this. Do what? <laughs> Die, you terrorist pig! That's laying it on a bit thick, but protocol is protocol. What happened to you, McCool? You used to be a servant of the people. Now you're just a stooge for big oil. If that's going to be your attitude, you leave me no choice. Me, 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 B, 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 a box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit mixer. Me, me, good. Here, you must be thirsty. Thanks. Ah! Well, I'm thirsty for justice, you little punk. Whoa, 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 take it easy. Can't you see the kid's scared? Oh, he'll be scared, all right, when all he has is a toothbrush to fend off his kill crazy cellmate, Cannibal Dave. What's happening? Better play ball, kid. I can't control him when he's like this. Just give me a lead pipe and five minutes alone with this little twerp. Are you playing good cop and bad cop? Budget cuts, Petey. Work with me. What the hell's going on in here? I was just about to tell Petey his only way out of jail is to reveal the identity of his fellow terrorists. Hear that, kid? Tell these guys who your hippie friends are right now. No! Unlike some people in this room, I'm not a rat! You son of a bitch! No, McCruel, don't! I'm not gonna let some snot-nosed pantywaist call me a goddamn rat! He means me, McCool! Calm down! Here, have some water. No one tells me to calm down! I specifically said I want the protection money and coins. Now you gotta pay twice! Between these sugar crashes and my sleep apnea, I'm dying over here! Hey, you! Come here! Get back! Get back here, you little sh bird! Poor, needlessly obese child. You need responsible adult intervention. <sighs> Thank God. Out of my way, mooks! Freak a machine took my. <laughs> Um, hi. I'm a vegetarian, and I have food sensitivities. Can you run me through any non-GMO menu options? When I eat you alive, will that make me a vegetarian? I'm asking for a friend who I recently ate. You mean whom I recently ate? <laughs> ah! I'm gonna run screaming now. It's dinner time. No, no, I'm still hearing beat you, but I think you mean eat you. <laughs> Didn't your mother tell you it's rude to talk with your mouth full? Don't you talk about my mother! <laughs> hey, hey, spit it out! Come on, spit it out! The skinny kid's whooping Cannibal Dave! Finally! Someone's standing up to that psycho. I think we got ourselves a new psycho. I gotcha! Now spit it out! <laughs> Yeah, that's right, I'm crazy! Anyone else want a slice of PD pie? Can you please pass the salt? Bitches? Since we helped you, I thought you might spring my kid from the old felony resort. Sorry, lads, I don't negotiate with the parents and uncles of terrorists. What about aunts? Say the word. I throw on a dress, you and I hop on a plane to Boca. My boy might be a know-it-all, a pain in the ass, and a god-awful poet, but he ain't a terrorist. The law says he is. <laughs> Me hands are tied. <laughs> a lady friend did this last night, but you see me point. That pipeline's a cash cow, and I intend to suckle her teat till me belly's full and me lips blister. <laughs> I see what's going on here. You need a little incentive to change your mind. And you break a ten. Get out of me office!
Pleasure doing business with you. You didn't do any business! I got a whole ten spot says otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think you've gone too far, Ma? There's Japanese whalers circling the house. <laughs> Relax, Teresa. A few more pounds and she'll be unhealthy enough for me to call a PTA meeting. You know, I'm getting sick of people talking about me like I'm not even here. It ain't like I'm hard to miss. As soon as I get rid of those vending machines, I'll give you some carrots and you'll go back to normal. Listen to yourself. What do you mean, normal? You saying I'm not normal? Just cause... Hang on! <sighs> cause I gained a few pounds? I'm still me, you know! Jeez, get off your soapbox, kid. Before it breaks! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Laugh it up at the fat kid, you jerks! I can still kick your asses! As long as I just lean on something for a while while I'm doing it. Oh, crap. Ah, uh, bring me some freaking cupcakes. Okay, kid, time to tell on your little jihadi friends and come home. No way! I'm not a snitch. Wait a sec. How the hell are you still alive? I followed the old adage and kicked someone's ass on my first day. Good for you, kid. Whose ass? This one? <laughs> no, actually, Cannibal Dave here got on the wrong side of old Psycho Pete. Look at you with a prison nickname. Oh, you put me on. You beat up this guy. Whoa, shame on you, pal. Cheech, drop it. It don't add up. No way a weed like you could take on this palooka. Am I wrong? Can we drop it? <laughs> you see, that makes sense to me. Petey, just name names before Cannibal Dave comes back for another helping. I will not rat out my friends. I have to take a stand. Visiting hours are over. I was wrong about you, kid. You got bigger balls than I thought. Oh. Need a painkiller? No, you're sitting on my colostomy bag. <laughs> now they'll see what vending machines do to kids. Better hurry, Ma. Annabelle's about to steal your thunder. Irresponsible parents who don't care what their children eat are why I want to remove all vending machines from our schools. Don't you dare, Westminster. I'm the VP of the PTA, and I have fed my kid nothing but vending machine junk food to prove... <gasps> you did this on purpose? What kind of a mother are you? Gina's fine. She's been on a blissful sugar high for days. Lower me down! Forget vending machines. The real story here is how crappy you people treat overweight kids. I think the real story is the childhood obesity epidemic. Ah, go eat a sandwich, phony M. Oh. Maybe if you media jag off, stop celebrating people for looking like skeletons? Portly kids like me when... Oh, crap! Run for your lives! Chuckzilla will kill us all! All right, we're gonna get ourselves busted as terrorists, because Petey needs help on the inside. He better give me the top bunk or I'll cut him. While we're at it, we'll hit O'Shea where it hurts, right in the pipe. Boost me up. Once we're terrorists, do we gotta pay dues? Either that is really shoddy workmanship, or we are the A-team of Wrecking Crews. I love it when a plan comes together. Cheech, no! The pipeline appears to have been built with substandard materials as part of a kickback scheme masterminded by Premier O'Shea. Shame on the voters for electing me! The judge agreed and fined everyone in the province $600. The men who uncovered the plot had this to say. Their faces have been distorted for reasons that are none of your business. We were, uh, just innocently walking by when the pipeline broke. And we didn't have to use a bomb or nothing. Oh, sorry. I meant... Or anything. Bill 158 has been repealed. Activists throughout the province are singing Yub Yub and dancing like happy Ewoks. You did it, Pop! You did it! 
Thank God I'm getting out of here. Unfortunately, along with the pipeline being destroyed, so too were the surrounding wetlands. Damn it! How does it feel to be a free man, kid? We miss the quiet time in jail, don't we, Wilson? Nice to see you looking healthy again, Gina. I miss my scooter. You were hell on wheels, sweetie. Another one died. Sorry, Petey. Oil-covered avian, who hears your call? I do. Kaka! Cheats, no! Saskatchewan la 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 How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, former New York copper. In the old life, the feds were always up in my business. These guys had ears everywhere, and by ears, I mean bugs. But I didn't let that keep me from being a normal family man. Someone! That's my girl. Messing with the feds was a game. I got the fat bastard right here, and I'm gonna chop off his legs and feed him to the dogs! On the ground, now! Ha <laughs> ha, gotcha! Oh, good one, Jimmy! I'd offer you guys a turkey sandwich, but fuck you. If it was real important, we'd talk in code. But that came with its own problems. Cheech, I need you to pick up the magic potion from the Maharaja and take it to the wizard. And make sure you look into his crystal ball. Gabish? Gabish! By magic potion, you mean the eight keys of heroin, right? On the ground, now! Now that I'm in witness protection living in Canada, I don't ever gotta worry about bugs again! Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the Gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. That was superb. You're a regular George Foreman in the kitchen. Thanks, Jimmy. And now for the knockout. Cannoli. <clears throat> James McDougal. Who's asking? Angus McTavish. Don't ring a bell. Do I know you? No, lad. But our ancestors fought on the moors for three centuries. This weekend, you and I pay tribute to their bravery at the Regina Highland Games. Uh, speaking the English? I'm throwing down the gauntlet, laddie. See you at the caber toss. Go, McTab! Who was that? Some Australian lunatic in a skirt. <sighs> oh. I'm gonna regret asking, but what's your problem? There's this Dutch exchange student at school, Yetzi. No one pays attention to him. He said he feels invisible. And and you care about Dutchy Y? I consider it a civic duty to aid new students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bleeding heart, save the whales, help the Dutchman. I get it. Here's my advice. School's like prison. He wants a rep? Tell him to kick someone's ass. Gina, not every problem can be solved through violence. <laughs> I'm not helping you with a dishes no more. You got it? Okay. See, Petey? I had a problem and violence solved it. Want me to demonstrate again? No. I'd appreciate it if you could keep riffraff like Scotty McBozo off of my doorstep. But you're a McDougal now. The Scottish community is finally inviting you into the fold. You just had to go and make me Scottish, didn't you? Why couldn't you just make me Italian? Because you'd have been too easily identified as ex-mafioso. Oh, so Italian automatically means mob to you? You racist sack of sh I ought to put one in your head, run your body through a meat grinder, and bury you in cement! But I take your point. 
So you'll attend the games then? Not a chance. If you refuse this challenge, the Scottish Canadian Times will brand you a coward. You'll wind up on their shite list, along with other things Scottish people hate, like the Queen, underwear, and fresh vegetables. Do you want your friends back home to find your picture in gear, Jimmy? I guess not. Then have fun at the games for Canada, where every culture gets a ridiculous summer fair. Remember, everybody be cool and act like you're Scottish. Just be crabby and cheap. Don't worry, Jimmy, we'll blend right in with these weirdos. Uncle Cheech, stay out of my closet. That's a good color on you. So, your lily-livered McDougals grew a pair and showed up. Welcome to the Highland Games, you wankers. Thank you for inviting us. Don't get a swelled head, lassie. Every Scot in the phone book was invited. Right, to the kitchen with you, Nessie. You're on Helgis duty. Go on! Those sheep's stomachs don't stuff themselves. Blend. Ah! To the field of combat, lads. Or should I say lassies? <laughs> See? Blend him right in. Let me get this straight. We gotta cook this thing's stomach. How we gonna get it out, ma? Same way your father did with Joey the Fink. Oh! Oh! Hey! Oh! 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 Look at that! Hammer toss! Beat that, McDougal! You know. This kind of reminds me of collecting protection money back home. <laughs> Off the field! <laughs> oh, you throw like a bloody Englishman! Thanks, Angie. That's supposed to be an insult, you tit. This reminds me of the time we threw Big Cheese Romano off the roof. <laughs> Something's missing. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> and you call yourself a Scott. Why don't you change your name to Scott? <laughs> oh! oh, it's on. <laughs> what you doing? That's my girlfriend. I mean, uh, my mascot. There's a raft of sheep stomachs in the fridge, you daft Marys. Oh. Watch your back, lamb chop. <laughs> Caber toss in your face, McDougal. This reminds me of something, too. <laughs> I guess I never killed no one with a tree trunk before. What, you've been living in a cave? <laughs> <laughs> Off the field again! Oh, victory for Clan McTavish! Good game, ain't it? <laughs> Jimmy, aren't you mad he beat you? You're the sorest loser I know. Did I lose, Cheech? Did I? Ah, oh, but that's what you get for not going to the games, you bastard! Sorry, Yetzi. Who would have guessed the Saturday Academic Achievers Jamboree was just a bunch of grade-grubbing dorks? But don't worry, we'll find you some cool friends. <laughs> My sister suggested you pick a fight with someone to get noticed, which is totally absurd. Yetzi, cut it out! That's not going to work! Will you stop it? That's enough! <gasps> Ah, sh**. Yetzi, I'm so sorry! Wait, you forgot your teeth! Hey, everyone! Thought I'd drop in. <laughs> oh, look! It's eccentric billionaire Richard Wheatthin. Do I smell haggis, or is that Jimmy's feet? <laughs> and he brought a studio audience to laugh at his dumb jokes. 
Might I say, Cookie, you look delicious. Can I try a bite? When it comes to haggis, I'm a bit of a gastronome. I've eaten it all around the world. Around the world? That would make you a gastronaut! Seriously? That was gold! Mmm, amazing. You can barely taste the intestines. Cookie, I have a proposition for you. I've been getting propositioned all day. <laughs> that gets a laugh? You're a bunch of dicks. This is my Scottish restaurant, Wee Wee Wheat Thins. For some reason, business has been slow. But I think we can turn this place around with Cookie as my new executive chef. Wow, Jimmy, what do you think? What's that think about? You can do this in your sleep. But who'll run the house? I will. How hard can it be to take care of two kids? Three kids. See, we'll all be learning new things. Go for it. It might be fun. In that case, Mr. Weathen, I accept. To whom, Betty? I was stirring in the kilt, and I'm feeling a wee bit bad. Bad! <laughs> I'm your new chef, Cookie McDougall. Now, I'm a little new to Scottish cooking, but I've been doing a wee bit of research, and I'm sure all you lads and lassies will be great. <laughs> These have been in the freezer for three months, and you want to serve them to customers? This is a restaurant, you jag off, not a Viet Cong prison camp. Are you sweating in the soup? What the hell is wrong with you? You know what? Screw it! Let's just serve him warmed over piss! Squat down! No? Then start over! <laughs> you can't cry in the kitchen. If I see one more of you motherfuckers crying in here, it's in the fucking oven you go! Head first! You think I'm playing? <laughs> and let that be a lesson to all of you! <laughs> in pan. This stuff's red, but it'll have to do. Add onion. Done. Why doesn't it look like the picture? Daddy, I need help with my homework. I'm a little busy, but... What's the capital of Canada? That's easy. Capital C. Daddy, I only ate gluten-free. Is that gluten-free? Don't worry. I ain't gonna charge you. Pop, I broke Yetzi's jaw. Good for you, son. But he's my friend. So you straightened out your friend. I'm proud of you. But I feel like a monster. I said I'm proud of you. I quit fishing for compliments. Daddy, can you hand wash my bras and panties? Oh, I ain't touching that stuff. Pop, what's in a nook, sugar? Mom does it. Pop, is that meat sauce? I don't eat anything. Thing with a face. We're having face for dinner? I wanted chicken fingers. Daddy, I gotta make a solar system. Daddy, uh, I need clean panties. Pop, I almost killed Yetzi. I wanted chicken fingers. I think I need counseling. Daddy, Pop, Daddy, I almost killed Yetzi. Oh, chicken Daddy. fingers! Yeah! That's it! Go to bed, all of you! But it's only 6.30. I said go to bed! <laughs> you know what? Change my order to face. You too, Cheech. Bed! But Jimmy, do I have to take off this belt? I'll be good. I hope Yeti's in school today. I feel terrible about... What the hell? Aw, oh, poor little Yeti. Do you want another blended cheeseburger? Hey, there's the bully that did this to Yeti. <laughs> Gina's wrong. High school's not like prison. Though I do have goo all over my face. I bet that happens in prison. Amazing, Cookie. In just one week, you've totally turned this place around. How did you do it? Get the hell out of my kitchen. I'm trying to work here. <laughs> now, now, I am your boss. Sorry, sorry. Mom, Pop ruined my underwear. 
Where? He made me go to bed at 6.30 last night. I've been up since 3 a.m. I ain't naming no names, but a certain fat ass ruined my homework. Jimmy! I need a change. What the hell? Look at this freaking place. There's footprints on the ceiling, the TV's on fire, and why am I standing in three feet of water? Oh, for God's sake, where's your father? Jimmy! Hey, Cook. What the hell's going on here? Nice to see you, too. Look at this place. What exactly do you do all day? Besides work nine to five? Okay, 10 to three? 11 to 2 with a long lunch? I'm busting my butt at the restaurant 24-7, and you can't even keep this house going? Me? What kind of mother leaves her family starving and laundry lists and having to figure out the capitals of Canada all by themselves? What about your womanly duties? Oh, of course, my womanly duties. How could I forget? Remind me again what those are. Like having dinner ready on the table for your husband? Like it says in the Bible? What part of the Bible says that? You know, the part where Jesus fights the whale. I thought this restaurant thing was going to be a nice little hobby. Did you just say nice little hobby? That's it. I'm out of here. Where are you going? Back to work, where I get some respect. I respect you plenty. It's not like I told you to get in the kitchen, take off your top, and make me a sandwich. Which actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> Since Cookie won't listen to Reason or the Bible, we gotta shut this place down. You know, for the good of the kids. Kills me to see him neglected like that. Special Agent McCool, nice of you to drop by. <laughs> Full disclosure, Cookie, I sometimes moonlight as the regional health inspector. Well, I'd offer you a bribe, but my kitchen is so spotless, you could eat off the floor. Speaking of which, you done licking the floor yet, Rodney? Don't worry, Cookie. My visit tonight is strictly as a haggis and cockaleeky craving customer. Waiter, there's a hand in my soup. <coughs> and you're closed. You can't do this. Sorry, Cookie. Wee Wee Wheat Thins is now officially a crime scene. Jeez, tough break, Cook. But hey, you had a good run. No shame in that. Oh, for shame, there's a foot in the salad bar. You're a great chef. You deserve success. And you would have had it, but what are you going to do? It's the unpredictable hand of fate. Actually, it was the hand of Lorenzo. What I'm saying is, maybe this is a sign that your place is at home with your family and their laundry. You're right, Jimmy. Nothing to do now but take my failed ass home. Bada bing! <laughs> What the hell? Excuse me, sir, do you have a reservation? What are you talking about, Teresa? It's me, this is my house. Nope, this is Mighty McDougal's House of Haggis. You turned our house into a restaurant? You said you wanted me home, so I came home. But it ain't fair to my customers to shut down, so I brought them with me. Thanks for being so supportive, sweetheart. I do not remember being supportive. And I do not remember you having a reservation. <laughs> Cheech, will you look at what Cookie's done to this place? I know. If I do a good job, I could make dishwasher. Gina, how about getting the old man some food? I'm starving here. No can do, Pop. We're full up. Mm. Now, I'll get you a shrimp cocktail. And a beer. No dice. All we got here is Rob Royce. Can we get a Heineken, a Spritzer, and a Fuzzy Navel? Three Rob Royce coming up. For the last time, I do not want to buy a f***ing rose. Finally, a little peace and quiet. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, seriously? And he's like, Tut, seriously. Wow, so you do have genital warts. <laughs> <laughs> Restaurant's closed! You want a doggy bag? Bag this! Hey, Jack! Freaking mind! I can't stand it no more, Cook! I tried being supportive, but this restaurant thing is tearing our house apart! Shwash! Baby, I need you! The kids need you! Shut down this circus and let's be a family again! But you said I was great! You said I deserved success! And now you're running around like a freaking animal killing my business! We're shutting this place down too! Oh well, beat sawn off hands. Ah, crap. That was you? How could you do that to me? 
Cookie, I'm sorry. I was losing my mind. You have no idea how hard it is to run a household on your own. I don't? You looked after the house for a week, Jimmy. I've been doing it for 16 years. Enjoy sleeping on the couch, mister, because you ain't getting nowhere near my meat locker tonight. That's kind of a weird thing to call your vi- Oh, you mean the bedroom. Ow! If you want this shrimp cocktail, you're gonna have to throw some pants on. Oh. Cookie's miserable, and I feel terrible. That's marriage for you. What are you gonna do? She was happy working at the restaurant, and we blew it. I gotta go make this right. How much righter can you get? She's back in the kitchen where she belongs. She was in a kitchen, you moron, and I'm putting her back there. Jimmy, she's already there. Teach, maybe sit this one out, all right? Fine by me. I want off this freaking emotional roller coaster anyway. All right, what do you want? I've realized that prison rules don't apply in Canada. Here, people reward the victim, not the aggressor. If I want to be surrounded by girls like Yetzi, I need to get my ass kicked. Wait a second. You want me to beat you up in front of the girls? I want some of the action he's getting. What better way to get sympathy than by being unjustly trounced by a thug? Edie, think this through! Huh? Hurry up, come on, hit me! No, get lost, you whack job! Come on, just a few good shots! Real quick, give me what I want! Let go of me, you freaking psycho! <gasps> now Yetzi's bully is assaulting a little girl! Get him! <laughs> hey, what are you doing? What are we doing here? McCool called, said there was a major situation happening. Jimmy, what's going on? And why are you dressed like an undertaker? Good evening, Chef Cookie. Welcome to the reopened Wee 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 Things. I'll be your new matron D. Good news, Cookie. Your husband helped us solve the mystery of the severed hand. <gasps> Thanks to Jimmy, you're back in business. Oh, Jimmy, you big sweet moron, you. Sorry I messed things up for you, Cook. Gosh, it's kind of slow tonight. Only two customers. It's 8.30. The place should be packed. Maybe they heard about the hand in the soup. People talk, you know. Or maybe it was the fat, naked, hairy guy hitting people with his junk. Hmm. I was worried this might happen. You see, Cookie, haggis is strictly a novelty food. People only ever try it once, usually under the influence of alcohol. So... There won't be any repeat customers. Not a one, I'm afraid. Wee 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 Thins has run its course. Then why'd you bother reopening? Yeah, why'd I get my hopes up? What can I say? For me, Scottish food can be very haggis-forming. <laughs> Give it a rest. You know what? You and your stupid restaurant just about ruined my marriage. Well, I guess I ain't a cook no more. Baby, in the kitchen of my heart, you'll always be head chef. A round of drinks for everyone! We're celebrating the birth of me son! How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, currently known as Jimmy McDougal. Back in the old days, when I was a big shot, the most important person in my life was my lawyer. When you make an honest living breaking the law, never misunderestimate the value of a good shyster. Suppose I allegedly tried to whack a guy and he went to the cops. Would I be in trouble? Hmm. The guy was available night and day. It's me. I know it's 4 a.m. and you're in the Hamptons, but you gotta come to the city and bail me out. <sighs> I need you to get rid of this for me. <laughs> Nothing seemed to phase this guy. Then out of the blue, he robs a liquor store and gets sent to jail. This guy went to Harvard. Why would he do that? 
Thank God! Just put me in a deep, dark hole and get me away from Jimmy Falcone! <laughs> anyway, now that I'm in witness protection, I don't need no lawyer, because I got my own personal Mountie. Hey, McCool, can you get me one of them new Smarty Pants phones? We've been through this, Jimmy. I can't cater to your every little whim. The answer is no, so just... I can't believe I'm going to say this. Forget about it. Oh! Oh! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. So, they took your appendix, huh, McCool? I'll give you one of mine, but it's probably messed up from hard living. But, Uncle Cheech, the human appendix is a vestigial organ. I've been kicked in the vestigials. I feel your pain, McCool. I hope you like the flowers. It was the most expensive ones they had. Nothing's too good for our Mountie. We got the banner just in case. Listen, Doc. This guy's a friend of the family. Send his bill to us. What bill? I like you. You learn fast. Cookie, is Jimmy coming? His smiling face and ceaseless cigar smoke always brighten my day. Don't worry. I'm sure he's on his way. I sent that bonehead plenty of reminders. <laughs> Crap, I slept past five. What's with him? He's looking right at me. He's still there. What if he's a hitman? This is bad. Son of a... Toby, what are you doing sneaking up on a guy like that? Oh, sorry, Jimmy. I just came to remind you. If you're gonna stay late... Don't forget to put in for overtime. Thanks, Toby. My pleasure. All right, you bastard. You want me? Come get me. Gotcha! Toby! Jeez! Sorry! I thought you were someone else! Maybe I should start wearing a bell? I wish you'd have thought of that earlier! It's that guy again! What guy? All I can see are fuzzy shapes. You've reached Special Agent Straight McCool. Just leave a message, Jimmy. You're the only one who ever calls. McCool, I've been made. There's a guy tailing me. Meet me at home. And grab me a slice on your way. I'm starving. Ow! What the hell, Ma? You know that bear Gina has in her room with a dollar sign on it? Sure, sure. Money bear. Okay. I was in a room, getting rid of anything that might be construed as evidence, and I think I might have threw a money bear. What? You know how Gina gets when you touch her stuff. Remember when you tried to get her off the pacifier? She was like a badger, clawing and scratching, and that sound she made. <laughs> I wore an eye patch for a year. Exactly, so I don't want to know about this. I can't believe my own daughter's gonna abandon me in a time when I'm in danger from my other daughter. What? Nothing. Nothing. Thanks, kid. Where'd you get this? You want a gun or you want to ask stupid questions? Where the hell were you? Paul McCool's lying in the hospital and you can Wait a second, McCool's in the hospital? Why didn't you tell me? That means we're on our own. What are you talking about? I don't got time to explain. I think we've been made. Whoa, easy, Tiger. Boy, Jimmy, I've been trying to introduce myself all night, but you kept giving me the slip. Who the hell are you? And who sent you? <laughs> I came as soon as I got your message. Jimmy, this is FBI agent Rick Chick Magnet. Is pepperoni okay? All they had was pepperoni. It's kinda cold. What do you feds want from me now? 
The Bureau wants to interview you for an ongoing investigation, Jimmy. Nice to meet you. I'm Special Agent McCool. Let me guess. First name, not so? Nice uniform, not so. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you say, Jimmy? Deal or not a deal? No way. I had enough of being a no-good snitch for one lifetime. In the eyes of the U.S. government, you're no snitch. You, sir, are a hero. You sure you got the right Jimmy? Oh, and by the way, I brought eight pounds of gabagool from Polly's Deli in New York. Yay! <gasps> Jimmy, what's a gabagool? It's lunch meat. Now put on some pants, will you? Come on in, chick magnet. I guess I'll be heading back to the old hospital. <laughs> For Canada! And... Oh! My stitches popped! <laughs> Well, Jimmy, you've been a huge help. The tip about Don Barzini alone is enough to blow the case wide open. When you take him down, tell him I said yo. <laughs> I sure will. Uh, now listen, between you and me, how do you like it up here in the great mild north? Don't ask. What if I told you that as a reward for your cooperation, the Bureau is willing to relocate your family? What? <laughs> That's right, Jimmy. To sunny California. Really? What did you say? California? Are you serious? The details are right in here. I'll take you and Cheech down to the North Dakota field office for processing, and the family can meet us in California. You hear that? We're gonna be Americans again! But wait, I was just getting to like it here. The schools are better, the medical care is top-notch, and I just finished building my first igloo in the backyard. Pipe down, Petey. You can build plenty of googie goos in California. Hang on, Petey might have a point. Is it right to keep moving the kids around like homeless gypsies? Let's get the f out of here! Woo! Chick Magnet's giving you a six-bedroom house, a full cable package, and a job as a nude beach lifeguard? Are you sure you don't want to stay in Canada, Jimmy? I'm positive. California's got sunshine, no snow, and... Unfettered access to burritos. My hands are tied here. Well, then, I suppose this is goodbye. Really? I never hugged a cop before, unless I was stabbing him. In a way, you have stabbed me, Jimmy. Right through the heart. Jeez, all right. <gasps> You're crying now? No, no, my incision became severely infected when I left the hospital to meet you last night. That's what you get for ignoring doctor's orders. Anyway, I'll send you a postcard. It'll have my new name on it. Jimmy Gonzalez. <gasps> what are you doing? I got a replacement for Money Bear. You think that piece of crap's gonna fool Gina? Where's the dollar sign on the front? I'll sew it on, but first we gotta age it to look like Money Bear. What's he look like? I need details. I don't know, ask Petey. I can, he'll say, Mother, honesty is the best policy and get us all killed. Wait, it had an eye missing. Good, good. So we'll pry off one of the son of a bitch's eyes. Which one? Think! I had it, but you slapped it out of me. Well, Igloo, in saying goodbye to you, I'm also saying farewell to Canada. Yeah, we're leaving right now. Uh, don't sweat it. They don't suspect a thing. <gasps> I'm not telling you where they are. You'll send guys to whack them, and I don't get my million-dollar bounty. See you in Fargo. You bring the money, I'll bring the Falcones. God, I hate Canada. Snow in my pants. All right, boys, let's head off to your new life. So long, Cook. Next time you see me, we'll be in sunny California. And I'll be selling oranges at the off-ramp in a leopard print thong. You take good care of my Jimmy, okay? Of course I will. <laughs> it's not like I'm gonna... Get him across the border, put a bullet in his head, and sell him to the mob or anything. <laughs> Call McCool. Searching for my stool. Would you like me to book a colonoscopy? Die! <laughs> Agent McCool's special here. McCool! Rick Chick Magnet is gonna kill my dad! Slow down, I'm on morphine, so I'm having trouble following. Who's this again? It's Petey. Rick Chick Magnet is taking Dad and Cheech to the mob. Chick Rick Magnet? What are you calling me for? You think you're so cool. You want cool? 
Try morphine. This sh is awesome. This isn't chick magnet. It's Petey. Petey, hey, kid, I tell you, if I tried this morphine junk when I was your age, I never would have become a cop. I'd have become a jazz dancer. Snap out of it! My dad's in trouble! Did I ever tell you how Mummy supported us when Daddy left? The men she brought home, we called them my uncles. No, uncle, I won't fix you a drink. Get your own damn highball, you filthy pervert! What am I gonna do? Dad's gonna die! Help! I'm bored. Are we there yet? Hey, let's play I Spy. What are you, six? Take it easy, Chick Magnet. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. I spy with my little eye something that's gonna get slaughtered. What? See? A truck full of lambs. <laughs> oh, right. Good one. I'll try again. I spy with my little eye dead meat. Who, me? No, no. There's some roadkill over there. <laughs> One more. I spy with my little eye two wise guys who are gonna get whacked. All right, you're freaking me out. What? Relax. It's just Martin Scorsese's new movie. We are so seeing that, hey, Cheech? Cheech. Aw, he fell asleep. Mummy, you don't have to turn on the red light. <laughs> wow, what a trip. Won't be doing that again. Oh, look, Petey called. Thundering Thunder Bay, Jimmy. <laughs> Gallop like the wind horse, Jimmy's in trouble. Oh, Canada. Where friendship trumps infection every time! Okay, now we run him through the dryer a bunch of times to make him look old. I can't do this. I can lie to you and Pop. But Gina, she's got those eyes. They burn right through ya. Don't you fall apart on me now. If this doesn't look exactly like Money Bear, you and me are going to California in a pine box. What the hell are they talking about Money Bear for? He's right down here. What are they so freaked out about? I'm out. You're out when I say you're out. <laughs> I could have a lot of fun with this. Look at that. Fremont Kimson will be in the good old U.S. of A. First thing I'm going to do is get me some poutine and a bottle of maple syrup. Hey, get a load of McCool. Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? Let us go, it's for the best. For us, at least. Cross. I can't hear you. I'll Skype you from Cali. <laughs> Yo, Chick Magnet, relax. He's just trying to say goodbye again. Pull over. Screw that. You're under my jurisdiction now. Technically, not for two more Kims. Oh! <laughs> oh! We're alive, Jimmy. You know what this means? Seatbelts actually work. McCool, you crazy bastard. What are you doing? Oh, run. Run. What's he saying? Rum? Rum. Poor bastard needs a drink. I know the feeling. Quit fooling around. This guy needs help. Oh, God. Could you possibly be more dense? I'm trying to kill you, you stupid moron. But what about California? Oh! Why the hell are you trying to kill us? You're a fed! I'd explain, but I hate it when bad guys stand around telling their plan when they could just kill the hero. I'm a lot of things, but a hero ain't one of them! Ah, my eyes! Ah, do you ever wash your feet? <clears throat> Hey, Jimmy, if I drop my pants, do I get a piggyback, too? Between you and me, my nuts are like ice cubes. I know, I know. I'm cold, too. No, I mean all the time. 
We need to find shelter. Hey, maybe there's a Howard Johnson's out here. How about that old barn? I bet that joint don't even have cable. Damn it! It still looks good as new. And he smells spring fresh! I'll warm up the car. We'll run over his head a couple times. Who said his mom gonna run over? <gasps> oh, hi, Gina. How are you, little sis? What's behind your back? What? Oh, nothing. All right. Now you got me curious. And when I get curious, I like answers. You know how I like to get answers, Teresa? <laughs> how? The hard way. <laughs> Poor guy's turning blue. We gotta find something to start a fire. Don't waste your time. He knew this was a one-way ride. Come on, Cheech. The guy risked his life to save my ass after I treated him like a jerk. Which makes him a huge pushover, but still. Way I see it, if he dies, we can survive on him for weeks. He's built like Conan. The barbarian, not the weird redhead on TV. Cheech, I'm hungry too, but we're not eating McCool. Get a fire going. You work nights as an arsonist. Should be a cinch. Look for anything that'll burn. Forget it, Jimmy. We're all gonna freeze in here. Wait, I know. This ought to burn for a while. <clears throat> Changed your mind? Nah, the tag was chafing me. You threw out Money Bear. You got any idea why I call him Money Bear? Because oh. I keep money in him, that's why. I had three grand in there. Hey, where's Mom? Dad's in trouble. <laughs> now, let's have a little talk about how I'm going to get my money back. <sighs> I'm not the one you want. It's Ma. She dragged me into this. Oh, sure, I get it. You was just an innocent bystander. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, Gina. I'll get your money, I promise. Whatever it takes, just don't hurt me. All right, seeing as your family, I'll cap the vig at 3%. And let this be a lesson to you. Don't keep no secrets from me. <laughs> Easiest three grand I ever made. Uh, this ain't what it looks like. Get up to your room. You're grounded. Ah, crap. That's it? She's grounded? Say a word about throwing out a stupid bear. What, am I gonna incriminate myself? Oh, that's great. I owe her a bunch of money, and you got off with nothing? Well, kid, I'm a mob wife. I got an instinct for dodging bullets. How much you into it for, anyway? I don't know. How many dollars are in three percents? I can't take this no more. We gotta fight back. Our first mistake was not bringing guns. Wait a sec. McCool might have a gun. Ah, I'm way ahead of you. What are you doing? Passing the time till help comes. Give me that. Find something to make clothes. We're going outside. Hey, we could have just burned this stuff. All right, Chick Magnet, get him up. Get him up. You sound like a no good cop. Let's see them hands. Yippee ki yay, Sheriff. Oh, you making fun of me? Nah, just kidding around, officer. Spit it out. You saying I gone soft? No, oh, I'm saying I'd have shot the guy already. Oh, yeah? How's that? You missed. The old snowman decoy trick works every time, except in summer. You're a disgrace, Chick Magnet, turning your back on your badge for a few lousy bucks. More like a million bucks, Jimmy. What? Me and Cheech are worth a million bucks to the mob? Just for you. For Cheech, I get a coffee maker. Oh, I went up. I used to be worth a three-pack of tube socks. The only coffee you'll be brewing will be in prison, Chick Magnet. McCool, you're alive! Now who am I gonna have for lunch? Your humble shirt and pants fire was enough to temporarily spur my immune system, Jimmy. Now let's see how your immune system handles a hot lead injection, Donkey Dong. <laughs> ah! Horse! Good boy! Give him hell, horsey! Stop it, horse! You're only stomping lifeless pulp! Up on, boys! 
No sense riding on an empty stomach. Let's roast up the G-Man before we go. Enough with the cannibalism! What do you want from me? I got a craving. Petey told us what happened. Are you boys okay? Everyone's fine, despite being chased by a lunatic out for personal gain. Funny, same thing happened to me and Teresa. But why let one rogue federal agent ruin the big move to California? Uh, about that, Cookie, it appears that Chick Magnet engineered the whole thing. I know, what a bastard, but we're still going, right? Right? Sorry, Cook. Jesus Christ! Yes! Mm -hmm. Well, McCool, I guess you ain't getting rid of us that easy. I suppose not. I must thank you, Jimmy. You went above and beyond to keep me alive. I just burned a shirt off my back. It was nothing. No, Jimmy, it was proof. You like me. You really like me. Well, I should get back to hospital. The infection is starting to take hold again. <gasps> Let's cook them like a Christmas ham. La 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 how you doing? I'm Gina Falcone. You can put a gun to my head, but I ain't calling myself McDougal. My pop used to be the capo in a New York crime family. That was great. Everywhere I went, I was treated with respect. Hey, Gina, good to see you, kid. Here's a hundred. Get yourself a lollipop. I talked with that dentist of yours. You won't be getting any more cavities. That was all about the end, because anyway. my uncle Cheech started shooting his mouth off. The Don ordered a hit on him, but my pop didn't have the stones to do it. So while Pop was begging the Don to spare Cheech's life, I decided to make my bones and take Cheech out. And then Pop had to go and screw it up. I guess Pop did have stones, just not a lot of brains. And that's how we wound up in Lady Part Saskatchewan. It's okay to say it, sweetie. Regina. But if you think I like being here, you can fucking. Oh, language! What the fuck's wrong with you? Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. tired at the end of a long day? They are. Are you still dialing the phone by hand? I am. Do you sometimes not point because you just can't be bothered? That's me. I hate pointing. With Superfinger, you'll never have to lift a finger again. Oh, that's handy. Oh, uh, fingery. <laughs> but wait, there's more. It also scratches, pokes, taps, and picks. It's super. Now 1-800-FINGER-ME-NOW. Welcome to Superfinger. Enter your credit card number now. Wait a minute. We don't have a credit card. Enter your credit card number now. I said I don't have a credit card. Do you take cash? Sure. Really? No. I'll give you a Superfinger. Jimmy, do you know what I do all day when you're at work? That's between you and Dr. Oz. I drive around town paying our bills in cash. I'm tired of living like this, and I'm sick of lugging this around. Don't you think it's time we got a credit card? What are you talking about? You got lots of those. None with my real name on them. Besides, McCool took them away. Like it's a crime to use someone else's credit card. Ah, you don't want one of them. What if someone steals it? Buys an Asian bride off the internet. You bad man! You promised better life! Jimmy, I want to live beyond our means, like normal people. All right, Cook. If you want a credit card so bad, I'll get you one. How the hell do you get a credit card? That's easy. You steal a lady's purse, you take her card. Bada boom, bada bing. I mean, legitimately.
I got nothing. Oh, for Christ's sake, you open a bank account! Fine! I'll dig up the nest egg and put it in the bank! You don't gotta yell. Cheech, get me a shovel. No problem. Ming, jump what cha? Get your own damn shovel! <laughs> In layman's terms, the annual percentage... Geez, I've never been in a bank for more than three and a half minutes. Boy, I miss those days. So, what do you think, sir? I think I could take this place in about two and a half. I meant in terms of interest. Hey, I'm here, ain't I? So did you want the low risk interest rate of 0.1% or did you want to lock it in at six? So I can have 0.1 or 6%. That's right. I'll take the six and you better have it by Friday. Sorry, old habits. Your deposit slip? My life savings for a piece of paper and they call me a gangster. Holy shit, I'm rich! Cookie! I got you a little something. Yes! A credit card! My favorite piece of plastic that doesn't vibrate. Listen up, everyone. I learned a valuable lesson at the bank today. We're richer than we think. What are you talking about? It's easy. You had the nest egg I dug up from the yard with the money I stashed under the furnace minus the cash I sent to that Nigerian prince, and it equals... We're rich! Jimmy, you gotta try this caviar and truffle sandwich. It's 600 bucks every time I take a bite, and it tastes just like chicken. Nah, I'm too full from the narwhal soup. We didn't spend too much yesterday, did we? Not at all. We bought mostly essentials. Ain't that right, Percy? What the hell? My credit card's declined. Last time someone declined me, I put their head in a vice. Run it again. Same thing. What's the problem? What's the problem? I'll tell you the problem. I got some moron up my ass asking what the freaking problem is. I don't believe this. Jimmy, give me some cash. Any chance we could run a tab? A super finger. Oh, I so want one of those. Mr. McDougal, your money is locked in for a period of no less than six months due to the high interest rate. I explain this all to you in great detail. Isn't there anything you can do? How about a loan? You know we're good for it. I'm sorry, Mrs. McDougal, but our records indicate that you recently went on an insane spending spree and are now at significant credit risk. Jimmy, what are we gonna do? What did he say, Cook? Holy crap! We're broke? So now that all my money's locked up, I need you to float me for the next six months. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but it's against witness protection rules. After we set you up with your first job, your financial well-being is your own concern. I would love to offer you a personal loan. That's great! But I'm afraid I'm on a strict budget. Not only do I support horse, myself, and a village of Bushman orphans, but every remaining dollar goes to my poor aging mother and her insanely expensive Bengay addiction. So you can't do nothing for me? Oh, contraire, my friend. I can give you something even better than money. More money? No. A money tree? No. A money factory? No. What the hell is better than money? If you see happiness or religion, I'm out of here. A vigorous pep talk. <laughs> At times like this, a man has to reach deep down inside himself to find out what makes him a man. To find wherein lies the root of his true character. Let me read you a letter from one of my orphans. <clears throat> Jimmy? Horse? 
Back to the zoo with you, mister. <laughs> All right, everyone, listen up. It looks like we're having a small cash flow problem. If someone ain't paying up, I say go for the knees. Nah, Gina, your mother thinks we gotta live economical for a while. So we're gonna have to cut back on a few things. Teresa, that means no new clothes. You mean no new clothes today, right? Gina, no betting on long shots. But old glue factory in the fourth is looking real good. And Cheech, no more booze for a while. Well, I had a good run. Someone spot me a bullet, I'll pay you back. This is great! Now we can implement all the green initiatives I've been suggesting. It'll force us to reduce our carbon footprint. We have to buy smaller shoes now, too? Screw this! I know how to make money. Teresa, you will not have sex for money. Mom! This is so unfair! Now you kids listen to your mother. I gotta run. I'm teeing off in an hour. Jimmy, you march right down to that tourism bureau and get your job back. And you can forget about golf. No more golf! Gee, I'm calling sloppy seconds on that bullet. Hey! Can't believe we have to ride the bus. We're turning into those people who bring bags to the store because they can't afford plastic. Mass transit is good for the environment and reduces CO2 emissions. This is so unfair. How could Daddy expect us to live on zero dollars a day? That's almost nothing. What's the matter with you two? You've been living off a of pop like forever. Me? I've been earning for myself since preschool. You want something in this life? You take it. Simple as that. She's right. Not about the stealing, of course, but there are things we can do to make our own money. Like collecting bottles for recycling. Really? Tell me more. Well, recycling saves resources, reduces smog... <laughs> The money part. They pay for bottles so we can earn money and save the planet at the same time. Driver, take me to where we save the planet. Sure, it's one stop past where we end world hunger. Stupid kid. Morning. Um, Jimmy, I, I don't think you... Sorry, can't talk. A lot of work to do. Gotta put the old nose in the grindstone, so... Oh, I'm sorry, Jimmy, but didn't you quit? What? Quit? What are you kidding? I love this job. I love whatever it is we uh, do here. I'm sorry, but you were very clear that you wanted to terminate your employment. Toby, that's not my ass. My ass is in color. Jimmy, as much as I'd like to give you your job back, we've already hired someone else. <laughs> so fire him. No can do. Last time I did that, his union was all over me. So, did Toby give you your job back? Yeah, Cheech. My first day back, and he gave me the day off. Well, looks like I gotta find some other job. Good thing you got the day off. You don't know what it's like out there, Jimmy. It's doggy dog. People killing each other to climb the corporate ladder. If you look the wrong way, somebody stabs you in the back. Hey, wait a minute. You know exactly what it's like out there. Yeah, I do. Who knows? Maybe I'll get one of them CEO jobs where I can screw up and ask for a bailout. I'm gonna get a job, too. Attaboy, Cheech. You think I got a good voice for phone sex? Yo, Ma, are we poor? No, Gina, we're not poor. We're just a little light right now. That's an actual thing? I thought it was something Deadbeat said when they don't want to pay. No, it's an actual thing. So, if you're not poor, why are you buying all this generic crap? Grumpy green giant, hamburger hindrance, room temperature pockets? Who buys this stuff? Immigrants and hobos, honey. Don't forget the elderly. No one's talking to you, toots. Teresa, just because it's called dumpster diving doesn't mean you actually have to dive. I know. You do. <laughs> How much did we make? Can you believe this is the only job we could get? I got 20 years experience running a family business, but no frickin' references. You know who'd have been a good reference? Don Gambini. He thought the world of you. Till you whacked him. Welcome to Blue Ball Ranch, boys. What we do here is extract bull semen for export. And how exactly do we do that? Same way you do at home. You mean in front of the window? With the neighbors watching? <laughs> oh! <laughs> ah! 
God, my arm is tired. Your arm? Thirty-two bucks, that's it? A broad who does the same job gets at least 80 bucks an hour. A hundred if she does it like Cheech. I still don't understand what your job is, Jimmy. I don't bring my work home, unless it gets on my shirt. Well, you gotta find something else. We're barely scraping by. We can't pay our bills, and now Cheech is eating dog food. It makes my coat shiny. Cook, this is temporary. We'll get through it. Have I ever let you down? Not until now you haven't. What's this? A pawn shop ticket. I hawked my engagement ring to buy groceries. You did what? Well, someone has to provide for this family, and right now, that someone ain't you. I can't believe you sold it without talking to me. I was hungry. I couldn't think straight. I know things are bad, but look on the bright side. They can't possibly get worse. And they just got worse. Jesus, Jimmy, I'm blind. This is what we get for messing with them bulls. Are you kidding me? What? I saw candles. I thought romance was in the air, along with a hint of lavender. That's Cheech, burning furniture to stay warm. And you can forget fooling around. The mortgage company's breathing down our necks. If we don't pay on time, we lose the house. Ten minutes of sweaty groping ain't gonna help. Can't hurt. What, so now you won't sleep with me because I got no money? I won't sleep with you because I got no ring. It'd be a sin. What about our vows? For richer and for poorer. I'm an Italian girl from Brooklyn. I cross my fingers during the poorer part. What about during the obey part? Yeah, I'm sleeping on the couch, ain't I? Hey, where'd you get all that money? Do I ask you about your business? Listen, kid, you think you could loan me a few bucks? I might be able to help you, Zell. You're a lifesaver. At 18%? What? That's crazy! That's highway robbery! That's... That's my girl. If you don't mind my saying, Pop, you're stooping pretty low borrowing money off a kid. Tell me about it, but I don't know what else to do. You can act like a man! Well, I don't know what else to do. Get out there, pull some jobs. There's banks, liquor stores, convenience stores, credit unions, and that's just robberies. You could be out there running numbers, pimping broad, selling protection, but instead you're sitting around like a schmuck. I don't even know you anymore. Jeez, maybe she's right. I got it! Ow! Oh, Jesus! Ah! Jimmy, I've been concerned about your descent into abject poverty. How are things? To be honest, which is hard for me around cops, not too good. You're not considering a return to a life of crime, are you? To be dishonest, which is way more up my alley, no, not at all. Take solace, Jimmy. Sweet Mother Canada stands at the bottom of the abyss, waiting to cradle you in the silky embrace of her social safety net. Say again, in American? Tomorrow, I want you to march down to the Service Canada office and apply for employment insurance. What the hell is that? It's just like unemployment insurance, except they put a positive spin on the name so the indigent don't feel like enormous blood-sucking leeches. Which, of course, they are not. Who sucked what? Trust me, Jimmy, your adopted nation has your back. For Canada, where you can get money for nothing, but the chicks aren't free! <laughs> That didn't work. Next. Go on, Petey. I'm not sure about this. I love experiments. I just don't want to be experimented on. If you don't, Petey, they'll do it on an innocent little animal. Okay, okay, I'll do it. Great. How'd it go? I feel surprisingly fine. At first, I was scared, but after the probe, everything went dark That's and... That's great. Where do we get paid? Will there be any side effects from this? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. It says here you quit your full-time job, which means you're ineligible for employment insurance. Who, me? I didn't quit. I quit. So you're telling me I don't even qualify for a handout? Next in line. Yeah, but... Next! All right. 
My wife don't respect me. My daughter thinks I'm a schmuck and I'm going to lose my house. Time to go back to work. And by work, I mean crime. Crime? Why didn't you think of that before? The answer was right in front of you. Sometimes I wonder about you, Jimmy. You know, I'm starting to think you care more about money than you do about saving the Earth. That's ridiculous. I totally care about the Earth. I also care about the Russian businessman who lives on the Earth and happens to need your kidney. My what? <gasps> Are you guys going to take long? Of course not. Now we must take organs while fresh. <laughs> Hey, sleepyhead. So, 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 so cold. Yeah, about that. I had a slight miscommunication with these guys. I thought they were just taking a kidney, but they wanted everything. Heart, lungs, even your doodad. Which the one guy wanted for a necklace. What? But I couldn't let them do it. Oh, thank God. Petey, I may have been using your dumb infatuation with the Earth to get important things like money, and I'm sorry. I know, it's okay. In the end, you stuck up for your little brother, which warms my frozen heart. Your heart could have got me ten grand, but I'm glad it's still inside you. Ah! You're freezing, you little freak! You're trying to kill me! Man, I've been keeping a lid on my criminal side so long, I feel rusty. Ah, that's better. I could rob that jewelry store or snatch that lady's purse Hell, I could do both. Rob that jewelry store and then carry the jewels home in the purse. Good thinking, Jimmy boy. Nah, if I'm gonna do this, gotta be something big. Bingo. Oh man, what the hell am I doing? What are you waiting for? Some idiot left the keys in a truck full of money. Don't do it, Jimmy. If you get caught, that will mean the end of your witness protection. I ain't getting caught. But if you do, I can no longer protect you. Like you need this Gavon to protect you. Jimmy, you would be endangering the lives of your family. McCool's right, Jimmy. Yeah, Pop, don't do it. It is a lot of money, though. Teresa! I'm just saying. What? You guys took all the good costumes. All right, I made up my mind. I'm pretty sure I can risk it. Jimmy, no! But I won't risk it for my family. I already put him through this once. I ain't gonna do it again. Hurry! Oh, can I... Hurry up and steal the truck. I need booze money. I just hallucinated little people crawling all over you. Hey! Some idiot left the keys in this truck. Well, Jimmy, I guess it's back to jerking bulls. Remember the old days when we were short on cash? we just throw a junior good fella under a bus and fleece the transit company for the insurance. Oh, yeah. The good old days. Can I wash these down with a little scotch? Nope. Doctor's orders. I'm sorry for everything I put you through, Cook. I got you a little something. Oh, Jimmy. I love you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Give me a bottle, I'm hallucinating again. La 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 Greetings! You know me as Petey McDougal, Canadian nerd. You also know me as Petey Falcone, New York dork. Like other misfits of my ilk, I never really felt like I fit in. Hello. Congratulations! This was especially apparent in our old life among the family. Yo, Petey, try this lasagna. It's like angels singing in your mouth. No thanks, I'm lactose intolerant, and pasta's not good for my gluten sensitivity. You know what makes me sensitive? Jagoffs with no manners. Eat the fucking food, you mook. Hey, kid. Have some wine. I won't tell you, folks. Actually, it was their idea. You need to loosen up. 
Cheech, I've seen what alcohol does to people, namely you. And it won't work. We have to live a little, kid. <laughs> what are you doing? The bride gave birth to a boy this morning. We're celebrating. Smoke up, kid. It's bad luck if you don't. Really? Hell if I know. <laughs> I was gonna steal that, dumbass! Now that we're in Canada, I finally feel like I fit in. And I'm sure in time, the rest of my family will learn to love it here as much as I do. Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Ah, keep jerking it, Jetsy. Oh, almost there. Mm. That's it. Yeah, that's good. Mm. 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 Relax, Cookie. It's not what you think. I'm sure there's a logical. Slide it in and out. Slowly. Okay. You went to a Catholic school. This kind of thing happens all the time. And... Oh, God, listen to yourself. <laughs> You pricked me! Spit that out! You do not want to swallow it. Jesus Christ on a bike! Ta-da! What do you think? Cheech, we're trying to keep a low profile here, so you go and swipe a boat? Swipe? Give me some credit. I got it at the police auction. Let's start the bidding at 500. Who'll give me five? So! Ah! It was a steal, Jimmy. Except I paid for it. We live on the prairies. What are we gonna sail on? Seas of wheat? There's a lake near here. We'll go fishing like the old days. Except without the dead wise guys clogging up the water. Cheech, I'm married. I can't just take off whenever I want. I was married. I took off all the time. And how'd that work out for you? I'm gonna die alone. I gotta clear this kind of stuff with Cookie. I gotta drop reminders, sweet talker, negotiate terms. Peace in the Middle East to take less diplomacy. Hey, Cook, we're going fishing. Great idea! Absolutely! Go fishing! Get out of here! Far away from Petey! Huh? Never mind. Just go. <sighs> oh, no, wait! There is something we need to talk about. Love you, Ben! So, I think your brother might be... gay. And if he is, I want to make sure neither of you gives him a hard time about it. What do you take us for? He's a brother! I know, we bust his balls, but we got his back. Apparently, so does Jetsy. <laughs> Teresa, what did I say? Ma, I'm just playing. Well, stop! I'm having a hard time with this. Get over it. You want to wind up like Mrs. Scavuzzo? She rejected her boy because he was gay. Died alone. Cats ate a face. You want that, Ma? You want a cat eating your face? Because I know a guy. But I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> you can act like a mom! And never buy a cat. You're right. I can do this. I'm gonna be the best damn mother of a gay you ever saw. You know he's not, right? Oh, God, of course. He's not cool enough to be gay. If he was, at least he'd have a personality. <laughs> this is fun. What, are we bonding now? Shut up! I tell you, Cheech, you can't beat the peace and quiet of a fishing trip. Uh, you want some of this? Who's a big fish now? Say hi to your mother for me. Big leg, fish dick. I got your catch and release right here, you fucking mutt. You broke my heart, you scaly prick! I'm out. Me too. So relaxing. Now them fishes are sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> <laughs> Young Petey is a homosexual. Splendid. I'm glad you called me, Cookie. Good, because I don't know how to tell him he has my support. Can you help me out? I can do better than help you, Cookie. I can refer you to a qualified colleague. 
And no, I'm not deflecting your request because it makes me uncomfortable. Here in Canada, we pride ourselves on our pride. By the by, how's Jimmy taking this? Oh, God. Jimmy doesn't know anything yet. He's gone fishing with Cheech. Fishing? I got no idea what Jimmy will do when he finds out. Did he mention being angry with me? Because I've told him I'm an avid fisherman. But he loves Petey, so who knows? I'm sorry, what? Just checking for texts from Jimmy. No, nothing here. Do you think it would be weird if I just showed up? Showed up where? At the fishing trip. I thought we were talking about Petey. Oh, right. I'll get my colleague to come see you. For Canada! Where friends are supposed to tell friends about fishing trips. <laughs> Don't move! Who? Don't move, I said! What the hell? Look at me. Look at me. I am the captain now. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't look at you. You look at me. 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 Don't look at me. Look at him. Look at me. Look at me. Don't say look at me. Just look at me. Look at me. Look at you being all, look at me. Look at me. Hey, look at me. Oh. Enough. I am Giddy. This is Johnny. We own this boat now. Understand? Hey, I own this boat, pal. You want it? Make me an offer. I'll shoot your fat friend and dump him over the side. Hey, Jimmy, quiet. I'm negotiating here. All right, say you shoot fatso. What's in it for me? So, are you sure this isn't going to be too intense for you? Maybe, but it's something I need to do. Well, why don't we just ease into it, then? Take it nice and slow. Uh, what's going on with the hand down there? Uh, foreplay? Isn't this what you wanted? No! I need advice about helping my son come out of the closet. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I thought this was a booty call. McCool kept talking about... I think he said fishing. He's all upset my husband went without him. Oh. It was hard to understand McCool. He was so distraught. Oh, this is embarrassing. Don't worry about it. And a little disappointing. Oh, why? Well, you're gorgeous. Oh, stop. So, about your son. <laughs> gorgeous? How? Just curious. But, uh, what would you do to a gal like me? Give me a, for instance. What? Drop shit. <laughs> Whoa, that is something. So, where do these scissors I keep hearing about come into it? <gasps> you guys are not gonna believe this, but, but I think Mom might be gay. <laughs> and the hits just keep coming. Petey, this is huge. Who'd have thought Ma was a Lebanese? Can you imagine what it must have been like for her in the old neighborhood? Carrying the desire that dare not speak its name? Yeah, they weren't big on that back home. And they hated people who said stuff like, dare not speak its name. So what are we gonna do? Give her the love and acceptance she deserves. Duh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, don't come right out and tell her we know. I mean, she might not be ready for that. Good idea. I'm gonna show her I'm behind her 100%. <laughs> I ain't had this much fun since I switched your birth control pills with breath mints! <gasps> That's why I've been so minty down there. Why is there nothing on this boat but beer and grappa? Cause Jimmy says cocaine and boating don't mix. This is pointless. We need money. For a jolly pirate crew, you guys ain't too jolly. Jolly pirates? We did it to survive a brutal civil war. We fled to Canada for a better life. But now, we are being deported. We need money for an immigration lawyer fast. Problem is, your crew's too small. You need a few more hands on deck. Please! Where could I possibly find experienced hijackers in Regina Beach? You thinking what I'm thinking? Honestly, I don't even know if I'm thinking what I'm thinking. You ever hear voices, Jimmy? Ma, there's...
there's a secret living in this house. An elephant in the room, if you will. I know, Petey. A big, gay elephant. <laughs> that elephant needs to know they're loved and supported. I couldn't agree more. What about Papa Elephant? We'll tell Papa Elephant when the gay elephant is good and ready. And when the time comes, that elephant is not going to be alone. No, that elephant isn't. I'm glad we cleared this up. It's good to get things out in the open. It sure is. I feel sorry for families that don't know how to communicate. Ah. <sighs> Ahoy there, Cappy! Avast, you landlubbers! What are you doing? This is not some dress-up game. Ah, come on. Who doesn't want to be a pirate? You boys need our help, and you know it. <sighs> Fine. We're desperate, and you Canadians are very helpful. By the way, real pirates don't dress like that. But I already cut off my hands. What'd you do that for? A pirate's gotta have a hook. Quickly! Where is the hat now? We must put it on ice immediately! Here it is! Mm. All right! All hands on deck! Oh, sorry, Cheech. I've come to terms with my choice. Uh, Mom? Yes, Petey? There's this pride rally downtown this afternoon, and... It'd be an honor to be beside my boy. Now that the elephant's out of the closet, let's parade it through the streets. And the little Dutch boy wasn't poking his finger in your dyke. What the hell were you doing? I told you, it was nothing. That was not nothing, young man. Spit it out. Ugh, fine. But I think it'd be easier if I showed you. If he comes back in a dress, I'm gonna sh The Elven Spellcaster, a seventh level mage. I don't understand a word you just said. I'm a LARPer. What is that, Swedish for loser? No, it's live action role playing, LARP. We dress up in costumes. Oh, it's, it's like when you dress up as a French maid or put on a leather gimp suit, right? No, that's good wholesome fun. I got no freaking idea what this is. Oh. <sighs> Problem is, you've been picking the wrong targets, Getty. What you want is an RV. Them things are packed with a king's ransom at treasure. What about your uncle's hand? We need to go to a hospital. Ah, that will be fine. He's had so many beers, he can't feel nothing. Ah, that's better. There's a galleon on the port bow. Or is it stopping? Which one's left? Oh, I used to know this. Get pirate insurance, I said. You never know, I said. But would you listen? I'm going to watch TV. And I don't care if it drains the battery. Ah, prepare to be boarded, you scurvy dogs. Place the mizzen what sits on the wibble wobble. Oh, where'd he get those? It's standard now on all American-made RVs. God bless the NRA. Oh. Dave, the pirates are here. I still don't get it. Is LARP a sport? Not exactly. Do you win prizes? No, we get experience points. Then we use those to level up and... Shut up! I stopped listening after no. None of this makes sense. Patience. All will be revealed. Roar! A minotaur! Creature, lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt, fireball, fireball! Ow! Watch it! That was really close to my eye. Roar! Backstab, double damage, and confetti death blow. 
So, Ma, what'd you think? I think I'm gonna confetti death blow my fucking brains out. That was the most mortifying thing I've ever seen. Why can't you pick up a nice drug habit like a normal kid? What happened to supporting me no matter what? That was when you were gay, not when you were a fairy. I'm an elf. I wish I was a fairy. That's a whole other level. You need to learn sixth level enchantments and... Enough! This is just unnatural. Well, this is who I am. No, it's not. You're choosing to be this way. All you need to do is, I don't know, meet the right girl. Oh, this is all my fault. I should have pushed him into sports. Oh. It gets better, Petey. Trust me, it does not get better. One more score like this and you'll have immigration lawyers coming out your ass! Damn, it's fun being a pirate! It's not meant to be fun. We do it for survival! What about pillaging? That part's fun, right? So are Vikings! <gasps> we should be those next! So what do we do with this scallywag? <gasps> Make him walk the plank! <laughs> uh. Ooh. Oh. Father, the power of Christ compels you. Ah, lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! See, Father, what did I tell you? He's all wrapped up in the occult. I'm not possessed. I'm a LARPer. That's not a sin. But it's an abomination, isn't it? Tell him, Father. Oh, heavens, not at all. It's not as though he's gay. Get out of here, you intolerant jagoff! <laughs> I'm still not having this under my roof. Tell your friend to leave! Jetsy's my apprentice, and he's staying! I said scram, Dutchie! <laughs> Jetsy, wait! I don't care what she says, we're a team! <laughs> Free spell! Free spell! Wall of stopping! What is wrong with you? We're not hurting anybody! I can't accept this! A grown boy pretending and make-believing? It's too weird! Too weird? In a family that used to pretend everything was normal while our father was out running a crime syndicate? A family, Italian, mind you, that now lives as Scottish Canadians under an assumed name? Face it, Mom. Our whole life is one big LARP. Double glitter truth bomb. Just stop it, you freak. Hey, that priest dropped his holy water. Ow! It burns! It burns! Jimmy! Stop! The joke's over! <laughs> Take that, you salty dog! No! Enough! You two are crazy and dangerous! Of course we are! We're pirates, for Christ's sake! No, you're not! You're idiots! Consider yourselves fired! Ha! We just got Jolly Roger. You know, Jimmy, I don't even think them guys was real pirates. <laughs> hey, McCool! Ooh. Casey and Finnegan! What happened to Cheech's hand? Fashion accident? <laughs> but we got it on ice. I knew you shouldn't have gone fishing without me. Hop on, gentlemen, for Canada, where universal health care even covers stupidity. This just feels stupid now. Maybe Mom's right. We're just a bunch of losers in bathrobes tossing paper balls at each other. Whoa, who is that? Red hair and purple robes? Where have I seen that color scheme before? Thunder fists! Eardrum shatter! Dazzle pop! Berserker thumb! Allergy spell! Feel the wrath of Flindor McDougal! Go 
ahead. Do it, Mom. Did you say Mom? No wonder people think we're losers. Oh. Ah! Thunder purse! Thunder purse! Sanitary napkin! Electric shoe? Mom! I'm not Mom. I'm Cookie the Concubine. <laughs> you mean Conqueror. I just picked a word, Petey. <laughs> what the heck is a thunder purse? I don't know, but it just saved your life, you little prick. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. That was great. I thought about what you said, and you were right. But for God's sake, don't let your father know about this. He's not going to like the idea of his son dressing up in costumes. Avastar, it's a sea gremlin. Get him, Jimmy. Come here. <laughs> Dad, stop. That's my friend. You're next, help. Oh, God. Thank you for knowing what I was. Aye, there be the booty I've been craving. Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? I'm Gina Falcone. I may only be a kid, but I ain't no bedwet and twerp. I take care of myself. Like this one time back in New York. Hey, Ma! Pops! Where is everybody? The rest of the family was in such a rush to get to Coney Island, they left me. Home alone. So it was up to me to protect our house and have a little fun. I was expecting a kid to set cute little traps. This is almost too easy. Easy? You know, when you say that, you really devalue what we do. Yeah, I don't like kitty movies. All that violence. It's so fake. When it comes to violence, I prefer what Petey would call realism. Don't bother begging for mercy. My poor baby, I'm so. What the hell? Crap, busted. Gina, how many times I gotta tell you? Not in the house. You're gonna get us all pinched. Anyway, now that we live in the most boring town on the planet, I'm gonna make my own fun. Ma, I'm going out. Don't forget your mittens. Is anyone else concerned that she's. Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Hey, who threw out a thermometer? <gasps> it's a pregnancy tester. Cheech, look at this. What's the little minus sign mean? Oh, it's negative. Means a baby's coming. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. You want another snot in those brat running around? No. Pregnant equals negative. Holy crap, Cookie's pregnant? I can't be a father again. I barely survived the first three. You want my advice? Pretend to be happy about this. Then, when she goes to bed, you skip town like a fucking gypsy. <sighs> There's my beautiful wife. If you was barefoot, this picture would be perfect. Okay, what'd you do? Ooh, was that a kick I felt? No, it was last night's eggplant pump. What's wrong with you? You fall in the shower or something? No, I'm talking about our baby. <gasps> Jimmy, this test is negative. I was uh, a little late and just, you know, wanted to be sure. But I ain't pregnant. Nobody's pregnant. Oh, thank you, baby Jesus. This is the happiest day of my life. Next time, I'll pull out earlier so you don't gotta worry. 
Don't you move, young lady. That's not mine. It's for a friend. She had a little scare, but everything's fine. Oh, really? What's your friend's name? Soriso? Your father found this. If he knew it was yours, he'd slap a chastity belt on you and swallow the key. Lucky for you, I covered for you. Phew. Dodge that bullet. Thanks, Ma. Not so fast, Teresa Maria Falcone. We're not done here. Not by a long shot. Will you relax? You should just be glad I'm not pregnant. Now we don't have to guess who the father is. Oh! Think before you talk, Teresa. What are you doing? They're gonna need your measurements down at the nunnery. Hey, McCool, thanks for meeting me. We had a little scare and I'm gonna need some rubbers. A case a week should do. Don't tell God. <sighs> Can't you just buy them at the drugstore? What? You can just walk in and buy them up here? In the old neighborhood, you needed a sit down with Father O'Malley and the doctor's note. I had a connection upstate. One of the first guys to carry the French tickler. Are we finished here, Jimmy? McCool, what gives? Who died? Oh, just my career. A letter intended for my lady friend was mistakenly mailed to Premier O'Shea's office. So slap the mailman around. A fellow civil servant? Never. The problem is the letter contained photos of me. Playfully erotic ones. Oh! Ooh. When the Premier returns from his trade mission to Las Vegas, I'll be fired. Or at the very least, reassigned to one of Canada's bleaker outposts. Like Toronto. You ought to text your dirty pictures, like I do. A true gentleman does not text boudoir photographs to a lady. It's a picture of your bing bong. Quit trying to class it up. You're right. There's nothing classy about what I did. But Canada, where all degenerates wind up in Toronto. Poor bastard. You know, if we steal them pictures back for him and save his job, he'll owe us big time. Let's do it. We'll be ass deep in French ticklers. Can you believe she's making me wear an ankle monitor? Be careful what you say with that thing. It has speech recognition. Anything about boys and or sex and you get a shock. Even by mom's standards, it's a bit draconian. My social life is falling apart and you're talking about Star Trek? I'm only allowed to go to school and then straight home. What am I gonna do? Maybe focus on all the great things you can do at school. That's what got me in this mess. No, I mean an after-school club. Club, huh? Photography, full. Drama club, full. Witchcraft for beginners, full. All the good clubs are full. What's future business leaders? I thought it was a recruiting front for the conservative party, but it's just a club where you learn about sales and marketing. Ooh, maybe they'll be cute boys. You're late. I told you to come straight home from school. I was doing school stuff. I joined the Future Business Leaders Club. Oh, please, you don't fool me for a second. You're just trying to stay away from here as long as possible. I'll have you know I am full of... What do they call them? Viable Consumer Innovations. You're full of something, all right. Tomorrow, you come straight home from school. None of this phony club crap, you hear me? But, Mom, the one time I'm not lying, and you End of discussion. Oh, yeah? I'm gonna come up with an idea that's gonna knock your socks off. You wanna knock my socks off? Get your virginity back! <laughs> Gotta think of a product. I'll show her. Think. 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 God, thinking's hard. And so is this chair. My butt's killing me. Europa. I think I got it. What's going on in here? I'm taking the lead on the O'Shea heist, Jimmy. So what's with these mooks? It's the team. I call them Cheech's Eleven. Minus six. Wait, how many of us are there? Not including me. What's wrong with you? We're stealing some mail, not robbing a casino. Why you always gotta stomp on my ideas? Mainly cause they're insane. But I already gave everybody code names in case we get pinched. This here is Mr. Red. You're a freaking racist. Race ain't got nothing to do with it. Now sit down, Geronimo. This is Mr. Brown, cause he smells like a toilet. All right, Dale, I mean Mr. Red. You're gonna shoot an arrow through the window so I can shimmy up. But I'm terrible with a bow and arrow. I thought you said you was an engine. I, mean, I thought this was gonna be a sex orgy. All right, meeting's over. Cheech, you ain't in charge no more. 
Well, I had a good run. Today's modern woman faces many challenges, but none compare to the very real problem of BAS, bony ass syndrome. Oh, here we go. Ladies and awkward teen boy, I give you... Hang on. Ass jacks! Whoa, I'd love to get one of those for my girlfriend. If I, you know, had a girlfriend. Hey, this is fun. Now I see why guys like these so much. Teresa, it's great you're applying yourself to something besides boys, but this is the stupidest thing I ever seen. Well, Ma, the stupidest thing you've ever seen is setting the Twitterverse on fire. Who the hell goes on the internet to look for big butts? Judging from Ass Jacks' followers, flat bottom girls with low self esteem who want to jack up their asses. And a lot of dirty old men. Probably not our target market. Those are my Instagram followers, you idiot. Look at all the orders rolling in for Ass Jacks. I never thought I'd say this, but Teresa, you're brilliant. I don't want to rain on your parade. But how are you going to fill 510, 12, 50 orders? Ma, you just don't have any vision. Oh, my vision's fine. I see a bunch of kids who think they're going to make a mint off rubber underpants. But, Mom, pre-sales like this mean startup capital and... Save it for the shareholders, Mr. Google. <laughs> Teresa, as your IT manager, I recommend myself for VP of Sales and Marketing. Hmm. I'd have to see a resume. Resume. But I stand on my experience. Remember those great ideas I had for Pop's business? What, like the public transit getaway? What do you mean, exact change? Will you just go? I propose we make a web commercial. Keep this synergy going. I have no idea what synergy means, and that impresses me. You're hired. <laughs> All right, this'll be a cinch. We sweet talk his secretary, get in his office, and grab the envelope. <laughs> Say no more, Jimmy. They don't call me old sugar lips for nothing. Hey, pal, is Premier O'Shea's secretary around? If you mean administrative assistant, that's me. A man's secretary! Aboard! Aboard! <sighs> What's wrong with you? Guys can have lady jobs. It's the 20th century. I got spooked. But this is good. Now that it's a guy, we just rough him up and barge in. In a government building? Are you nuts? We gotta go back to that drawing board. Sounds good. Now I can finish that picture of a duck. Where's my crayons? Our first commercial. I'm so excited. How can you be in a commercial? We're on witness protection. Mom, it's all right. We thought of that. Watch. Hey, girlfriend. Do boys ignore you because you have a small bony ass? Then you need Ass Jacks. With Ass Jacks, you get so many guys, you'll have to beat them off with a stick. In fact, you'll be beating guys off all over town. You can wear Ass Jacks in the club. Shake that thing. Up on charges, wear Ass Jacks to court. Ass dismissed. You can even wear them to church. Bless me, Father, for I have booty. Don't be a jackass. Go to AskJacks.com and order your Ask Jacks now. Now what are you gonna do? You actually gotta make the damn things. Ma, we're already on it. Wow, how'd you do this? Simple, I had a vision and told Petey to make it happen. At first, we considered outsourcing to a Chinese production facility. But then Petey reminded me that they have a terrible Hunan rice recipe. Human rights policy. Whatever. Anyway, as a job creator, I wanted to keep the factory here in the state of Regina. But I crunched the numbers and the labor costs would kill us, so we automated. I gotta say, I'm impressed. This is a hell of an operation you got here. Now, if you'll excuse us, we gotta move some latex butts. <laughs> move it or lose it, toots! Hello! I'm the Minister of Fish, Wildlife, and uh, Nuclear War. We need to get into the Premier's office. Oh, yes, sir. I'll open it right up. Wait a second. How can you be the Minister of Fish, Wildlife, and Nuclear War when he's standing right over there? 
Hello! I told you we should have used Mr. Brown. I got a slide. Talk to you. Oh, you got one! Straight from the breeder. Sweetie, I'm gonna call you Minxie. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Where the hell did all this crap come from, Teresa? Who's paying for this? I am. I've been pre-approved for like a zillion credit cards. This is just like with your boyfriends. Have fun now, pay later. Oh, you're just bitter because you never did anything with your life. Excuse me? Never did anything with my life? I raised three kids. Ooh, three whole kids. Talk to me when you raise an empire, Ma. Security! Gina, get your hands off me. Take it easy. You don't want to slip and fall. Repeatedly. Onto my boat. So you're a goon for your sister now. She signs the checks. What the hell is that? You're supposed to get an envelope. Ah, oh, crap. Wrong building. I'll go put it back. Where's my stuff? I returned it all. My handbag collection? Returned. My diamond tennis bracelet? Returned. The meat dress I bought off Lady Gaga? Cooked it for dinner. Really? You just made a $20,000 meat sauce. This is why are you doing this to me? I'm trying to teach you about personal responsibility. The ex-stripper mobster's wife is going to tell me, the CEO of Ask Jax, about responsibility? Do not talk to me like that, young lady. My house, my rules. Well, then, maybe I won't live in your house, you jealous cow! Where are you going? I'm taking my operation overseas! And by overseas, I mean downtown. Go ahead and move out. You're never gonna make it. This town's gonna eat you alive. And your little dog, too. You're gonna come crawling back. You'll see. <laughs> My baby! <laughs> this meat sauce tastes like sweat. Ma, how'd you find me? Ah, oh, right. This is the living room, and this is a room for the Siamese. Your cats have their own room? What cats? The one on the right doesn't actually work here. Popo! Tea. Special blend. What's with the munchkin? That's Popo, my Burmese manservant. He does what you do, only more and better. Teresa, I'm trying to mend fences here. I'm in a condo. There is no fence. What's in there? The Ask Jack's Nerve Center. Eat it, Koji-san. We're the ones with leverage. Don't make me Fukushima your face. Mom, we're busy in here. <sighs> oh, this tea's tasty. It's a blend of jasmine, oolong, and great white shark semen. Teresa, I know you're mad at me. But I miss ya. I want you to come home. I'll even take off the ankle cuff. Does this mean no more breathing down my neck and getting on my back about boys? We'll work it out. I'll try not to get on your case so much. But there's gotta be some give and take. Oh, it is kinda lonely here at the top. I'll think about it. Hold on, I gotta take this. It's my attorney's. Oh, oh God, I hope she comes to her senses. <laughs> Minxie? Minxie, wake up! Yo, Minxo, up and at him, come on! Oh, great, you killed the freaking dog! Now Teresa will never come home! Hmm. Nah. Sorry, Minxie, nothing personal. Right, you are a 
jealous cow. But to take it out on poor Minxie? <gasps> you know, my lawyers told me to get legally emaciated. I wasn't gonna do it, but now I am. You're thin enough, young lady. No, wait. Emancipated. It means I'm being freed from you, like the slaves were in the 60s. You're divorcing me? That's it! Petey, Gina, let's go. Hey, hey, they're still on the clock. Get in the car, now! This is kidnapping. They're my kids. I'll nap them all I want. Ha-ha, <laughs> who got the leverage now, Petey san <laughs> Here, let me get the rope. How do you do that? Do what? I got it! I can't wait to see them pictures. <laughs> you can't wait to see naked pictures of McCool? What? I like photography. Now we're talking. It ain't a real heist unless you're spilling blood. Crap, it's O'Shea! Oh, me darling, let me show you the end of me rainbow. Uh -huh. You think they're doing it? Hey, Petey. Are you wearing ass jacks right now? No. Good. Then it's safe to sit down. Check the link I sent you. <laughs> the ass jacks are fine. Until you try to sit down. <laughs> O-M-G. <laughs> There's so many lawsuits, I stopped counting. It's over, Teresa. What about my money? If I were you, I'd put on a ball cap and sunglasses and get the hell out of that building quick. Oh, Popo. At least I'll always have you. Actually, my name is Edward and my paycheck bounced. So I ate your dog. Ah, there, I'm done. <laughs> All right, me darling, back to Vegas with you. Uh, good morning, Premier O'Shea. Uh, a few days ago, I inadvertently sent you some personal mail. I've come to apologize and beg your forgiveness. Grab it off the desk, boyo. I'm hitting the showers. Can't run the government covered in body glitter, smelling like a Reno cat house. Stomp and Tom Connors, what are you two doing in here? We was saving your job. You owe us one. Boy, listening to a guy hump all night sure makes you hungry. Wanna get some sausage? Why are you wet? It's not even raining. You were right, Ma. I'm crawling back, broke, homeless, and unemployed. Go ahead, say I told you so. Nah, I think you learned a bigger lesson than I ever could have taught you. I sure did. I learned if I'm gonna take a pregnancy test, I should do it at the mall bathroom. That's what you got from this? Nothing about being responsible or thinking before you do stuff. Uh. Nope. Ah, oh, forget it. I'm just glad you're back. Oh, boy. Ah! <sighs> it's good to be home. La 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 how you doing? I used to be Jimmy Falcone, a big shot in the Gambini crime syndicate. But I ratted out my friends, so my family and I had to go into witness protection. The thing about witness protection is, you can't just start off being witnessly protected. You gotta learn to be a whole other person. And that ain't easy. So remember, you're no longer the Falcones, you're the McDougals. What's your name? Jimmy Falcone. No, your fake name. Oh. My fake name is Tommy McDougal. Don't say my fake name. I don't know your fake name. We'll come back to you. Now, Debbie, would you please get me a glass of water?
Debbie, would you please get me a glass of water? Gina, your new name is Debbie. I know that, but get your own freaking water. Come on, people, you're moving in two weeks. One slip up and your cover will be blown. When do I get my nose job? There is no nose job. Boob job? No boob job. Hand job? There are no jobs. I thought you said I have to get a job. Yes, you have to get a job, Tommy. Who's Tommy? You're Tommy. I killed a Tommy once. Nice guy. Ah! And that was when they decided we should stick with our real first names. And then they shipped us off to Vagina... Regina. Saskatchewan. But if any of you think changing our name is gonna change the Falcons, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Thanks for picking me up, Cook. No problem. But do you think tomorrow you can take the bus? I gotta take the kids to the doctor. You ever been on a bus? They smell, they're filled with derelicts and slobs and people filled with disease. Let the kids take the bus. Oh my god, Jimmy! <laughs> Snake Hammer! They're playing tonight in Saskatoon! You know they've always been my favorite band! My sister and I never missed a single Snake Hammer concert. These guys do one show in ten years and where do they go? Saskatoon, Saskatoon, everybody loves Saskatoon. Oh my God, she's gonna be there. My sister's gonna be in Saskatoon tonight. Snake Hammer, grab it by the handle. Snake Hammer, put it in your toolbox. I'm gonna break out my leather pants and my hammer halter. And best of all, I'm gonna see Rosalie. Jimmy, we're going to Saskatoon. Like hell I am. What are you talking about? I could see my sister. This might be my only chance to ever see her again. But baby, it's Saskatoon. I'm a vagina guy. How could I go to work and look the other fellas in the eye? Oh, they wouldn't know. I'd know. Fine, don't do me any favors. I'll go myself. Then who will make dinner? Well, I wouldn't kill you to miss a meal, you fat f Jimmy, Cookie, we'll have none of that public cussing. Your outdoor arguments are bringing too much attention, and you risk exposing yourself. I will if you will. <laughs> oh, here she goes. Don't take her seriously, McCool. She's just trying to piss me off. And it's working! Will you two stop? This kind of behavior is not Canadian. We are a polite people who keep our true feelings bottled up. If we must express ourselves, we do it with silent resentment, flowering looks, and suppressed rage, all the while maintaining a delicate balance of denial and shame. That's the Canadian way. Do you think you can do that? You take denial, I got shame. Splendid, my work day is done. Oh, is that a Cuban? Mr. Goody Two-Shoes smoking illegal cigars. Nothing illegal about it. The government of Canada does not maintain antiquated foreign policies. And our beer tastes better too. For Canada, proud to be shameful. Hey, Petey, how about a little Grand Theft Auto? Gina, I'm studying. I don't have time for a video game. Who said anything about a video game? <laughs> You're so funny, Gina. Funny? Funny how? You mean the way I talk? What's funny about it? Funny like I'm a clown? I amuse you? I make you laugh? I'm here to f amuse you? What do you mean, funny? How the f am I funny? Yeah, like a clown. <laughs> now that's funny. You don't even know for sure that your sister will be there. I do know for sure. And if you'd taken the time to get to know my sister, you'd know she never misses a snake hammer show. But you didn't take time to get to know my sister because you didn't take the time to get to know me. Because you don't pay attention. I do so pay attention. Cheech, you're not going to believe what I found out about Canada. You can legally buy Cubans here. I know. I got a closet full of them. Mumbo! Mambo! Mambo! Please, senor, let us see. Wow! You can buy anything in Canada. 
Me and Gigi are going to the cigar store. Tell your mother we'll be back in 20. Hospital. Ah, this is the life. Sure is. Makes you wonder, why can't you get these in the States anyway? Beats me. Cuba has a lot to offer. Cigars, baseball players, Gooding Jr. I would like to go to Cuba one day and say, why did you make that gay boat movie? No, that was Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't want to argue politics with you. Let's just enjoy our smokes. All right, bye everyone. I'm off to see Aunt Rosalie. See you in the morning. Hell with a snake! Where's the car? Jimmy! Petey, where's your father? I like eggs. We meet again, old friend. Where the hell is he? That stupid, selfish jackass! I'm gonna kill him. This is Jimmy. I'm trapped inside my phone. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm just busting your balls. I can't believe you! You took the car when you knew how important this was to me! I may miss my sister if you don't get home soon, so you better call me the second you get this, you stupid, selfish f***! Gee! <laughs> hey, that was great, Jimmy. Great smokes, great booze, great conversation. We ought to spend more time together. Cheech, I'm with you all the time. Wait, that was you? Keep an eye open. I gotta take a leak. Hang on, I gotta go more. Look, I don't wanna get into some kind of pissing contest with you. Why? Because I can pee farther? Is that a challenge? You're on. Okay, we'll call it a draw. I'm gonna kill him. I am so gonna kill him. No, no, I'm gonna almost kill him. Then let him heal, then I'll kill him. No, then I'll almost kill him. Cuba Gooding Jr. was in Boys in the Hood with Lawrence Fishburne, who was in Apocalypse Now with Dennis Hopper. You inconsiderate child! Cookie, please! I'm in the middle of a game here. You took the car! My only chance to see my sister, and you took the freaking car! Oh, man, the concert. Cook, I'm sorry. You're always sorry. What good does that do me? You never listen. You only care about yourself. No, I'm caring about you now. See, here I am standing and talking about caring. If that ain't caring... Stop it! My sister's gone, the concert's over, and so are we. You no longer live here. Fine! I'll sleep in the car! Where'd I put it? Where am I gonna go? What am I gonna do? How'd I get into this mess? I've never seen her this angry before. I mean, we've had some big fights, but I've never had to talk to myself for this long. I wonder if that's the same RCMP Special Agent Straight McCool that I know. Jimmy! What are you doing here at this hour? Cookie threw me out and it's my own damn fault. I have nowhere to go. Oh my goodness, come in. You'll catch your death. Wow, this is the coolest place in the world. It's like Caesar's Palace meets Old Yeller. Precisely what I told my decorator, Jimmy. Have a seat. Thanks for letting me crash here. My pleasure. Now let's go over the rules. Rule number one, no feet on the table. Rule number two, no smoking. Rule number three, no littering. No writing on foggy windows, no usage of the word irregardless. Brush after every meal, lights out at 10.50, and no masturbating where I can hear it. Cheese and whiskers, it's like Toronto Union Station around here. Jimmy, Cookie wanted me to give you a message. Uh, I want to make sure I get this right. And take your... Uncle with you. What? I'm sorry, Cook. I screwed up. I don't know what's wrong with me. You deserve better, and I'll try harder. I'm tired of your apologies, Jimmy. This may have been the only chance to ever see my sister again in my life. I don't see how I'll ever be able to forgive you. I can't even forgive myself. I'm such a jerk. There you go. Me, me, me. I'm a jerk. I'm an idiot. I'm an asshole. All you think about is yourself. So go lead your selfish life without me. <sighs>
What about my clothes? And my piano? And my safe? And my anvil? And my feather? Ow! I'm telling you, I've never seen her like this. This was beyond anger. She didn't yell once. It was terrifying. You know what, Jimmy? I got lady troubles too. Mine is a real ball buster. Nothing I do is ever good enough. And one of these days, I'm just gonna go up to her and say, I won't take this anymore, Mom. You know what, kid? Today's your lucky day. I got me a little cabin in the suburbs. Come on by and we'll commiserate. Commiserate loves company. Schwa, schwa, schwa. <laughs> Women, schwa, 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 slut. Schwa, schwa. <laughs> Lonely. There, there, schwa, schwa. You know, me and Cheech, we got a little cabin. You know, Premier, we got a little cabin. Little cabin. Schwa, schwa. Schwa. My Premier, I didn't even vote for you. Then the joke's on me. I didn't think you were old enough to vote. Chug, 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 chug. Be at peace. If you can't enjoy how it goes down, you'll never like how it comes back up. Man, I never thought they'd all show up. I was just being polite. Hey, Jimmy, isn't that the guy you whacked because he figured out who you were? Hey, yeah, I hate when they come back. Hello, Jimmy. And you must be Uncle Cheech. We then, hey, listen, I gotta ask you something. I'm not sure how to put this, but didn't I kill you? Actually, that was my robot double. And I'm glad you whacked him, because I think he was trying to kill me. What? You have robots? Of course, Jimmy. I'm a master inventor. I wouldn't be nearly as wealthy as I am if I didn't have an army of robots working to undermine my competitors. But I've said too much. What? You have robots? Uh, just the one, but you killed it. Oh, dice. Excuse me. Come on, Jimmy, let's go play. Look, even the dead guy's having fun. I'm not really in the party mood, Cheech. I gotta get Cookie back. I gotta think of something big. Something huge, something so grand, there's no way she won't forgive me. Like what? I'm thinking an Xbox. Jimmy, I've been divorced six times. I think I know a thing or two about marriage. She threw you out. It's over. Time to live a little. I don't know. Look, you can wallow and mope for months, but let me tell you something. She ain't moping. She's out there, jumping up on tables, shaking her money maker, rubbing her hoo-ha all over the bar, and buying drinks for every guy who pinches her onion, all in your dime. That sounds like our wedding night. Move over! The kid is back! <gasps> what in the Queen's name is going on? Jimmy, what have you done? It's not my fault. It just sort of happened organically. Here, have a beer. That one's on you. That's it. Jimmy, Cheech, you are no longer welcome here. Everybody out. Not so fast, Mountie. Premier O'Shea. Under the laws of eminent domain, your cabin has been annexed by the great province of Saskatchewan. So saith the Premier. But, Your Honor, eminent domain can only be used in times of war. Then I declare war on your lame ass, so piss off! Thank you for hearing me out, sir. Hey, McCool! Bring back some Cheetos! Chin up in the face of adversity. There are those worse off than you. Stand tall and carry on, and enough with the sad music! Ah, Peter McDougal. The only member of the family who's never let me down. <laughs> I stand corrected. Hey, Teresa, wanna play Candyland? Sorry, Gina, but I stopped playing kids' games once I got tits. You sure? I changed it a little. That's pretty good. You're funny. Funny? Funny how? And I would really think hard about your answer. Don't be alarmed, Cookie. I found him with his tongue stuck to a lamppost. He has a mild concussion and he's lost his mind. Oh, Petey, why didn't you tell me you lost your mind? He'll be all right, thanks to me. All he needs is a good night's rest. Apologize. I don't know how to thank you. No need. You're going through enough yourself. I know all about you and Jimmy. He's been staying at my house, which I've been forced to leave. That selfish blob of spit. Tell me about it. 
I gave him a whole list of rules, but it never dawned on me that I had to add and flush. He's a pig. So, where are you staying? I'm hoping to find a dead deer and sleep inside its carcass. Is that as gross as it sounds? You have no idea. Then you have to stay here. You wouldn't be in this mess if it weren't for me. Come on in. We'll make some more mess. <laughs> that wouldn't be appropriate. I'm kidding. I insist. You'll stay here tonight where it's safe and warm. I suppose it's preferable to a dead deer carcass. All right, but on the condition that there's no hanky-panky. How about just panky? <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. Is that my lipstick? Who's funny now? <gasps> Did you use my lipstick to draw a picture of some poor girl named Thursa? It's you, dumbass. Whatever. I want that lipstick back, you little squirt. One more step and the lipstick gets it. You wouldn't try me. No, no! She means it! And you have a big ass! That's it! <laughs> Give it back to me! <sighs> What's this about? She stole my lipstick! She wouldn't play with me and she called me funny, so I swiped it and made a hangman game where I killed her and told her she had a fat ass, so you can't blame me! You girls don't know how lucky you are to have a sibling. I was an only child, no one to play with but myself. That came out wrong. Teresa, put your things where Gina can't get them. Gina, use your artistic talent to draw happy things like rainbows and unicorns. Problem solved. That was really impressive, McCool. Jimmy would just let them fight and then make fun of the loser. They're good girls, Cookie. Not outwardly, of course. Is this better? I'll take that as friendly sarcasm, Gina. You are quite funny. Go, Goldie, fight him! Jimmy, you bet on the bear? Does he s*** in the woods? Jimmy, this is such a fantastic thing, you shwa shwa, to have this house and this party and the shwa shwa shwa. I don't know. I've been trying to enjoy myself, but the truth is, I can't stop thinking about Cookie and what I've done. Mano, what you do is a service for the whole community. You are a mother shwa shwa genius <laughs> to create all this and then get rid of that shwa shwa mountie. And he moves in with your wife? What? Son of a schwa! I gotta do something to win my wife back, and it's gotta be even grander than an Xbox. Somehow, I gotta get Cookie together with her sister. But how? Jimmy, I can help you. What could you do? I'm a billionaire entrepreneur, world-renowned inventor, decorated scientist, and believe it or not, I'm a heterosexual man who understands women. All right, let's get these two broads together. You know, it's a proven fact that anything we can do, they can do better. They like to hear that. Oh, little Gina. Oh, Teresa. Don't look, man. Don't look. Oh, Cookie. No wonder she wanted me to do the vacuuming. I'll get it. McCall, I'm here to see Cookie, but... I want to say I'm sorry about the party and everything. Thank you, Jimmy. I hope you're not alarmed by my presence in your home, but I assure you nothing happened that would cause me to be less than proud. Uh, so does that mean you did her or you did not do her? God, no. Good. Then these are for you. Why, Jimmy, your apology was valiant enough. You didn't need to buy me flowers. I didn't. We broke a vase in your living room, and I thought you'd want them. Now get the hell out of my house! Cookie! Didn't I tell you to f*** off? Cause if I didn't, I'd be more than happy to tell you again. What are you smirking at? Get ready to forgive me. Over my dead cookie! Rosalie! Oh my god! It's really you! I, I never thought I'd see you again! You just disappeared! One day you, Jimmy, the kids were just gone! I can't believe you're really here! I talk to you every day in my head. That's because you've always had voices in your head, you crazy bitch. I missed you so much, you painted hoe. Jimmy, how did you make this happen? I called in a favor. Baby, I screwed up. And I had to fix it for you, because I love you. I love you too, you big cheese ball. 
I love you too, you big cheese ball. I'm sorry, that was weird. Weird. Cheese ball, weird. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It was a long flight. I'm just a little tired. Tired, tired. What's going on? Nothing. It's just the excitement of seeing my sister. Sister, 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 sister. Oh, my God! Gimme! Cookie! Hit the dirt! Oh, they didn't use the nuclear battery. Busted. What the hell is going on? That wasn't your sister. It was a robot. Look, I'm sorry, but there was no way I could get to Rosalie for real. This was the only thing I could think of to get you to stop hating me. So, would you mind going inside and tossing me my other piano and I'll be on my way? Jimmy, I never hated you, and I never could. How many men would go to the trouble of building a nuclear-powered robot sister for their wife? Six? One. And I got him. And you're never gonna lose him. <laughs> Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, currently known as Jimmy McDougal. Back in the old days, when I was a big shot, the most important person in my life was my lawyer. When you make an honest living breaking the law, never misunderestimate the value of a good shyster. Suppose I allegedly tried to whack a guy and he went to the cops. Would I be in trouble? Hmm. The guy was available night and day. It's me. I know it's 4 a.m. and you're in the Hamptons, but you gotta come to the city and bail me out. <sighs> I need you to get rid of this for me. <laughs> Nothing seemed to phase this guy. Then out of the blue, he robs a liquor store and gets sent to jail. This guy went to Harvard. Why would he do that? Thank God. Just put me in a deep, dark hole and get me away from Jimmy Falcone. <laughs> anyway, now that I'm in witness protection, I don't need no lawyer, because I got my own personal Mountie. Hey, McCool, can you get me one of them new Smarty Pants phones? We've been through this, Jimmy. I can't cater to your every little whim. The answer is no, so just... I can't believe I'm going to say this. Forget about it. Oh! Oh! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. So, they took your appendix, huh, McCool? I'll give you one of mine, but it's probably messed up from hard living. But, Uncle Cheech, the human appendix is a vestigial organ. I've been kicked in the vestigials. I feel your pain, McCool. I hope you like the flowers. It was the most expensive ones they had. Nothing's too good for our Mountie. We got the banner just in case. Listen, Doc, this guy's a friend of the family. Send his bill to us. What bill? I like you. You learn fast. Cookie, is Jimmy coming? His smiling face and ceaseless cigar smoke always brighten my day. Don't worry, I'm sure he's on his way. I sent that bonehead plenty of reminders. <laughs> ah, crap, I slept past five. What's with him? He's looking right at me. He's still there. What if he's a hitman? This is bad! 
Son of a... Toby, what are you doing sneaking up on a guy like that? Oh, sorry, Jimmy. I just came to remind you, if you're gonna stay late, don't forget to put in for overtime. Thanks, Toby. My pleasure. All right, you bastard. You want me? Come get me. Gotcha! Toby! Jeez, sorry! I thought you were someone else! Maybe uh, I should start wearing a bell? I wish you'd have thought of that earlier! It's that guy again! What guy? All I can see are fuzzy shapes. You've reached Special Agent Straight McCool. Just leave a message, Jimmy. You're the only one who ever calls. McCool, I've been made. There's a guy tailing me. Meet me at home. And grab me a slice on your way. I'm starving. Ow! What the hell, Ma? You know that bear Gina has in her room with a dollar sign on it? Sure, sure. Money bear. Okay. I was in a room getting rid of anything that might be construed as evidence, and I think I might have threw a money bear. What? You know how Gina gets when you touch her stuff. Remember when you tried to get her off the pacifier? She was like a badger, clawing and scratching, and that sound she made. <laughs> I wore an eye patch for a year. Exactly, so I don't want to know about this. I can't believe my own daughter's gonna abandon me in a time when I'm in danger from my other daughter. What? Nothing. Nothing. I need a gun. Thanks, kid. Where'd you get this? You want a gun or you want to ask stupid questions? Where the hell were you? Paul McCool's lying in the hospital and you can Wait a second, McCool's in the hospital? Why didn't you tell me? That means we're on our own. What are you talking about? I don't got time to explain. I think we've been made. <laughs> Whoa, easy, Tiger. Boy, Jimmy, I've been trying to introduce myself all night, but you kept giving me the slip. Who the hell are you? And who sent you? I came as soon as I got your message. Jimmy, this is FBI agent Rick Chick Magnet. Is pepperoni okay? All they had was pepperoni. It's kind of cold. What do you feds want from me now? The Bureau wants to interview you for an ongoing investigation, Jimmy. Nice to meet you. I'm Special Agent McCool. Let me guess. First name, not so? Nice uniform, not so. <laughs> so what do you say, Jimmy? Deal or not a deal? No way. I had enough of being a no-good snitch for one lifetime. In the eyes of the U.S. government, you're no snitch. You, sir, are a hero. You sure you got the right Jimmy? Oh, and by the way, I brought eight pounds of gabagool from Polly's Deli in New York. Yay! <gasps> Jimmy, what's a gabagoo? It's lunch meat. Now put on some pants, will you? Come on in, Chick Magnet. I guess I'll be heading back to the old hospital. For <laughs> Canada! And ow! Oh, my stitches popped. Well, Jimmy, you've been a huge help. The tip about Don Barzini alone is enough to blow the case wide open. When you take him down, tell him I said yo. <laughs> I sure will. Uh, now listen, between you and me, how do you like it up here in the great mild north? Don't ask. What if I told you that as a reward for your cooperation, the Bureau is willing to relocate your family? What? <laughs> That's right, Jimmy. To sunny California. Really? What did you say? California? Are you serious? The details are right in here. I'll take you and Cheech down to the North Dakota field office for processing, and the family can meet us in California. You hear that? We're gonna be Americans again! But wait, I was just getting to like it here. The schools are better, the medical care is top-notch, and I just finished building my first igloo in the backyard. Pipe down, Petey. You can build plenty of googie goos in California. Hang on. Petey might have a point. Is it right to keep moving the kids around like homeless gypsies? Let's get the Chick Magnet's giving you a six-bedroom house, a full cable package, and a job as a nude beach lifeguard? 
Are you sure you don't want to stay in Canada, Jimmy? I'm positive. California's got sunshine, no snow, and unfettered access to burritos. My hands are tied here. Well, then, I suppose this is goodbye? Really? I never hugged a cop before, unless I was stabbing him. In a way, you have stabbed me, Jimmy. Right through the heart. Jeez, all right. <gasps> You're crying now? No, no, my... Incision became severely infected when I left the hospital to meet you last night. That's what you get for ignoring doctor's orders. Anyway, I'll send you a postcard. It'll have my new name on it. Jimmy Gonzalez. <gasps> what are you doing? I got a replacement for Money Bear. You think that piece of crap's gonna fool Gina? Where's the dollar sign on the front? I'll sew it on. But first, we gotta age it to look like Money Bear. What's he look like? I need details! I don't know. Ask Petey. I can. He'll say, Mother, honesty is the best policy and get us all killed! Wait, it had an eye missing. Good, good. So we'll pry off one of the son of a bitch's eyes. Which one? Think! I had it, but you slapped it out of me. Well, Igloo, in saying goodbye to you, I'm also saying farewell to Canada. Yeah, we're leaving right now. Don't sweat it. They don't suspect a thing. <gasps> I'm not telling you where they are. You'll send guys to whack them, and I don't get my million-dollar bounty. See you in Fargo. You bring the money, I'll bring the Falcones. God, I hate Canada. Snow in my pants. All right, boys, let's head off to your new life. So long, Cook. Next time you see me, we'll be in sunny California. And I'll be selling oranges at the off-ramp in a leopard print thong. You take good care of my Jimmy, okay? Of course I will. <laughs> it's not like I'm gonna get him across the border, put a bullet in his head, and sell him to the mob or anything. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <sighs> Call McCool. Searching for my stool. Would you like me to book a colonoscopy? <gasps> Agent McCool's special here. McCool! Rick Chick Magnet is gonna kill my dad! Slow down, I'm on morphine, so I'm having trouble following. Who's this again? It's Petey. Rick Chick Magnet is taking dad and Cheech to the mob. Chick Rick Magnet? What are you calling me for? You think you're so cool. You want cool? Try morphine! This sh is awesome! This isn't Chick Magnet, it's Petey! Petey? Hey, kid, I tell you, if I tried this morphine junk when I was your age, I never would have become a cop. I'd have become a jazz dancer. Snap out of it! My dad's in trouble! Did I ever tell you how Mummy supported us when Daddy left? The men she brought home, we called them my uncles. No, Uncle, I won't fix you a drink. Get your own damn highball, you filthy pervert! What am I gonna do? Dad's gonna die! Help! I'm bored. Are we there yet? Hey, let's play I Spy. What are you, six? Take it easy, Chick Magnet. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. I spy with my little eye something that's gonna get slaughtered. What? See, a truck full of lambs. Oh, right, good one. I'll try again. I spy with my little eye dead meat. Who, me? No, no, there's some roadkill over there. <laughs> One more. I spy, with my little eye, two wise guys who are gonna get whacked. All right, you're freaking me out. What? Relax. It's just Martin Scorsese's new movie. We are so seeing that. Hey, Cheech? Cheech? Aw, he fell asleep. <laughs> Mommy, you don't have to turn on the red light. <sighs> wow, what a trip. Won't be doing that again. Oh, look, Petey called. 
Thundering Thunder Bay, Jimmy! <laughs> Gallop like the wind horse, Jimmy's in trouble. Oh, Canada! Where friendship trumps infection every time! Okay, now we run him through the dryer a bunch of times to make him look old. I can't do this. I can lie to you and Pop. But Gina, she's got those eyes. They burn right through ya. Don't you fall apart on me now. If this doesn't look exactly like Money Bear, you and me are going to California in a pine box. What the hell are they talking about Money Bear for? He's right down here. What are they so freaked out about? I'm out. You're out when I say you're out. <laughs> I could have a lot of fun with this. Look at that. Fremont Kimson will be in the good old U.S. of A. First thing I'm gonna do is get me some poutine and a bottle of maple syrup. Hey, get a load of McCool. Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? Let us go, it's for the best. For us, at least. I can't hear you. I'll Skype you from Cali. Yo, Chick Magnet, relax. He's just trying to say goodbye again. Pull over. Screw that. You're under my jurisdiction now. Technically, not for two more Kims. Oh! Oh! oh. We're alive, Jimmy. You know what this means? Seatbelts actually work. McCool, you crazy bastard. What are you doing? Oh, run. Run. What's he saying, rum? Rum. Poor bastard needs a drink. I know the feeling. Quit fooling around! This guy needs help! Oh, God, could you possibly be more dense? I'm trying to kill you, you stupid moron! But what about Calif- Oh! you trying to kill us? You're a fed. I'd explain, but I hate it when bad guys stand around telling their plan when they could just kill the hero. I'm a lot of things, but a hero ain't one of them. Ah, my eyes! Ah, do you ever wash your feet? Hey, Jimmy, if I drop my pants, do I get a piggyback too? Between you and me, my nuts are like ice cubes. I know, I know. I'm cold, too. Oh, I mean all the time. We need to find shelter. Hey, maybe there's a Howard Johnson's out here. How about that old barn? I bet that joint don't even have cable. Damn it! It still looks good as new. And he smells spring fresh! I'll warm up the car. We'll run over his head a couple times. Whose head is Ma gonna run over? <gasps> oh, hi, Gina. How are you, little sis? What's behind your back? What? Oh, nothing. All right, now you got me curious. And when I get curious, I like answers. You know how I like to get answers, Teresa? <gasps> how? The hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy's turning blue. We gotta find something to start a fire. Don't waste your time. He knew this was a one-way ride. Come on, Cheech. The guy risked his life to save my ass after I treated him like a jerk. Which makes him a huge pushover, but still. Way I see it, if he dies, we can survive on him for weeks. He's built like Conan. The barbarian, not the weird redhead on TV. Cheech, I'm hungry too, but we're not eating McCool. Get a fire going. You work nights as an arsonist. Should be a cinch. Look for anything that'll burn. Forget it, Jimmy. We're all gonna freeze in here. Wait, I know. This ought to burn for a while. <clears throat> Changed your mind? Ah, the tag was chafing me. You threw out Money Bear. You got any idea why I call him Money Bear? Because I keep money in him, that's why. I had three grand in there. Hey, where's Mom? Dad's in trouble. <laughs> now, let's.
Let's have a little talk about how I'm gonna get my money back. I'm not the one you want. It's Ma. She dragged me into this. Oh, sure, I get it. You was just an innocent bystander. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, Gina. I'll get your money, I promise. Whatever it takes, just don't hurt me. All right, seeing as your family, I'll cap the vig at 3%. And let this be a lesson to you. Don't keep no secrets from me. <laughs> Easiest three grand I ever made. Uh, this ain't what it looks like. Get up to your room. You're grounded. Ah, crap. That's it? She's grounded? You didn't say a word about throwing out a stupid bear. What, am I gonna incriminate myself? Oh, that's great. I owe her a bunch of money, and you got off with nothing? Well, kid, I'm a mob wife. I got an instinct for dodging bullets. How much you into it for, anyway? I don't know. How many dollars are in three percents? I can't take this no more. We gotta fight back. Our first mistake was not bringing guns. Wait a sec. McCool might have a gun. Uh, I'm way ahead of you. What are you doing? Passing the time till help comes. Give me that. Find something to make clothes. We're going outside. Hey, we could have just burned this stuff. All right, chick magnet, get him up. Get him up. You sound like a no good cop. Let's see them hands. Yippee ki yay, Sheriff. Oh, you making fun of me? Nah, just kidding around, officer. Spit it out. You saying I gone soft? No, oh, I'm saying I'd have shot the guy already. Oh, yeah? How's that? You missed. The old snowman decoy trick works every time, except in summer. You're a disgrace, Chick Magnet, turning your back on your badge for a few lousy bucks. More like a million bucks, Jimmy. What? Me and Cheech are worth a million bucks to the mob? Just for you. For Cheech, I get a coffee maker. Oh, I went up. I used to be worth a three-pack of tube socks. The only coffee you'll be brewing will be in prison, Chick Magnet. McCool! You're alive! Now who am I gonna have for lunch? Your humble shirt and pants fire was enough to temporarily spur my immune system, Jimmy. Now let's see how your immune system handles a hot lead injection, donkey dong. Ah! Horse, good boy. Give him hell, horsey. Stop it, horse. You're only stomping lifeless pulp. Up on, boys. No sense riding on an empty stomach. Let's roast up the G-Man before we go. Enough with the cannibalism. What do you want from me? I got a craving. Haiti told us what happened. Are you boys okay? Everyone's fine, despite being chased by a lunatic out for personal gain. Funny, same thing happened to me and Teresa. But why let one rogue federal agent ruin the big move to California? Uh, about that, Cookie, it appears that Chick Magnet engineered the whole thing. I know, what a bastard, but we're still going, right? Right? Sorry, Cook. Jesus Christ! That's yes. <laughs> well, McCool, I guess you ain't getting rid of us that easy. I suppose not. I must thank you, Jimmy. You went above and beyond to keep me alive. I just burned a shirt off my back. It was nothing. No, Jimmy, it was proof. You like me. You really like me. Well, I should get back to hospital. The infection is starting to take hold again. <gasps> Let's cook them like a Christmas ham. La 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 how you doing? You know, back in the old days you found out someone was getting whacked after it was done. You'd be all, hey, where's so-and-so? And everyone get all quiet like someone farted. But with Cheech, I found out in advance. It was the day I had four root canals. Wise guys ain't big on dental work, but Cookie made me go. Mm. Word came down from Gambini. Cheech has gotta die. Mm. 
But I forgot where he lives. I know, I'm a terrible friend. Now where is he so I can go kill him? What'd he say? Quit stalling, Jimmy. I promise I'll make it quick and painless for him. Okay, only one of those is true. What language is that? Stroke victim? I was trying to plead for Cheech's life and explain that I'd just been to the dentist, but I couldn't get a word out. Ah, so this is where he is. There's a good boy, Jimmy. They didn't find Cheech, but they came away with something. And that's why four out of five gangsters never go to the dentist. But if you think Canadian healthcare covers dental, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> then Mario says, Witch head, I got a suitcase full of them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew as much. As I settled in for an evening of whittling in CBC Radio, I heard a report of two rowdies causing a ruckus. Surprise, surprise, it's you two. We ain't drunk enough to cause no ruckus. <laughs> now we're ruckus. McCool, you know what your problem is? You don't know how to have fun. I certainly do. Why, just last week I snowshoed across a barren, unforgiving tundra to go ice fish. Oh, very funny. Face it, you're boring. Boring, eh? We'll see about that. Bucky, fix me three prancing Mounties. <gasps> What's that, a girly drink? Certainly not. Each ingredient of the prancing Mountie is culled from Canada's finest fermenters and distillers. Plus seven ounces of 180 proof Jamaican rum. Yeah, girly drink. To Canada, where 0 .08 isn't the limit, it's the minimum. Jimmy! <laughs> oh, what happened last night? Where the hell am I? This place looks familiar. <laughs> Jimmy, how much did we drink? I don't know, it's a blur. I had a horrifying nightmare in which, for some reason, we left Regina and... <gasps> Holy balls! Joni Mitchell's paved paradise! We're in New York! Why are we in New York? You tell me! You're the detective! This is clearly some kind of fever dream brought on by last night's debauchery. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to will myself unconscious, and when I awaken, everything will be back to normal. McCool, well, that's nuts! You Ugh. can't... Morning, Jimbo. We really tied one on last night, huh? You made coffee? Do you know where we are? We're in New York. What are you, stupid? I had this nightmare that we were in some frozen crap hole in Canada. And our name was, get this, McGillicuddy. McDougal. <gasps> Oh my god, it's the Mountie from my dream! Wait, no, this is the dream! Or is it? What does that mean? This is the end of my career! I can't call for help, what would I say? I thought I'd take the Falcone boys to New York to reconnect them with the people who want them dead? Oh, lovely, that's probably work wondering where I am. So don't answer it! This is my work phone, I have to! No, you don't. Special agent, straight McCool. Oh, hello, Cookie. Thank God you answered. Jimmy went out for a beer last night and didn't come home. I'm so worried. What if something happened? I don't know what I'd do without him. Don't worry, Cookie. He's, uh, with me. He had a little too much fun last night. Oh, I'm so relieved. Now tell that useless fat f not to come staggering home until he sobered his ass up. 
Because I am not dealing with a giant sweaty man baby all day. Oh, and Cheech is also with me. Don't care. Jimmy, is this your old house? Yeah, it is. But how do you know? <gasps> I added the last part. They always leave me out. Why do I have to help clean out the garage? I didn't do anything wrong. Mom found cigarette butts outside, so until the culprit comes forward, we're all paying for it. Only time I touch smokes is when I buy them more for reserve and sell them at the high school. Gina, that's wrong. If a 300% mock-up is wrong, I don't want to be right. Who's this guy with Mom? And why does he look like me? Maybe it's your twin brother. That's impossible. This guy's at least 20 years older than me. Besides, this is what happened to Petey's twin. Yum, 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 yum. Why would they make a flip book of that? Probably so you could do this. Yeah, <laughs> Talk about shame eating. It would appear the parts of your house that haven't been vandalized and or used as a toilet have been converted into a veterinary clinic. That's because this is a mob doctor's office. Mob doctors are usually greedy, money-grubbing veterinarians. No kidding. 50 Gs for a baboon heart, and I can barely climb stairs. Uh, I think the doctor is in. <gasps> Did you do this, Cheech? I didn't touch the guy. I leave him bloody, not naked. Well, I didn't do it. <clears throat> I have no idea what happened, but the good doctor is wearing my handcuffs. Attaboy, oh. McCool! Yes, we can congratulate my decline into degeneracy later, but right now we need to focus on getting out of here before... Doc, it's Leo! Open the door! Tutty got shot in the ass. Again! Oh, crap! It's the Gambini crew! Dino, kick it in! Good day, gentlemen! Who are you? Where's the regular doc? I'm his, uh, brother? His brother, huh? And who are these guys? Uh, these are my interns. They're, uh, deaf and mute, so they won't be able to say a single word. Not a single word. Now, let's uh, get the patient into the, um, examining room. Jimmy, what's wrong with you? We're deaf and mute. Close your eyes. <laughs> Is the garage cleaned out yet, Smokey? <gasps> what the hell are you doing with that? I want to know who that is. That's... that's none of your business. Forget your saw it and do not bring it up in front of your father, you hear me? But who is he? Who is who? The man in the picture. What picture? I don't see any picture. There's no picture. Damn it, my ring came off. <laughs> See what you made me do, you nosy bastard! Shouldn't you clean any uh, potential obstructions around the abrasion collar of the contusion so he don't get necrotic fasciitis? I... I'm sorry, what? Shave his ass so head don't get in the hole! Oh, of course! You two, prep the patient. You're quite knowledgeable. I grew up around here. I've seen more shots in the ass than a Catholic altar boy. Look at these clowns. Shaving asses for a living. Come on, Dino. Let's go smoke. <laughs> Who's he calling a clown? Hey, I thought you was mute. Now nah, he's the deaf one. Oh, so you are the mute? Exactly. Got it. Wait a minute. We could argue all day about who's mute and who's deaf, but we really should be focusing on your ass, Tootie. You, focus that razor on this man's ass. <sighs> Thanks, Cheech. No problem, Jimmy. You killed Gambini for me. It's the least I could do. <gasps> Jimmy! Guys, get in here! It's Jimmy Falcone! And Cheech, who do I gotta blow to get remembered around here? <laughs> Relax, gentlemen. Tootie had a reaction to the anesthetic. He's fine now. Well, what was all that about Jimmy Falcone? He's probably just upset about being in the man's former house. Wait a sec. How'd you know this was Jimmy's house? Well, no one breaks into a random residence and paints kill Jimmy Falcone on the wall. Just hearing that stinking rat's name makes me want to kill him. 
and kill anyone he's with, and then kill a bunch of other people on account of being so keyed up. Come on, Dino. Let's go punch something. <sighs> <laughs> Quit flopping around! I'm sorry to have to do this. Nice shot, McCool. I'll see if I can find us a way out of here. Cheech, put some stitches in Tootie's behind, will you? Why? What kind of pretend doctor would I be if I allowed this man to get necrotic vagitis? Maron, look at all these drugs. Pick me! Pick me! Don't worry, fellas. I'm gonna pick all of you. I found something. It's a long shot, but it might work. Follow me. Did you sew up the hole in his keister? Yeah, both of them. But there was only one. Oh. Who are you? How do you know my mom? And what was your major at Harvard? You're my father! And that's what I'd look like with boobs. This is never gonna work! What's the matter with you, McCool? It's all I could come up with, Jimmy. I'm a little stressed out, so cut me some slack! Okay, sorry. Where'd you find his get-up, anyway? Just inside the door of an escape tunnel in the basement. <gasps> Calgary Stampede! Let's go back! Where you going, Doc? Say, that's a nice animal. Wait a sec. I don't remember seeing no horse inside. Dino, shut up. What's the matter with you? He's a vet, you moron. See, this is why you still live in your mother's basement. Leo, you son of a bitch! Where the hell have you been? Ah, crap, it's Marie. <laughs> remember Marie? There's a piece of work. F***ing shoot me now, Jimmy. What are you doing out here with these mooks? I bet you forgot our anniversary. Didn't ya? Oh, baby, of course not. I was uh, just talking to the doc here about your big surprise. I, uh, no, you weren't. Sure, I was. I was explaining how if you didn't help me out, I'd put you and your fancy fucking horse in the East River in small packages. Oh, yes, that. This better be good. Great! I'm back in New York and I don't even get to see it! Oh! Smells like New York back here! Oh! So you're the one who was smoking, Teresa! You saw nothing. I guess it makes sense. Everyone in this family is a big fat liar. Who you calling fat? And who you calling a liar? Wait, no, I'll give you that one. Now I know why I don't fit in. Because the man in that picture is my real father. But you and Papa are so alike. <laughs> I, I can't even finish that. Maybe this needle thick is your father. Does that make Petey a bastard? Yeah, so nothing's changed. Mark all you want. I'm going to Harvard to find my dad. Ah! The guy graduated from Harvard. It's not like he lives there. Yeah, the only people who live at their schools are janitors and Harry Potters. I know, it's just a starting point in my search for my- Is somebody smoking? It's Petey. I knew it. Going to Harvard, bye. Ah, uh, this is the slowest goddamn horse in New York. Somebody give him some hay or something. <gasps> Yo, Doc, what gives? Jesus, H. Diefenbaker, did we steal a plane? Uh, you're killing my anniversary here. Tell the horse to go faster, or someone's gonna be shaving your ass tonight. Help me out here! <sighs> what the hell's that? Horse stimulant from the vet's office. Jesus, Cheech, who finds random drugs and then just takes them? I do, Jimmy. It's called living. Yeah, well, don't get any big ideas. Ow! I don't feel nothing. I think that was a dud. What thoroughbred you got there, Doc? That gives me an idea. That horse better come up a winner. 
Or it's the glue factory for him, the cement shoe store for you, and the supermarket for me. Killing makes me hungry. I think we can totally do this! I think we can totally do this! Every moment of my life has led me to doing this. Let's do this! It's a beautiful morning in Belmont. The sun is shining, the horses are ready, and the great Canadian invasion was a false alarm. I don't know what you did at the park, but do it again as soon as you hear the bell. We took a speed. <laughs> Lots of speed. I never thought I'd say this, but thank God for illegal drugs. In gate five, we've got saucy buckets, and in gate six, we have obviously a pantomime horse. That's the horse's name, folks, not a description. It's a good name. The important thing is, did we have fun? And no, we did not. Damn it. I needed that money to buy my way out of this horrible life. What did you just say? I uh, said, uh, let's go put that stinking animal out of our misery. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Ooh. So this is Harvard. I always wondered when you would realize the truth, my son. Father! <laughs> Come join my research team, Peter. I'm developing a pill that cures global warming. But how? It makes human flatulence refill holes in the ozone layer. You said flatulence. That's science for farts! Petey! Come home to Mama! I'll be your mama. Okay. Peter Frampton McDougal, get off this bus right now! I want to meet my real father. Keep this up and I'll see to it you meet Jesus. Oh, now oh. come on. I always thought that if I died inside a horse, it would be more sexual. That's shaky Dino Bonzini. Guy can't shoot to save his life. Keep moving till he runs out of bullets. Hey, yo, Silver, keep still. Leo, you gotta see this. You kill him yet? How do you like that? The horse has got moves. That gives me an idea. So, this is just a horse dancing. For three hours? See what happens when you gloss over rehearsals? How could you think I'd have a kid with someone other than your father? Because I look so much like that guy. Ugh. He's your uncle. My brother, Pauly. The Brainiac. You have a brother? Why'd you keep him a secret from us? Your father put him through Harvard, but when he found out what Pop did for a living, Polly ratted him out on a two-bit gambling thing. Pop did a year in Attica. Oh, so obviously Polly's dead now. Jimmy let it slide as long as we never spoke of Polly again. You are definitely your father's son, mainly because you're both dopes. And because Polly got picked up exposing himself in the subway. What a sicko getting naked in public. Weren't you once a stripper? That was for money, which is socially acceptable. I told you the script needed work. We should have hired David Mamet. And have the horse saying f and sh all over the stage? No thanks. We gotta retool. Maybe do out of town previews? Bottom line is, the horse is done. I'm replacing him with Nathan Lane. Obviously a pantomime horse. Your time is up. It's gonna be horse steaks tonight, boys! So this is how it ends. To be fair, I knew we were dead after Rex Reed's review. McCool, where you been? Not trying to get tickets for this debacle, I'll tell you that. But thank the Northern Lights, you're still alive. We won't be for long if you don't get us out of here. 
Boys, I owe you an apology. This escapade was clearly the result of my trying to prove I was fun. We owe you an apology. You're a freaking wild man. Yeah, this is the best time I've had in years. Of course, I can't remember that many years, but still. Thank you, gentlemen. That means a lot coming from you. All right, let's mop up the circle, jerk, because we're in big trouble. Lock up, boys. We're going back to Canada. Yeah, in a pine box. No, the same way we came, on the backs of prancing Mounties. I'm scared, Jimmy. Me too. Who knows where we could wind up? Where you been, Pop? I got drunk, dressed as a horse, ran for my life. You know, weekend stuff. I did some stupid stuff, too. You know what they say, Petey? If you like my father, then you'll like my son. That's not at all what they say. Whatever. You're the one with the brains. <laughs> Do I smell smoke? It's probably Petey! What's wrong with you? Don't you know smoke it'll kill you? All right, see you later, Broadway. And not a word of this to anyone, Jimmy. For Canada! Well, la 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 how you doing? Good? Yeah, well, if I asked you that question in the old life, I wouldn't know if you was actually telling the truth. Because back then, you couldn't trust nobody. For he's a jolly good fellow, we can't afford happy birthday. For he's a jolly good fellow. Blow out your candles, Jimmy. <gasps> <laughs> Most guys learn not to trust people by getting screwed over. But it was birthday cake that taught me. You know what? You blow him out. This guy, so suspicious. No one's gonna pull that trick again. Hmm. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> There's an expression. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, I will rip your fucking ears off. Really? Do I look stupid to you guys? Here's your fucking cake! It's okay. He missed my dick. Anyway, now that I live among the goody good people of Regina, I still don't trust nobody. Yeah, yeah, thanks to you, I don't got a spleen. Now, say the thing so we can go inside. Nah, you say it. Why should I say it? You say it. Oh, for Christ's sake! Forget about it! <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. For Canada, where Canadians are from. That's awful. Where's the poetry, the insight? This is uninspired and lazy. Oh. For Canada, good start. Go Blue Jays? Oh, come on. I let you order Chinese, and this is the best you can come up with? <laughs> Hi, low, low. Blast! Even my phone greetings are terrible. We'll do those next. It's Teresa. I've been in a teensy little fender banger. <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> For Canada, where maple syrup lacrosse double double? Oh, now you're just mocking me. <laughs> What's a six letter word for hurry? Hey! Hmm. 
Hmm. No serious damage. Horse, get this out of the ditch, will you? Please don't tell my folks about this. Smooth Canadian club. Have you been drinking? I had one beer. I, I swear, I'm not... Blow. Hmm. You're not inebriated, but there's a hint of alcohol in your blood. Provincial law requires me to confiscate your license. I'm not drunk. I don't understand. No. Fortunately, I just completed an RCMP workshop on talking to teens. Ahem. <clears throat> Word on the herd is short ones can't slop a jar of ski and skate the jam wagon, so mind your turnips, you silly frail. Teenagers don't talk like that. Hmm, the workshop did seem a tad outdated. Especially the part about how bathtub gin leads to syphilis. Whatever, just please don't tell my parents about this. I won't, Teresa, but you will. <sighs> there you go, clumsy. Let's drive you home. <laughs> no, we can't stop for drive through. <laughs> Guess what? I won first place at the high school science fair. Sponsored by Wheat Corp, a subsidiary of Wheat Thin Enterprises. We have to say that last part or their lawyers come after us. Congratulations, Petey! What'd you do? You're stupid, cause cheat you buy it twice. I totally would. I designed a weight loss app that counts calories in food. I call it the Calogrammeter. 4,000 calories, jeez, Pop. How many calories was that, you food-shaming little jerk? 125. I hate to tell ya, but somebody already thought of that. Adolf Einstein. How was this possible? A product of Wheat Corp? Richard Wheaton stole my idea! Uh-oh! Don't want to be late for school! 42 calories? I wouldn't talk, kid. I've seen you come out of the shower. At least mine has a mustache. I really don't want to tell my parents. Can we just forget it? I can't stop thinking about last night. The drinking, the blowing. <gasps> I, I didn't blow that bad. I'm sorry to tell you, but you didn't blow very well either. Oh, yeah? I don't think your equipment was working very well. My equipment may be a bit old, but I assure you it works just fine. Or at least it did before you got your teeth marks all over it. How could there be teeth marks? That thing was so hard. <gasps> In any case, if you don't tell your parents about your alcohol-fueled accident, I will. Now, if you'll excuse me. For Canada, where curling is looked upon favorably. Oh, these are atrocious. Thanks to Cheech needing a bath toy, my Virgin Mary statue ain't a virgin no more. You better step up, uh, St. Polycarp of Smyrna. Tell me your troubles, my child. McCool's been fooling around with my teenage daughter. What do I do? Oh, uh, I, I can't help you. I'm, I'm the patron saint of earaches and dysentery. Dysent? You mean diarrhea? And earaches. I'm very good with those. If you eat bad Indian food or get some of it in your ear canal, I'm your man. Who'd you screw to become a saint? Look, you're done with Polycarp here. I got a case of the squirts that's draining the life out of me. Squat before me, my son. Hey! I just spoke to Wheat Corp. Turns out any idea entered in the science fair automatically becomes their property. I like that business model. You want it, you take it. Screw everyone. I strenuously voiced my objection, and they promised to send an acknowledgement of my contribution. Whatever it is, I get 10% or I break your foot. I'm Pat on the back, and I'm here to give you, Petey McDougal, a pat on the back, courtesy of Wheat Corp. Is it a check or a direct deposit? Who needs money? Not me, Jack. Who needs money? Take it all back. Money won't save you from a heart attack or get your mother off of the crack. Money is evil, that's a fact, but nothing says thank you like a pat on the back. Have a great day. Let me guess. You got a white hot ball of rage right between your eyes. You, you want to put two slugs in Wheat Thin's face so they can't even have an open casket. Uh, not exactly, but...
but I am quite miffed. Easy there, psycho. You want revenge? No, I want justice. Godfather. Shit. Do you ever know what buttons to push? Uh, can I grab a ride home off of one of you? McCool and Teresa? That's not so! What would she even see in that guy? Oh, I don't know. Maybe his big shoulders, strong arms, those tree trunk legs. Ah, not to mention his dreamy eyes, square jaw, and the fact that he probably gives horse penis envy. Yeah, okay, but apart from that, he's got nothing! Teresa, get your ass in here! All right, kid. What's up with you and McCool? Oh, my God, he told you? No, he didn't. But, ha! I knew it. Hey, that's entrapment. Right, Daddy? Sure is, Buttercup. Shame on you, Cook. If he didn't say nothing, I'm not saying nothing, neither. Oh, is that so? Then you're grounded. Don't she have a right to counsel? No, and no phone call, neither. Give me a phone. Fine, take it. And let us never speak of this incident that never occurred again. Jimmy, why don't you believe me? Because we're talking about McCool. The guy's an overgrown Boy Scout. Sure, he's a ladies' man, but he'd never mess with my daughter. Oh, yeah? How do you like your Boy Scout now? Get my guns. All of them. Ooh, I can't wait! No more shooting bums down at the train yard! What? I mean, we're back, baby! How's everyone doing? Johnny, how's the golf game? Has your handicap improved, or are you still a golf apologic? <laughs> Tough room. Is it something I said? What's, uh, what's going on? Uh, see if I ever buy you guys Chinese food again. Cookie, what the hell is this? A scumbag like McCool ain't worth doing time over. So I figured we should get him where it really hurts. I was gonna do that. I was gonna shoot him right in the nuts. Jimmy, why kill someone when you can ruin their life? Death is but a single moment. Misery is forever. You. You. You're good. Where'd you come up with that line? It's a Snake Hammer song. Oh, look. Roman Pervlansky decided to swing by. Jimmy, there's a perfectly innocent explanation for that picture. The one of you grabbing my daughter's keister? This I gotta hear. Teresa was drinking and driving and crashed the SUV in a ditch. You're a real piece of work, you know that? Trying to blame the victim. I'm the victim here. I've been suspended. They took everything. My badge, horse... My catchphrases. You got off easy, scumbag, but not for long. Mark my words, I am gonna destroy you for what you did. <sighs> for Canada! Oh, come on, Daryl! Okay, now what? We give him a wedgie? No, wait, let's pants him. Shut up and let me do this. All right, wise guy. I'm gonna need you to put the old John Hancock on there. I'm afraid I can't do that. Gino, what are you doing? It's nay on the Ames nay, Ockfay. You got a choice. Either your signature or your brains are gonna be on that contract. I always wanted to say that. I am so sorry about this. Shut up! Sign over the rights to the app or get skull humped by a nine, bitch. This is not what I signed up for. This is exactly what you signed up for. Don't go limp on me now. Give me that, Gina. Hey, let go, you dumb motherfucker! Ah, thanks a lot. I didn't even get to save it a moment. You're not welcome in the Queen's Beaver. Hmm. Check out, Herbert. one of McCool stuffing his face with my lasagna. Send it in and say he's one of those guys who pukes after he eats. McCool's Bolivian? 
Are you out of your minds? McCool didn't grope me. He helped me after I drove the car into a ditch. What? Look. I drank a little that night, which is why I called McCool. Oh, crap. You drove our car into a ditch? You're grounded, young lady. I'm already grounded. Well, I'm temporarily ungrounding you so I can reground you. Yay! Wait, what? Teresa, we gotta talk about the real problem here. You drove drunk, crashed your car, and then called a freaking cop? You just pry the plates off, torch the car, and run. I can't believe you thought McCool would do something like this. You're grounded. You're all grounded. We're crucifying a guy for no reason. I gotta go make this right. Hang on, hang on. You mean this colossal screw up here has nothing to do with me? I don't know if I'm happy or lost. <laughs> I'm too young to go to jail. Am I gonna die in there? Will people wanna fight me? Fight ya? No. Fight over ya? Yeah. Come on, let's chop them off, put them in quicklime, and get the hell out of here. We've snuffed out a life. We have to turn ourselves in. He's smoking. Yes, he was a handsome man, but that has nothing to do with... No, you dope. He's smoking. He's a freaking robot. Of course. We Corp is at the forefront of autobotics research. Whew, at least we're only guilty of robicide, not murder. Congratulations. You just sucked the last bit of fun out of this caper. Uh, oh, Jesus, Jesus, look at him. I know. Lucky bastard. Daytime it. TV, Real. junk food, and a sweet really tracksuit. It's all that. my dreams come true. It's pretty much your life already. Is that so? Do you see me in a track so, Jimmy? Do you? Hey, straight! Jimmy! Good to see you. Is that Cheech? You old bag of screws, how are you? Can I have some chips? Ha! Good old Cheech. Always with the chips. McCool, what are you doing eating all that crap? I'm eating my feelings, Jimmy. And they're delicious! <laughs> Listen, about all that stuff in the papers, I had it all sorted out. They're printing retractions as we speak. Really? Yeah. I talked to your boss and explained the mix-up. You'll be reinstated by the end of the week. That's wonderful news, Jimmy. Just wonderful. So, if there's anything else I can do, name it. I mean it. Anything. Um, let me think if there's anything, uh... Oh, yes. Maybe you could get the hell out of my house and my life forever, you son of a bitch! Uh... On second thought, I like not being the fuck up every week. <laughs> You ruined my life, Jimmy. But then I fixed it, so we're good. That's not the point. After all we've been through, couldn't you at least give me the benefit of the doubt? I never understood how doubt is a benefit. McCool, you know how I am. I shoot first, aim later. Well, thanks to you, I'll be forever known as the Groping Mountie. Well, you shouldn't have gone behind my back about Teresa's accident. If I ratted to you, she would never have trusted me again. Well, now I don't trust you. After the Jolly Rogering you gave me in the press, I don't trust you either. Yeah, well, screw you, McCool. Screw you, Jimmy. All right, <laughs> cut it out, you idiots. I can't stand listening to you hurting each other like this. You've been friends for a long time now. Arguing ain't gonna settle nothing. You two need to fight. Mm. Okay, can we get out of here? You still gotta get what's yours, Petey. Let's rob the joint. Where are these clowns going? I wonder if Weethin ever makes those robots have sex with each other. Now I know why you take the clothes off your action figures. Now get your head in the game! Maybe I can program one of them to sign back the rights to my Calligramma later. Name still needs work. Way to think big, dumbass. Hack them to sign over the whole empire. That's not possible. You may know more about criminal enterprises, but when it comes to technology, I am the master. More like master beta to robot porn. I made one little joke. I read your blog, Android Lover 98. God. This is so creepy. Turn them off. Give me a second. 
That should do it. If we die, Petey, I just want you to know I never liked you. Fight! 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 You sure you won't be breaking some RCMP rule? Uh, yes, uh, now that you mention it, we have to call this off. My hands are tied, Jimmy. You don't get reinstated until next week. Now go ahead, dance, boys. Damn. If we are going to do this, we will abide by Queensbury rules. Nuh-uh. Brooklyn rules are nothing. What are Brooklyn rules? There are no rules. But that's a rule. What? Don't you see? No rules is a rule in and of itself. I never thought of it that way. It's the exception paradox. It's quite fascinating, really, because... Would you two just fight already? Fight! 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 fight. All right, let's do this. Here we go. This is it. I can't believe it's come to this. Me neither. You really hurt me, Jimmy. And you hurt me. Will somebody please hurt someone? It ain't nice finding out your own daughter calls someone else when she's in trouble. She's supposed to call family. I thought, in a way, I was family. But I'm her father! I may not be the best father, but if my kids are in trouble, I want to be the one to save the day. Hello? Dad, help! Gina and I are cornered by a legion of bloodthirsty robots! It's for you. Step away from those children, you robotic abominations! Prepare to have that finger snapped off and inserted into whichever orifice serves as your rectum. Nice one. Thank you. like that one Michael Bay movie. Which one? The terrible one. He ain't never made a terrible one, you dick. Jimmy, I'll distract the robots. You take Gina and Petey to safety. Uh, you take the kids, McCool. They stand a better chance with you. Petey, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. Hey, Robo Jerks! What are you, nuts? Trust me, Jimmy. In case you didn't notice, I kind of got trust issues. I know, but you can trust me, Jimmy. Now jump! <laughs> That's for thinking I would ever grope your daughter. Ugh. That was a fucking waste of time. Weakton still owns Petey's app. There goes my 80%. Hey, we never agreed to keep talking. It'll be 90. That app's dead anyway. Now there's one that lies about how many calories you're eating. What are calories, anyway? Is that some kind of food? Well, Jimmy, I assume after I beat off all those robots, there's no hard feelings. No, sir. And to show you we're square, I want you to be the first to sign my cast. It would be an honor. What about you, McCool? Any hard feelings? Be honest. Hard feelings? No, none at all. <laughs> <laughs> what, did he write something cute? Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? I'm the FBI informant and shell of a man formerly known as Jimmy Falcone. One thing I don't miss about the old life is how nobody did nothing without an interior motive. Oh, Frankie brought cake. Really? What's the occasion? What? I need an occasion to do something nice? 
Hmm? Kill my brother-in-law? Before or after the sugar high, you lazy bastard? Thanks for helping me move, Joe. No problem. Just help me get these on the trek. And it didn't matter how small the favor. They always expected something in return. Really, Joe? You moved like one box. Thanks for driving us to the airport, Bruno. Here, swallow these. You'll need a laxative when you land. Your brother-in-law says, hey. <coughs> I'm gonna need that laxative. Here in the great bland north, people are nice for no reason at all. It gives me the creeps. I still haven't figured out their angle, but if you think I'll ever get used to Canadian polititude, you can... <laughs> came out. Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it! Oh, forget about it! And the answer to what sexual position are you is... Missionary? <coughs> Stupid online quiz. I thought for sure I'd get Belgian wishbone. That was there when I got here. And I need a new computer. No problem, Jimmy. So last night I was at home thinking about you. Long and hard. <laughs> it occurred to me what a breath of fresh air you've been to this office. And I wanted to show my appreciation. So, what do you want? Nothing, Jimmy. Want me to whack somebody? Oh, gosh, no. Move some merchandise? Not at all. Then what is it? It's just a cake, Jimmy. I also wanted to give you a hug. But provincial guidelines forbid it. So I got you a hug mug instead. I don't know what to say. I'm... I'm very confused. Oh, look, your uncle is here. Hey, Slugger. <laughs> look at you. <laughs> I love this kid. What a face. Now get out of here, champ. Oh. Who's that schmuck? What are you doing here, Cheech? My printer's on the fritz. Paper jam? Nah, I shot it. No one tells Cheech Falcone to load cyan cartridge. I gotta print some pictures of cats asking for cheeseburgers. No, you don't. How else am I supposed to share them with my friends? Get with the future, Jimmy. A, you're not stealing my printer. B, you got no friends. And C, get the f out of my office. You didn't say there was gonna be a test. I'm out of here. Vagina tourism. Yo, this thing prints in color, right? <laughs> God damn it! What did I say? You printer stealing mother f I had to rip your f***ing head off and shove it straight up your f***ing wazoo! Okay, Jimmy, thanks. Uh, Jimmy, we should talk about that anger right after I change my pants. Sorry I had to knock with my boot. You can knock boots here anytime, McCool. It appears Gina somehow got a hold of my, uh... Handcuffs, and I need the keys? Well, looky here. Our big Mounties in handcuffs. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder if he's ticklish. Will you stop? <laughs> oh, this is highly irregular. <laughs> Ladies, stop. <laughs> you want those keys? You're gonna have to give us something, McCool. Yeah, dance! Certainly not. <laughs> For crying out loud. Here, let him go. You're taking all the fun out of illegal confinement. Gina Madonna Falcone, you're confined to your room for the rest of the day for this little stunt. <laughs> I could do that standing on my head. That's gonna give you a bald spot. I'm not actually standing on my head, genius. Cookie, have you ever thought of enrolling Gina in the Scared Straight program? Is that when hardened criminals yell and intimidate kids? Because that's dinner at our house. Early prevention is crucial for wayward youth. In my spare time, I volunteer with at-risk children who... Yeah, yeah, Scared Straight, you're a saint. I get it. Now, what are you going to give me for these keys? I'm confused, Toby. You never get mad. What do you know about anger management? <laughs> oh, Jimmy. 
I'm angry in ways that defy logic and international convention. But I manage my anger issues. I don't got angry issues. My uncle was just driving me nuts. Can I go? You can't blame family for pushing your buttons. That's called deflecting. Guess who's getting a gold star? Boop! You try living with a nut job like Cheech. He doesn't just push buttons, he craps on them and doesn't flush. I have a family member who's hard to deal with, Jimmy. Why don't you come to my house for dinner and see how I deal with my hard member? Oh, can I come too? Any more questions? Why do I have to go to prison? You got your damn keys back, didn't you? Yes, but I had to promise your mother a summer of yard work in my Daisy Dukes. In any case, this is the intake where they check convicts for contraband. You missed a few things. Gord Downey's impenetrable lyrics! What do you need with all these weapons? How else am I supposed to make someone my bitch? What was that for? She was reaching for the rubber gloves! I know what that means! All right, now, take me to jail. Where you going? Out for dinner. Great. I'll get my coat. Keep your coat. I'm going alone. But I'm starving. There's never any food around here. Aw, oh, leftovers again. <sighs> what are you gonna do? I'm here now. All right, fine. But be on your best behavior. That's my boss's house. Church rules, okay? Right. The pants stay on. I know Cheech wasn't invited, but he tagged along anyhow. See what I mean about this guy? This is why you're here. To see how I deal with my own Uncle Cheech. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Good one. Who are these dicks? <clears throat> uh, this is Jimmy and his Uncle Cheech. Guys, this is my mom, Greta. Hey, jerks. Check this out. <laughs> Come on, how about now? What I have for lunch? Guess I'll get dinner on the table. Oh, my thong's chafing. I'll be right back. Jesus, what a monster. Toby didn't even flinch. That's impressive. No, Jimmy, that's impressive. An ugly statue of a goose? That ugly statue is the Gibraltar goose. It's worth a fortune. People have been cutting each other's throats to get their hands on it forever. I had it once, but it slipped through my fingers. I killed my best friend, double-crossed my mother, and betrayed the woman I love. But I finally got you. This time, Coney Island. Oh, roller coaster! I tried to get it back, but I was out of subway tokens. This here goose is the stuff dreams are made out of, Jimmy. Well, don't get any ideas about stealing it. What's eating you? Toby's trying to help me. You're not robbing him. Rob him? I don't even know who he is. <clears throat> Give me the, the hand. Let go of the... I said hands off! Jimmy, stop abusing Uncle Cheech. This is not how you deal with anger. It's hummus, for Christ's sake. I had hummus. The barista gave me cinnamon sprinkles instead of chocolate. I spoke very sharply to her manager. <laughs> I'm a monster! I just want to cut myself over and over and... Hold that thought, Agnes. I want to focus on someone who really <laughs> needs help. Jimmy, is there anything you'd like to talk about? Why, yes, there is. I move that these meetings be catered. Someone's deflecting again. What was it Cheech did last night that made you wanna, what was it, skull bang him straight to hell? Whatever he did, <sighs> I have learned that I can't be responsible for his behaviors, only for mine own. Question for the group, who's getting a gold star today? Not Agnes, I'll goddamn tell you that. Boop. And speaking of Cheech, did you know he asked my mom out on a date? And she said, fuck yes, end quote. Isn't that great, Jimmy? We'll practically be brothers. Call off the date, Cheech. No can do. 
I really like this broad. Give me a break. You're just using her. Keep your hands off that freaking goose, capiche? You got it all wrong, Jimbo. I want to woo this dame, show her a good time, make her feel good. Then rob her blind? Nah. Bang her in the back seat of the car, in her butt. Oh, and I'm borrowing the SUV. <laughs> Think you're tough? I eat tough for breakfast. Sometimes a smoothie. I'm doing 10 years for robbery. Got caught because my tank was empty. Worst part is, I was robbing a gas station. Isn't it ironic? Get out of my head, Alanis! What a mook. What you say to me? You're a mook, a gaffon, a stronze. Don't you speak English? Robbing a gas station? Get some fucking class. Banks are where it's at. You strap a bomb to your chest and pretend you're a victim. Empty the vault, or they splatter me all over this joint. You with me so far? Then hand off the money to the accomplice while the cops are busy with the bomb on your chest. <gasps> you give the fuzz a bogus description of the robbers so they don't know who the hell they're looking for. Then meet up with your friend, get the cash, and stick a knife in his back. Right, McCool? Sweet, blessed monarchy. Yo! This advice ain't free. Give me all your cigarettes. <clears throat> oh, Jimmy, this is so romantic. I can't remember the last time you wined and dined me. Let's say we sneak into the bathroom for a little appetizer. <laughs> sure, get an appetizer. Who gives a shit? Are you even listening to me? Why do you keep looking over there? <sighs> oh, God! You brought me here just so you could watch Cheech? So what? I can't sit by myself like some pathetic loser. Hey! Ah! Oh, where you going? You're spying on your elderly uncle while he's on a date. You got some serious problems, Jimmy. Who's pathetic now? Still you. Yeah. Uh, he's giving her the old Belgian wishbone. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ooh, that's nasty. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Moussaka! Oh. Oh. You hear that, Toby? He got it on the first try. Who's Toby? <laughs> oh. What's your game here, Cheech? Ha! I could ask you the same thing. Toby! I can explain. No need, Jimmy. You're under a lot of strain coping with your feelings towards your uncle. Not to mention the ridiculous pressures at work. Actually works pretty easy. Oh, you're such a trooper. That's why you deserve that cake. Toby, listen. Cheech is going to rob your mother. Too late, Jimmy. He already stole her heart and some change from the bedside table. But don't worry. We're going to get you the help you need. My name is Jimmy McDougal and... Uh... Jimmy? <sighs> My name is Jimmy McDougal, and I am a peeping Tom. Uh, that's my seat. Finally, some action around here. But I can sit somewhere else if you're already eating. Oh, look, you are, aren't you? Sorry, I'll just go. <laughs> <laughs> Riot before. Gina, hit the floor. I will come and get you. Don't bother. I'm just starting to have fun. But you're in danger. Ha! McCool! I am the danger. Ah! <laughs> All right, Cheech. How are you gonna steal the goose if it's already stole? Stolen. Damn it. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Jimmy? <gasps> Are you spying on Cheech and my mother again? What? No, no, no not at all. Uh, I think maybe you need another session at Peeping Tom's Anonymous. You got it all wrong. I'm just trying to stop Cheech from robbing your mother. Look, let me show you. God, no! I don't want to see it! Ah, crap, it's stuck. Jimmy, please, don't show it to me. It's very inappropriate. Come on, baby, come on. Here it comes, right there. Right there. <laughs> For the love of God, right Jimmy! There. Stop masturbating in front of me! Right there! Peking <laughs> Duck. Nailed it! Why are we having
even a stapler safety meeting. Sounds made up and stupid. You know what they say. An ounce of prevention is worth 0.4 kilograms of cure. <laughs> oh, I can't lie to you, Jimmy. But you're gonna thank me after this. After what? Your intervention! Oh, Jesus Christ. These people are here because they love you. Except my mom. She's here because her finger's stuck in Cheech's zipper. I was giving him a diddle. Everyone has written a letter about how your problem has affected them. All we ask is that you hear us out. Yeah, come on, Jimmy. You're tearing this family apart or something. Don't you start with me, Cheech. Will you listen to what the people who love you have to say, Jimmy? You bet your ass he will. Wait a sec. Where's Gina? McCool took her to prison. That's about the only thing that makes any sense right now. All right. Cookie, you're first. <sighs> Sorry. This is hard for me. <clears throat> okay. Dear Jimmy, you owe me a dinner! Love, Cook. That was beautiful. Sometimes we have to listen to what isn't being said, Jimmy. Can I listen from the bar down the street? Okay, who's next? Dear Jimmy, you know when you got a whiz at night, but you don't want to turn the lights on because it hurts your eyes? Well, what if you put lights around the toilet seat? So, Cheech, what the hell are you doing? I'm reading my invention letter. Okay, Teresa? I didn't know we were reading these out loud. Be brave. This is a safe place. Sad face, angry face, thumbs down, dark clouds, Japanese goblin! What are you talking about? I wrote my letter in emojis. That is so dumb face. Dear Father, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to write. You are more important to me than boring. You make me want to be a better man, you know that? All right, that is it. But I'm not finished my- Katie, I'm talking here. You want to know what my problem is? I'll tell you. The only reason Cheech is going out with Greta is so he can steal her goose. Don't you mean gobble her goose? Ew, I just pictured it. It's the Gibraltar goose. It's this famous old statue that's worth a lot of money. <gasps> Ain't that right, Cheech? You have always been my rock. Jimmy, you of all people should know how hard I've tried, how long I've searched for the one thing that has deluded me all these years. See? He's after the goose. I'm after love. And now that I finally got it, you want to take it away from me. My port in the storm. But now I think you owe Uncle Cheech an apology. I got Cheech's apology right here. I'm not the one with the problem. It's you people. You're all crazy. Call me when you're having a real stapler safety meeting. Ever since I was a little boy, I long for... I think that went well, don't you, Uncle Cheech? Have we met? <laughs> Canadian prisons are the kindest in the world. Why are they doing this? Stop, Stop rioting, rioting this, this instant. instant! Screw you! Someone's coming out with demands! I say this at the risk of being unsportsmanlike, but as soon as the bastard shows himself, make an example of him. Cancel that order! Stand down, stand down! Gilbert, lower the shotgun! Gina, thank goodness you're all right. Those cowards sending a child to do their dirty work. You want to hear the demands or what? Yes, but first, let's get you to safety. Never mind that. There's only one demand, McCool. Don't ever try to scare me straight again. That's why they're rioting? Yeah, they do whatever I tell them. Now, do we got a deal or what? Yes, fine, but how? All right, Jagoffs! Back to your cells! No one mentions this at the staff meeting, understood? I'm looking at you, Gilbert! Drift in a sea of sorrow, and I want to. What's going on here? Oh, come on! See? I caught him red handed. Cheech is trying to steal the goose. In fact, they all are! If I wasn't so damn mad, I'd be pretty proud right now. For the last time, I ain't here to steal no goose. I'm here for love. Freda, I want to say, Smith, will you make me the happiest man in vagina and become my wife? Oh, Cheech, yes! I can't wait for you, 
me and Toby to start our new life together. Who's Toby? I'm Toby! Me! Me! How can you not know that by now? I co-signed your small business loan! I gave you a bath! I helped you design the toilet light! Oh, nice to meet you. I am Toby! Nice to meet you! I'm Toby! Toby! Got that? My name is Toby! T-O-B-Y! Toby! O-H-E double hockey sticks! What am I get at? <laughs> You never mentioned you had a kid. I was young. I needed money. But no one would buy the baby off me. Yo, back off. I can't be in a relationship without trust. I don't suppose you learned anything from this experience? Just how to turn a toothbrush into a knife and make a bomb out of coffee creamers. What am I going to do with you, Gina? I don't know, but after this debacle, I'm gonna have your badge. Because I placed you, a minor, inside a prison among hardened criminals and a riot broke out? No, because I lifted it just now while you were yakking. That's your cue to hop on your horse and yell something stupid, hotshot. <sighs> What's this for? I brung you a cake. I gotta have a reason. Look inside. I knew it! You were gonna steal it the whole time. Not at all. But that bitch lied to me. You lie to me, I steal your goose. General principles. So? What's it worth? Nothing. It's a Chinese knockoff. Hi, Chief. <laughs> it's Tracy, right? La 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 how you doing? Actually, who cares? Shut up and let me talk. To me, crime is like any other business, except with more killing and less resumes. Yet both use an equal amount of paper clips. It don't matter if you're a banker or a good fella. You still gotta climb the corporate ladder. Jimmy, give me a ride to the track. I'm feeling lucky. Ah! And can I borrow your pants? Unless you're Cheech. He always had a different career philosophy. I'm telling you, Jimmy, the key to success is aiming for the middle. You mean like a gut shot? I mean your career. If you're on the bottom, you're always going to get stepped on. Ain't that right, Mario? Did you have to wear cleats? I can't find my regular face stepping shoes. Anyhow, if you aim for the top, you got a long way to fall. Like that time I tried doing it on a Ferris wheel? That was a fall from Grace. <laughs> Remember Grace, Jimmy? With the cans? Later, I saw what Cheech meant. Ah! How'd it go? See? Gambini'd still be alive if he just aimed a little lower in life. Or if Jimmy aimed for the wall instead of the window. You do understand, Mr. Middleman, that you're the reason I had to kill him. Understanding is for overachievers. Well, you aimed us to the middle of nowhere, you stinking mook! <laughs> you stupid! If you think I'd kill Gambini all over again to save Cheech's half-assed ass, <laughs> forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Only four weeks left of summer break. You can do this, Cookie. You can totally do this. Yo, Ma, we're out of pork rinds. So what? Get up off your butts and go buy some more. But we want to find out if this broad says yes to the dress. Y'all got anything more see-through? What a day. I'm running out of ways to look busy at work. Nice example, Jimmy. No wonder the kids laze around all day. Take it easy. Lazing around is what summer break is for. Now, how about some pork rinds for Daddy? We ate them all. You kids bum around all day on my sofa, watching my TV, eating my pork rinds, and you can't even bother to tell your mother to go and buy more? That's it! 
You're all getting summer jobs! Hey, where'd they go? You! Get your resume together! <laughs> I can't get a job. I've been fired from everyone I've ever had. Welcome to the meat pit. Before you order, here's a video of where your hamburger came from. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Would you care for fries with your massacre? The only place I'm fit to work is in a science lab, or perhaps some sort of theoretical think tank. So, if you'll excuse me. Not so fast. You're coming with me, Steve No Jobs. Congratulations, Petey. You had the best and only application in our summer hiring spree. Agnes, bring Nemo around. You're going to be pointing out all the exciting Regina landmarks as our summer tour bus barker. Go put all them acting classes to work, kid. Teresa took the acting classes. Don't you know me at all? Whoopee! Summer's officially begun. You're a tour buff, McCool? Ah, uh, there's nothing like being regaled with Regina's tantalizing history in an open-top bus whilst the wind tickles your scalp. Welcome to showbiz, Petey. No stop, so here's a travel mug to pee in. <laughs> If you look to your left, you'll see one of Regina's most, um, prestigious grain elevators. Imagine the grain that's been elevated here. And this one is... red. Sexy. And now we will end with a dip in Regina's historical municipal outdoor pool. <laughs> that's the whole tour? Two grain elevators in a swimming pool? Look, everyone, there's a jellyfish in the pool. No, that's a tampon. So, how was the job hunt? Oh, it was, uh, brutal. Yeah, yeah, we had to fill out applications in, like, triplication. <laughs> Do I smell fake butter topping? Are those popcorn crumbs? Aha! Movie tickets. You weren't out looking for jobs. You were out seeing Paranormal Activity 10, same shit, different house. It was a scary documentary. That wasn't real, Teresa. You're such a sucker. Oh, there's tons of suckers out there who want to connect with the spirit world. Uh, here we go. Back in my Madam Scamia days, I fleeced marks every which way from Sunday. Just I got an idea how we can make money off of that paranormal crap. Ew, no way I'm touching ghost poo. How are you not in summer school right now? I slip my homework in with Petey's. He does it without even noticing. Does anyone know how many pounds of grain one of these elevators can hold? Anyone? Would you keep it down? Thank you, sir. He was talking to you. Oh. I could say just about anything and it wouldn't matter. This park on your right is where a real Bigfoot was seen drunk, snacking on a number of small dogs. And uh, this wheat field is known as Area 55 huh? because a UFO crashed here back in the 50s. The aliens were buried, and the next year, the crop was blue. Next up, we're heading to Regina's most deadly deciduous, otherwise known as the Murder Tree. Ooh, can we have a picnic there? Sure, but it might make a picnic of you. <gasps> Sorry, folks, this tour is full, but there will be another one tomorrow. Wowzers, Petey's really turned the tour around. People actually care what my know-it-all kid has to say? We can finally crack open the I Heart Regina shirts and wear them without people laughing at us. Mademoiselle Konya, at your service. Oh, thank God. It started yesterday, just after your pamphlet conveniently appeared in our mailbox. Please, help us. Silence! Spirits, announce yourselves. The spirit is really pissed about something you did in your past. Oh, God. Is this about the elderly man I ran over in college and blamed on my boyfriend who then committed suicide in prison? Uh, yes. And it'll be 300 bucks to bust this ghost. Double it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I meant 600. <laughs> 
great news, everyone. This has all been a terrible dream. Regina tourism numbers are through the roof thanks to the initiative of one particular employee. Premier O'Shea has commissioned yours truly to announce a promotion for the aforementioned go-getter. I owe it all to the Executive Success Self-Awareness Rodeo at Lake Waskasu. Introducing the new staff supervisor of Regina Tourism, Petey McDougal! Huh? Petey? I knew I should have signed up for the self-esteem booster derby! Stupid Toby! Stupid, stupid, stupid! Now that you're running the office, Petey, you may want some help running the tours. Boo! Someone with a deep passion for Regina history and 96 vacation days saved up. Hint, hint. No, no! I'm still running the tours. I wouldn't want you exposing my lies. I mean, wasting your time. You might be my boss, but you're not the boss of me. <laughs> oh, look! It's time for me to avoid confrontation. <laughs> Agnes, you ready for another bus tour? Look at you! Rising to the top of Regina tourism. For once, my pride in you outweighs my shame. Thanks, but the other employees seem a bit disgruntled. Could you smooth things over for me? Sure thing. And you know what's great about you being my boss? I don't have to call in sick no more. I can just shout from the couch. <laughs> You're funny. Thanks, Pop. Who's joking? Yo, Tobes, I know my family taking over the business comes as a shock. Very perceptive. Percepticon. Give the kid a chance, will ya? You were once the guy on top. It's not his fault you blew it. Well, now that I'm not the boss anymore, I guess I can finally let my hair down. Schnapps, it's Peach. To Petey. Whatever. Look at all this money. I can finally buy myself a unicorn. Those things are extremely rare. You ain't buying nothing. We gotta keep Ma in the dark about this or she'll try and horn in. So keep your yap shut. I won't say nothing, as long as you cut me in. The only thing I'll be cutting is your tongue out. Oh, cookie. All right, fine, but you better pull your weight. I'm already carrying one useless moron on this caper. Yeah! Oh, cookie. I said all right, what are you doing? Nothing. It's time for my bed. Petey! We were just talking about your best son, who's my boss I ever had. <laughs> Is this what you meant by getting Toby on my side? You're drunk! You're drunk! <laughs> <laughs> it smells like peaches, beans, and insubordination in here. Knock, knock. Who's there? How? <laughs> I'm writing you both up for drinking on the job. That's an Article 48. And breaking wind in front of a superior. That is a 22. We were just toasting to celebrate your promotion. Tell it to the naughty corner, McDougal. I ain't sitting in no naughty corner. And since when do we have a naughty corner? Shut it. Things better change around here or the staff will. <sighs> I... Agnes, I just article 26 in your purse. I'm sorry, Pop, but I had to make an example of someone. You humiliated me in front of everybody. Go to your room. You're grounded. You can't ground me. I'm your boss. At work, you are the boss. At home, I'm the boss. Oh, yeah? Well, just you wait till we get to work tomorrow. Yeah? You just wait till we get home from work tomorrow! Which will be around midnight, because you'll be working late. Boost. I'm already paying for myself. 
You can make scarier noises than that. You sound like Pop putting on his shoes. I'm stuck. Get me out of here. Go on. Bring back our little butter bowl. <laughs> Easy. You gotta pull my arm off. This is ruining my hair. <clears throat> what the hell are you doing in here? I got scared out there alone. I hear this house is haunted. Just back out so we can start the scam. <clears throat> I'm stuck! Nice. <laughs> I'm calling the psychic! Happy birthday, former subordinate! Jesus! That thing's more fireball than cake! How old are you? What's this? An office birthday party? Why wasn't I invited? I like cake. I like singing. You know what? Regina tourism includes everyone in birthday celebrations. Everyone or no one. <laughs> I fucking hate that guy. I gotta live with him. That must be about as fun as a chapped ass on a long bike ride. Let me tell you something about Boss Man. He once created an app named Roxy to call his phone every day so people would think he had a girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Mr. Big Shot's too good for blow-up dolls. And get this, he still sleeps with plastic sheets. <laughs> I stopped wetting the bed in my 20s. Oh, it gets better. Whenever he watches scary movies, he has to sleep in our bed. <laughs> All right, McDougal, I've had it with your attitude. You're fired! What? Oh, hey, Roxy. Now's not a good time. Can I call you back, babe? <laughs> <laughs> We're out of pork rinds. So go to the store and get some. But I want to see if she says yes to the dress. The dad's a cheapo, and I think he's about to have a stroke. Huh? There he goes. What a day. Someone pooped in my desk. Guess I owe Toby five bucks. Can you turn on the news, please? And get your feet off the couch. But my big, fat Alaskan gypsy lumberjack wedding is on next. When you work all day, you can watch whatever moronic show you want. That's not fair! Petey, for Christ's sake, just hire your father back! Why would I hire a guy who thinks the photocopier is an ass camera? Yeah, well, I wouldn't go back even if you paid me. And by the way, I'm still getting paid. Of course you are. It's a Canadian government job. How do you drink this stuff? Where's Mademoiselle Kanya? I left her a message hours ago. I'm calling again. I told you we shouldn't have left our phones in the car. The last thing we need is you texting some meathead boy toy while we're working. Don't be stupid. Big Mike can't read. Ah, oh, I'm starving. Help! Get us out of here! Shut up! Why should he? Aside from losing a little weight, there's no plus side to being trapped in here. have so much character. If these walls could talk... Well, they're talking now, Dan! Happy! You hear that? <clears throat> you had your freaking phone the whole time? I was saving the battery for selfies. Quick, the battery's dying. Who are you calling? I'm calling Ma to come and get us. Crook, before you do anything, bring us a jumbo cheese and answer me. Agnes, I need us to pull together as a team, okay? There is no I in team. But you can't spell me with part of it and ta with the other part. Great news, Petey. Premier O'Shea wants the tours bumped up to 12 a day. What? I suppose this means a few Regina After Dark tours. Sounds positively tantalizing. For Canada! We're lusting over a moonlit grain elevator is about to become a thing! Is he kidding? You guys are really gonna have to pull up your socks. Wait! Where are you going? To the liquor store to pull up her socks, you dick! Jeez, kid, you look terrible. Don't start. I'm not in the mood. Look, I'm not saying this is a disgruntled former employee that you totally screwed over. 
I'm saying this as you pop. You gotta quit. I can't. I just can't. Sure you can. You walk into your own office, you drop a deuce on the desk, and you strut out like a man. What's so hot about- Because I lied! I made up fake Regina history so the tour would be more exciting. You bullcrap the whole thing? I'm impressed. If my lies are exposed, I'll be a laughing stock. I'm just gonna have to run the tour for the rest of my life. You're being a little dramatic. I'm glad to see them acting lessons paid off. That was Teresa! <sighs> Goodbye Ivy League PhD scholarship, hello basement apartment, and TV dinners in my dirty underwear. That reminds me, where's Cheech? Look, I'm proud of you, son. You rose to the top on lies, and you'll do anything to protect the scam. Just like a true Falcone. But... <sighs> oh, poor kid. Seriously, though, where the hell's Cheech? Where the hell's everybody? Ah, oh, yes. The spirits are present, and they are... Stalling! Poor things don't know they crossed over. Probably died because they cut the wrong person out of a job. Can you get rid of them? Yes. But you must leave this place so I have a clear channel with the little shits. I mean spirits. You know, I should leave you three up there to rot for not cutting me in on this. It was them, Cook. I begged. I pleaded. But they wouldn't have you. Nice impression of Pop, you rat. I've been running spirit scams longer than all of you. Fine, sorry. Now get us out of here and we'll give you 30%. 70. 50. Have a nice afterlife. Wait, don't go. 80% we got a deal. Deal. Cheech! Get ready to cross over to the other side! <laughs> in the face. Rumor has it, <gasps> that's where the wheat pirates buried their treasure before sailing back to Alberta. What is it, Pop? Too bad the bus didn't start, huh, son? You're welcome. What are you talking about? I cut the starter cable so you wouldn't have to do the tour. No bus, no tour. Bingo, bango, you're off the hook. I'm driving the bus right now with a bunch of tourists. In fact, I just drove through a red light. Pop, you cut the brake line. Well, I cut something and would appreciate a thank you. I can't stop. I can't stop. <laughs> That's the floor where they shot Titanic. Gordon Lightfoot got to hop it on that bed. That silence full of candy. There's a bunch of zombies in that house. Ooh, zombies. <laughs> Okay, Pop, this is an amphibious bus. I don't know what that means. It's a bus and a boat. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh. You all right, kid? Better than the bus. Ah! Oh, my God! Zombies! <sighs> so hungry. Best tour ever. I suppose the lesson here is that one should never lie to get ahead in a work situation. Nah, the lesson is you should always have a full guy to blame in case you get caught. No, it's that you should never cut your mother out of a good scam. Would you guys shut up? We can't hear the TV. Pick a fucking dress already. They're all the same. This dress is so tight. Can you help me take it off? Oh! <laughs> What the hell are we watching? Say yes, oh God, yes, yes to the dress. I promised myself I wouldn't cry, but it's so beautiful. La 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 the thing about wise guys is we hardly ever told the truth. By hardly ever, I mean mostly never. We lied to everyone. 
cops, judges, our wives, and mostly each other. We lied so much, we didn't even know we were doing it. Yo, Jimmy, these biscotti got almonds in them? Nah, don't worry about it. You need a doctor? No, I'm good. Lying came so easy that the truth was frowned on. Like the time Johnny Forthright came to town. Hey, Jimmy, with that gut, you're begging for a heart attack. Now, there's a reason wise guys never tell the truth. Because who wants to hear that crap? Then Johnny comes along with his mouth, and suddenly I'm so worried about my weight, I had what my doctor called a mild cardiac incident. <laughs> Once I got out of the hospital, I reminded Johnny that the truth hurts. Then I... Did not wipe the sidewalk with his face. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now that I'm in witness protection, I'm still living a lie. Except this one's legit. And you've never looked slimmer. What? Goodfellas ain't the only ones who can lie their freaking asses off. Ho! Oh, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Blue Tiger, you clear? Clear. Take the shot! Take the shot! Who is it? Huh, pizza? Oh, if someone ordered pizza this late, it's their ass! They didn't order pizza. Repeat, did not order pizza. Pull back, send in the robot! <laughs> It's Halloween already? What the f are you supposed to be, kid? Ooh. He didn't take delivery! Go, 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 go! Jimmy McDougal, you've been duly served! Fifteen guys in a freaking toaster to serve a summons? Can't take any chances, sir. Not since last year's potty mouth incident. You Canucks are pussies. Gah! Harsh language alert! Fall back! Run! <laughs> I don't remember getting these tickets. Public urination, drunken disorderly, Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, that's a receipt. Six grand in parking fines? Ooh. Not so fast, Cheech. Did you get these tickets and use my name? Yeah, but don't worry. I burned them all. Remember? The whole garage went up. That was you? Technically, it was the oily rags that I tossed the burning tickets onto. Do you gotta wreck everything you touch? Yeah, like the skylight he tried to put in the bathroom? The fresh air helps me go. Or the ceiling fan he installed last year. <laughs> so I goofed up. It happens. It happens every day with you, you bum! bum, bum. <gasps> Who are you calling a bum? I'm calling you a bum, Cheech. You ruined my old life, and you're mooshing a new one. And you know why? Because you're a screw-up, and you're a bum. And that's the truth of you. Cheech, you okay? <laughs> I'm fine. It'll take more than that to bring old Cheech down. How could they say them things about me? I'm not some kind of moron. I know. I'll pay the tickets. Jimmy will lend me the money. All right, he thinks I'm a bum. <gasps> Maybe they're right. What good am I to anyone? Shut up, I'm trying to think here. Ma, you gotta sign this so I can get vaccinated at school. You can't let them pump Gina full of autism juice. Uh, the link between vaccines and autism has been roundly rejected by the medical community. Ooh, the medical community. What about the community of celebrities who know how to raise perfect kids? 
Yeah, Petey. If they didn't know what they were talking about, they wouldn't be published in the pages of Celebrity Minutia magazine. But they won't let me go to school if I don't get them shots. Then I'll learn you at home. I'm not taking chances with your health. But you'll risk her catching rubella or whooping cough? Oh, uh, don't make up diseases, Petey. Cool! I got you out of school. You're welcome. What you don't get, Brainiac, is when I miss school, I lose business. And when I lose business, I get dark impulses. So you're gonna take care of my business. What's in it for me? I won't break your nose. Throw in my arm, and you got a deal. Wakey, wakey! Canada has plenty of freshly painted substandard housing for people like you. Move along, my downtrodden friend. Just soak me in gas and light a match, Mukul. Mordecai Richler's legacy, Cheech. This isn't about Jimmy's parking tickets, is it? Sure is. Could you pull a little magic act and make them vanish for me? One can't simply vanish parking tickets. One pays them. And if one is so inclined, one pays them in advance. This one guy sounds like a jagoff. Could a jagoff do this? Who? Now do that 6,000 more times. It's a bus token, Cheech. You could always go to City Hall and fight those tickets. It's your right as an honest citizen. Well, citizen. I'll do it. I represented myself in court for littering once. Talked them down to a six-year stretch. Then I'll leave it in your marginally capable hands. For Canada, where we still believe in magic! <sighs> Looks like someone misses Cheech. Me? Miss that bum? Not a chance. Why, did he call? Not that I care. If he called, I tell him to go back to Bumtown or wherever he's been for the last couple of days. Did he call? No. I'm going to bed. You stay here, pretending you don't regret the awful things you said to him. Pop, this is weird. It ruins it if you talk! <laughs> Hey, is your boss around, sweetheart? I gotta talk to him about some tickets. Whoa, well, Lady Mayor. How about we ram a few motions through your council chamber? I was thinking, Your Honor, since I did you a favor, Three by my count. Maybe you could do one for... <gasps> Maron! Oh, sweet lady. She died doing what she loved. Screwing the people. I'm worried. I said some completely accurate things to Cheech that he totally took the right way, and I ain't seen him since. Last I saw, he was filled with vim and vigor, ready to fight those tickets in court. So don't worry, Jimmy. Jimmy! Cheech! Great news! You paid the tickets! No! I'm running for mayor! Rob Ford's big red face! I did not see that coming. And you're sure the mayor was alive during your octogenarian boot knocking? I may be a lot of things, but I ain't no necropelagic. All right, then. It was natural causes. More or less natural. But you running for her job is out of the question. Especially over pocket tickets. It's more than that. I gotta do something with my life before it's too late. So I'm running, McCool. Running like a cokehead's nose. Get ready to catch a serious dose of election fever because the mayor is dead. Oh, that's good copy, Carl. Oh, the candidates throwing their hat into the ring include Premier Mickey O'Shea, who's running on a why-the-hell-not platform, former strip joint manager Pierre Le Chouachois, who's French, <laughs> as if, and area man Cheech McDougal, who promised pizza Fridays every day of the week. What do you think of me now? You were drunk and you didn't finish high school. I think you got a shot. Are you insane? Witness protection rules strictly forbid running for office. So kick me out. When I'm mayor, I'll have a whole police force to protect me. And get me lunch. I get you're excited, but there's no way in hell you can run for mayor. 
All right, then. Strange. Neither of us tried to stop him. I had no confidence in that fan. What's your excuse? Wow, you just say Gina's name and they shower you with money. <gasps> Here, I'll take care of that. I'm the substitution teacher. And I'm a nurse. I bet none of you want to get a big old dangerous needle, do ya? Uh -uh. No. I think I found my calling. Saving the children. Please don't touch me. Why are you here? I skipped work. Me and McCool would take a cheech out to cheer him up. What are you doing? Ma's homeschooling me because I ain't vaccinated. After this, I gotta unload the dishwasher for home ec. Is Cheech ready to go see some strippers? Oh, hello, Gina. Cheech said he was going to the election rally. I guess he meant erection. Election rally? Jimmy, let's go! Gina! Time for gym class! We're playing hang the laundry! Aye. Schwa schwa economic growth, schwa schwa anglophone pigs. What do you think Cheech is up to? God willing, a public withdrawal. Sounds dirty. <gasps> I'm not one for long speeches, so thank you and goodbye. Oh, wait. I forgot the thing. Hang on, watch this. Not tonight, honey. I have a... Oh, I just don't love you anymore. That's marriage for you. But don't worry, pal. I got you covered. Hi, I'm Cheech McDougal. I've been all over this great city. Well, maybe not great. Face it, it's a shithole. Anyway, I've been talking to folks all over Vagina. And while I can't remember any of them conversations, I know what people want. And that's, uh, sex. If you're poor or ugly, which is most of you, sex is hard to come by. But not anymore. Today, I give you the Affordable Orgasm Act. Hey! Don't worry. Under my universal prostitution plan, the government pays for it. In that case, can I have one, too? You bet your ass you can. And on election day, bet your ass on me. I'm Cheech McDougal, and I approve these wars. I know what you're gonna say, but I was on my way to quit when the mailman showed up. Male person, we're in Canada. Nah, I'm pretty sure Gloria's a man. Anyway, he had this bag full of donations for my campaign. The people have spoken, and they want me. You sure you heard him right? For the first time in my life, I'm not screwing up. I'm getting it right. And I owe it all to you. What? You gave me the kick in the pills I needed. You're not just my nephew, Jimbo. You're my best friend. Hey, one more thing, Paisan. Can you tell cheese, this is a hairpiece? Cheese, cheese, cheese. And that is why eating mashed up insects is good for the environment and your complexion. Someone's gonna have a healthy glow tomorrow. <coughs> oh no, you're all getting sick. Thanks a lot, GMOs. Okay. Everyone eat these donkey placentas. They ward off sickness and dark forest fairies. Waldo, make sure to chew. Uh. <laughs> oh! My superiors are threatening to have a beaver chew me a new one. It's a little consolation that I get to choose the beaver. No one back home is gonna mistake that Elvis-looking huggy bear for Cheech Falcone. Besides, there's no way he's gonna win. Yeah, what's the harm in letting him lose? It'll be good for his self-esteem. But the opposing candidates will make mincemeat out of him. Come on, Canuck politicians don't take the gloves off like they do down south, do they? You tell me. This footage provided by the O'Shea for Mayor Committee was filmed at a Cheech McDougal campaign stop. Of course I'm a feminist. My dinner ain't gonna cook itself. 
What the hell's an LGBTQ? Some kind of fucking sandwich? But if I slip one past the goalie, then I'm pro-choice. Hey, are you filming this? Yeah, now the kids can see me do this in one snort. See, McCool? He don't need to quit. His big mouth's gonna mess this up. Public reaction to the Cheech McDougal footage has been swift. I like Cheech. You really know what you're getting with him. Yeah, he speaks his mind. Like, it's confusing, but like, he speaks it. <laughs> it's high time we got our own sandwich. McDougal's numbers have soared, giving him... What is wrong with these people? This video is just the beginning. They're going to dig into Cheech's past, and do you know what they'll find? A lot of dead bodies? A man who, up until a few months ago, did not even exist! Yeah. I have been digging into Cheech McDougal's past. Whoa! I got no idea who you are, but McCool was just talking about you! You come alone. My wife usually helps me, but that's not what you meant. I cannot schwa reveal my schwa schwa identity, schwa. Come on out, schwa schwa. How did you schwa schwa it was me, Monsieur Jimmy? Call it a hunch. I did some digging on Monsieur Cheech. What I found was most schwa schwa. <laughs> Cheech forgot to sign his nomination papers. Even if he wins, he cannot be mayor, Schwa. His campaign is as illegitimate as my Schwa Schwa children. <laughs> Can you imagine? He had it in his grasp, and he schwa it up. <laughs> so you're blackmailing us? Eh, hey, mais non, no, I like you guys. I give Monsieur Cheech the Schwa to save himself from the suicide-inducing embarrassment of this blunder. Nice of you. Thanks. If it were me, I would light myself on fire and schwa in front of a train. <laughs> yeah, I get it. He's a dope. Then no one would have to schwa upon my corpse and say, here lies the stupidest schwa on earth. Okay, enough. Uh, so, uh, can I schwa on your vote next Tuesday? Now that Cheech is ineligible to run, we're in the clear, Jimmy. Why the frown? Because I still got to break the news to the guy. So what? It's his own fault. Exactly. I called him a bum and a screw-up, and it almost destroyed him. If I tell him he screwed this up, I don't know what he'll do. Hopefully kill himself. In the old life, you were never supposed to truth someone. What if I truth all you guys? What if I told Petey sometimes I want to punch him in the face for being such a goofy little know-it-all? Or if I let McCool know I think his horse has more personality than he does? Suppose I told Gina here that Therese is actually my favorite. Or if I told Cookie... Watch it! <laughs> I gotta let Cheech down easy. Make him think quitting is his idea. This is gonna be harder than sitting through a Canadian movie. At least at the end, I'll know what happened. But depressing, confusing cinema no one cares for is our national heritage. So watch out for Big Palma. They want us to waste money on medicine and cheese when we should really be using it to make sure blockbuster movies have solid opening weekends. <gasps> Run, Big Palma! I didn't teach you, kids. You taught me. Hey, Jimmy, you want a lucky rabbit's foot for election day? Nah, I'm good. So, you gonna pack your bags? What for? Come next week, we're all moving to the mayor's mansion. Hey, bring a chainsaw. That place needs more skylights. Pack your bags. Pack your bags. Pack your bags. bags. Hey, actually, pal, we are moving. Now that you're gonna be mayor, McCool's relocating us. Uh, I don't think they'll let me be mayor from some other town. No, you're staying here. And I can't even tell you where we're going because you're not in witness protection no more. Anyhow, I came to say goodbye. You're gonna make the best mayor this town has ever seen. And from what I hear, the youngest. You're leaving? I'll never see you, Cookie, Teresa, Gina, or what's-his-face again? Yeah, sorry. But I got everyone rabbit's foots. Chase! 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 Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate it. Okay, shut up. Seriously, shut the fuck up. 
I can't do this. Being mayor means I lose my family, so I'm out. Aw, he's a family man. Besides, all I'm gonna do is fleece the city dry, then burn the joint down for the insurance. But they'll still be free prostitutes, right? Yeah, for me. Don't you get it? Just cause you like me is no reason to vote for me. I got no idea what I'm doing. Outside of robbing you assholes blind. <gasps> Finally, an honest politician. Chance, chance, chance! It's like chance, talking to chance, a wall. Chance, all right, chance, that's it. Chance, I gotta break all of your stuff. Come here, you! <laughs> oh, you want one? All right, stop smiling. Ooh. Hey, buddy, get out of the way. I'm trying to hit your wife. <laughs> They just kept cheering for me, even when I had a handicapped kid in a headlock. No offense, but voters are stupid. Hey, the election results are in. Pierre Le Chua Chua narrowly edged out Mickey O'Shea to become the next mayor of Regina. That crazy Puerto Rican wants to keep universal prostitution alive. I gotta get a taste. I wrote that legislation. I'm sorry I truthed you, Cheech. It's okay. Just do me a favor and we're even. Help me pry this rug off. I stuck it on with hot glue. <gasps> Yo, Airhead, you got my money? No, but I have blisters on my tongue and I think I pooped a kidney. That's it! I don't care what Hollywood says, we're getting our shots! Kids, roll up your sleeves. McCool, drop your pants. But I have all my shots. I said drop them. La 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 Saskatchewan, la 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 now, gangstering wasn't exactly your safest line of work. Uh, got the twos? Go sleep with the fish. But that's exactly what I wanted. I live danger. I breathe danger. Danger was my middle name. I never did forgive Ma for that. Don Gambini, we did as you asked. The charge is set. Pretty soon, poor Bobby is gonna be little Bobby Chunks. But if I may inquire, what exactly did tall Bobby do? He didn't show respect, Jimmy. It always felt like he was looking down at me. You too? I never did like that guy. Good riddance. In exactly ten. Nine. Cheech, when you were under tall Bobby's car, why didn't you set the charge? I did, just like you said. See? You were supposed to leave it under his car! You know, it's a wonder I lasted as long as I did. But just because I'm in witness protection now doesn't mean I don't still face danger. Because if you think minus 55 in January ain't real danger... Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Jimmy, may I speak to you for a moment? Yeah, yeah, one sec. I just gotta beat this lover. Oh! Ha ha ha! All right, this better be good. Human resources can't find your high school diploma on file. I hate to be a bother, but can I get you to send it over again? Tell him to look harder. Actually, I was being polite. Truth is, you still haven't submitted one. So now you need a diploma to sit at a desk and not work all day? Uh-huh. Only the best and brightest for Regina tourism. What if I don't got no diploma? <laughs> You're such a kidder, Jimmy. Only losers don't finish high school. And did those losers beat you up before they dropped out? Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, I don't understand. Why didn't you complete high school? The mob wasn't big on book smarts. I mean, look what they did to Don Poindexter. Allow me to quote Einstein. Ah! So, 
Can you take care of it or not? Well, yes, it would take just a few simple keystrokes to enter a high school diploma into your file. Great, see you later. But I won't do it. Why not? Jimmy, I can't deprive you of this invaluable learning opportunity. Sure you can. Go ahead, deprive me. I was looking for something to give up for Lent anyway. Jimmy, education is the very cornerstone of society. What kind of friend would I be if I took that experience away from you? The kind I don't want to whack in the face with a two-by-four? Oh, how I envy you. Jimmy, you're about to embark on a voyage across the sea of knowledge, a sea peppered with islands of information, archipelagos of insight, and atolls of wisdom. You are one lucky bastard. Right back at you. Minus the lucky part. See? You're already doing math. For Canada, where you don't need to play football to afford college! Great! Look what you made me do! Shut up! You're starting to piss me off, you! Whoa! Ah, oh, jeez. I better put you out of your misery. All right, hold still. I said hold still! It'll be over in a second. There, got it. Stupid goose. Only fat guys drink beer. What do you want, a medal for not dying? Scram! I ain't kidding. Quit following me. Last warning, pal, unless you want an ass full of buckshot. So this diploma you got from the internet wasn't good enough for him? Apparently Harvard's not a high school, and it's spelled with two A's. You learn something new every day. If I don't get them a real diploma, they're gonna give me the X. You know who could have done this for you? Freddy the Forger. One time he made me a fake ID, got me into Vito's bar. Cheech, you were like 50. What did you need a fake ID for? It was ladies' drink free night. Man, I got bummed. Next morning, I woke up in some guy's bed. Boy, was he embarrassed. God, I miss all those guys. Freddy the Forger, Carmine the Counterfeiter, Tony the Tiger Smuggler. The guys you find on Craigslist, they're just not the same. Hey, how come Daddy got to drop out of high school, but you won't let me? You're such a hypocrite. And that's exactly why you're staying in school, young lady. Theresa, it's apples and orange juice. When I was your age, I was on the streets, hustling, doing whatever it took to make a living. So, what you gonna do, Jimmy? I guess I'll just quit and live off the nest egg. Over your dead body? What the hell kind of example is that to set for the kids? I used to kill guys for a living. Setting a good example ain't exactly high on my priorities. Well, now you're a civilian, so act civilized and get a f***ing diploma. Fine, I'll go back to high school. Pop, you can just get a GED. Gina's not here, Petey. If you want to swear, you don't have to spell it. Oh, you are so staying in school. It means general educational diploma. All you have to do is pass an equivalency exam at the community college. That's it? Just pass one test? Uh-huh. I got mine when I was five. I only stay in school for the camaraderie. And how many friends do you have, Petey? 127. Facebook doesn't count. Counting you? Don't you dare count me. Zero. So look, I see you got a lot of wood in this joint. Be a real shame if it were to go up in flames if you catch my drift. Of course, for a fee, I could protect you from that kind of thing, eh? Aren't you adorable? <laughs> now run along, little girl. <laughs> I'll be back for more on Friday. You got some nice moves there, kid. How'd you like to join my crew? So, uh, what do I call you? Honka? Nah, that sounds stupid. How about Beaks? Uh, All right, Beaks it is. Welcome aboard. <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna do it, Jimmy. The studying, lectures, reading. You couldn't pay me enough. On the other hand, it's never too late to learn your ABDs. You've got big dreams. You want fame. Well, fame costs. And right here is where you start paying. Yo, lady, is this the GED class? Room 102 down the hall. Thank you. Pardon Sorry. me. Sorry. Pardon uh, me. Excuse me. Ouch! Sorry. Coming through here. Sorry. Good luck. You're gonna need it. Whoa, you're flexy. <laughs> What's your number? Welcome to High School Equivalency 101. I'm Mr. Russo. Is that gonna be on the test? No. 
Now, I know many of you are going through some life changes. Divorce, midlife crisis, menopause. Don't forget parole. But this is your one chance. Add a second chance. So seize it. Actually, you can take the test as often as you like. I just said that for dramatic effect. Is any of that going to be on the test? No. But since you're so interested in tests, let's start with a practice one. Hey, Teach, you forgot the eyes and mouth on this smiley face. Actually, that's a zero. What? Don't I even get a point for spelling my name right? You didn't. Who the hell's Jimmo? This is going to be harder than I thought. I gotta figure out a way to pass this class. Want to join my study group? Beat it, nerd. Jimmy, it's been 30 years since you were in school. You gotta get used to being a student again. But how? I don't even remember what it was like being a student. <laughs> Probably because I majored in hooky. You'll figure it out. Anyways, listen, this broad in our class, Debbie, lost custody of her kids. And? And they're having a kegger at her place. You coming? F yeah. Ah, uh, it's all coming back to me now. This is just like when I was in high school. There's the snobby prom queen. Uh, no, I don't want a beer. Leave me alone, nerd. The drug pushing preppy. Come on, Cindy. All your peers are doing it. My peers? Well, in that case. And who can forget the slutty girl? Oh. You know what, Cheech? Maybe this high school thing ain't gonna be so bad after all. The second chance. The second chance is. Oh, God, Cindy has no pulse. <laughs> that was awesome! Okay, here's your cut. Don't spend it all in one pond. Cheech, I feel like a teenager again. I'm having the time of my life. Me too. Well, except for this terrible acne. And I keep getting urges to cut myself while masturbating. Just don't use the good knives, okay? You'll wake somebody. Where the hell have you been? No call? Not even a text? I've been worried sick. You could have been lying dead in a ditch for all I know. And I'm this close to putting you there myself. Get off my case. You don't understand. I understand plenty. You're a grown man with a wife and three kids and a job you're going to lose if you don't get serious and get that diploma. I mean, look at this homework. It says find X. And you drew an arrow. Pointing to the X. Well, that's where it is. You're not even trying, Jimmy. All you're doing is partying and fooling around. But... No buts. Now march up those stairs and go to your room, old man. You're grounded. It's not fair! What the hell is this? It's a field trip. You need to sign it. Jimmy, can I see you for a minute? What up, Teach? Can I just say what an amazing time I've been having in this class? No, really, I mean it. Hey, go buy yourself an apple. Jimmy, night school isn't all fun and games, except for recess. You're struggling in class and failing your practice tests. I think you might have a learning disability. Oh! Did you just call me a gimp? No, and I would never use that term. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I am not a gimp! I agree. All you need is some extra help. Oh, yeah? Well, help this! Just to be clear, I do not have erectile dysfunction. Yeah, I got that. Did you see the look on that shopkeeper's face? Ooh, don't hurt me, I have a family. <laughs> what a wuss. 
Ugh. Good night. I love you, Beaks. <laughs> Tell anyone I said that, I'll cut out your liver. I've been expecting your call, Jimmy. Let me guess. You need help with Canadian history, or as we call it, history. While it is a long and noble saga, I wish to start on the day in 1814 when we marched on Washington and burned down your White House. Stop making shit up, McCool. This is serious. Turns out I got a learning disability, so seeing as I'm a moron, I'm gonna need you to fake that diploma for me. That can't be right, Jimmy. You ran a large criminal organization. The numbers running alone would have taken tremendous mental ability, not to mention outsmarting legions of dedicated law enforcement officers. Do you see what I mean? I gotta go back to crime? No! It means there's nothing wrong with your intelligence. Of course, your morals are another story. You're right, I am smart. It's like the time Don Fanucci was leaving Chicago on a train going 80 miles an hour, and Don Palazzo left New York on a train going 50 miles an hour, and I whacked them both. I'm a fucking genius. You mean genius. Whatever. But Jimmy, don't forget, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Perfect, I sweat like a pig. You can do this, Jimmy. Say it. I can do this, Jimmy. <laughs> Fuck! How do you get a minus 2%? Not everyone learns at the same pace. So you're on the slow side, Jimmy. This is the number for the Student Help Center. All you need to do is ask. Hey, I'm Jimmy. I'm slow. I have a learning disability. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, what about your diploma? Screw that! School is for suckers! I hear you. Though I'm really gonna miss Debbie's keggers. And I don't mean her beer parties. <laughs> you dropped out of school? What the hell is wrong with you, Jimmy? All you have to do is ask for a little help. That's it. Why can't you ever do that? Tell me about it. Remember our trip to Hawaii? <laughs> Would you just ask someone? I got it! You better get that diploma, Jimmy. It's one thing to drop out of high school, but I am not living with a night school dropout. You got that? I got it! Here, go nuts. Wait, are you asking me to take your GED test for you? No, I'm telling you to take my test for me. I'm afraid I can't do that. Why not? There's an old saying, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. I don't understand the thing you just said. And now I'm hungry for sushi. If you want my help, Pop, just ask. I'll be happy to tutor you, but I'm not taking the test for you. Fine. If you won't do it, I'll find someone who will. Sir, I understand you wish me to take the high school equivalency exam for you. Is that correct? Ah, crap. Can you believe this? The guy doesn't even speak English. Sir, it is my native language. You getting any of this? Waka, waka, waka. Must be Chinese or something. I was valedictorian of my high school. I have a PhD from Princeton. Speak English! <laughs> So we just gotta make a few stops on Albert Street. Eyes on the road! You're trying to get us killed? What are you looking at? Aw, oh, nuts. Don't you get it, Beaks? You don't gotta fly south ever again. Unless the cops are chasing you. Did I or did I not just tell you to keep your freaking eyes on the road? <laughs> What the hell? It looks like you whacked a library in here. There are two blue marbles and three red cups. How many different ways can you place the marbles into the cup? I can't do this, Cook. I'm disabled. Oh, for the love of God, you're not disabled. We both know you didn't quit high school because you had to earn a living. You quit because you wouldn't <laughs> ask anyone for help. Because of your stupid pride. Your stupid, stubborn, sexy pride. Cookie, <coughs> where we come from, a man doesn't ask for help. A man does things for himself. There's only one thing I want you to do for me, Jimmy. Name it. Pass. I want you to pass. <coughs> Wait a minute. Two balls, three cups, six! The answer is six! <sighs> uh, Petey? Yeah, Pop? I need you. <sighs> I need you. 
You need a helicopter? You're having a stroke? Timmy's in the well? Timmy's in the well? Help! I need your freaking help! All right, you got it. But if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it my way. You're gonna become a lean, mean learning machine. When I'm through with you, you're gonna eat Latin and crap prime numbers. <laughs> Read. Faster, faster. <clears throat> Read, read. Okay, but why is he exercising? Because that's the way he learns. Pick it up, faster, faster. Slow down, check your work, check your answers. 41, 42, 43, 57, 58, 59, 12 times 12, 144. Again. Ah! Again. Ah! Right. So? Push harder. Educated guests, fill it in. Yeah. Oh! Yay! Read! 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 Yeah. Sorry, the school bell is broken. This is it. You all worked hard. Good luck. You may begin. You honked an oath. Once you're in the life, you can't leave. Sweetie, you gotta let him go. But I don't want to let him go. Honey, it's the call of the wild. Everyone has to leave sometime. Just like one day, you're gonna grow up and leave me. I will? Uh-huh. And it's gonna be the hottest day of my life. But I'll know that even when we're apart, you'll always be with me, here, in my heart. I'm gonna miss you, you mook. <coughs> all right, all right, don't get all mushy on me. <coughs> what if he can't survive in the wild no more? He's a falcone now. He's gonna do just fine. <coughs> He's gonna do just fine. <coughs> Congrati- Oh, f I passed! You passed! Hey, me too! Cheech, that's great. But, and don't take this the wrong way or anything. How? Ah, it wasn't so tough. God damn it, why didn't I think of that? Jimmy, I'm proud of you. You earned it on your own, and no one can take that away from you. I'm sorry I was acting like a high school jerk. Correction, high school graduate jerk. I want to make it up to you. Cookie, would you go to the high school equivalency prom with me? Of course I will. But I need 800 bucks for a dress. What do you mean there's no prom queen? It only took me 30 years to get you to a prom, but here we are, baby. What do you think? I think if you play your cards right, you might get lucky in the car later. <laughs> Every day I'm with you, I'm the luckiest man on Earth. Oh, we are definitely doing it in the back seat. <laughs> Congratulations. Equivalency class of 2013. By the power vested in me by the province of Saskatchewan, I now declare you graduates. <laughs> How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, alias McDougal. Back when I was a capo, keeping the family business away from my actual family was a freaking tap dance. Like the time Petey got himself a girlfriend. 
Peppa Malazzi. Face like a pizza. But we're talking Petey here, so he had to take what he could get. Problem was, her old man was one of my business associates. Listen, kid, I got a feeling Pepperoni Face is gonna break up with you. Impossible! Pepper said I was the only boy for her! Yeah, the only boy willing to kiss a meat love is special, but it ain't that. It's her old man. Are you saying her father doesn't approve of me? It's actually me he ain't big on. We had a little... disagreement. Then how do you know I'm getting dumped? Call it a hunch. Her dad was in the trunk, wasn't he? Now that we live in Canada, I don't worry about that stuff no more. But at the time, it was very stressful. Oh, boo-hoo! Pepper was my first love, and you took her away from me! I still love you, Pep! <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. What a movie! Those were some very realistic decapitations. Trust me. It had an uplifting message. Don't bang your girlfriend in the creepy graveyard. <laughs> All right, give me your wallet. A Canadian mugger? That's adorable. Better do what he says. Yeah, I don't think so, kid. Run! <laughs> Jesus, my son owns a rape whistle? Hey, are you running away? You chicken! Crap, I can't see nothing through this sock! <sighs> That's better. This guy is like the Special Olympics of crime. Don't make me shoot you, old man! <laughs> Change of plans, Pinhead. Hand over your wallet. Here, take it. And take my bus pass. It's still good for six days. Ooh, Velcro. Looks like we got us a real high roller. What a schnook. Fake gun. Sock on his head. This pants. Where's the professionalism? It's punks like this who give crime a bad name. You know, Jimmy, I've been a mugger, but I've never actually been muggered myself. It's nice to know how the other half lives. That looks fun. Quit snooping, Ma. Peeking over your shoulder to see what you're doing is not snooping. Teresa Maria Falcone, is that a picture of you drinking a beer? No, it's, um... An app. It's an app to make it look like I'm drinking the beer. <gasps> and that's an app to make it look like I'm Frenching another girl while frat boys cheer us on. Teresa, why would you do something like that? You know how it is. After five beers, you're on autopilot. And flashing a policeman? That's autopilot too? No, that was tequila. He was about 5'5", five five, dark clothes, wool sock on his head. Possibly from a right foot. Something like this? Relax, McCool. We took care of the mugger. You took care of him? Well then, James Danger McDougal, in the name of the Crown, I have no choice but to place you under arrest for murder. Not today, copper. Come on, Jimmy. <clears throat> Ow. I didn't mean that kind of take care of. What's wrong with you? I meant we stopped the mugger. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, because he's traumatized. Great Gowan's ghost. Petey, you're clearly in shock from your encounter with a criminal element, which is odd considering you're descended from gangsters. Nonetheless, in my estimation, the best way to confront your fear is head on. I invite you to come with me on a police ride along. Won't it be dangerous? This is Saskatchewan. It'll be safer than picking daisies. Petey, get away from there! It could explode in any second! Whoever was behind the wheel likely pried the plates off before they fled the scene. Good eye, Petey. I also found this under the seat. Amphetamines! The driver was a willfully negligent speed freak. I'll do a rundown of the serial numbers and see if we can trace this hophead. Or you could just arrest that guy. It's not my fault! These long hauls are killing me! I didn't mean to run over all those school children! School children? <laughs> Never mind. 
Cover your ears, Petey. I am about to do something most un-Canadian. Wait, we don't need to use unnecessary violence. Observe. Spectacular! Physics, it's nature's policeman. Come along, little trooper. For Canada, where no one turns a blind eye to police brutality! Hey, McCool, you lost weight. Oh, what's wrong with your face? Guess who's gonna be a junior cop? What do you mean, junior cop? I signed up with the Provincial Internship Group of Law Enforcement Trainees. My only male heir is gonna be a frickin' piglet? Hey, just like Cousin Carlo. Good old Cousin Carlo. The crookedest cop in all the five boroughs. Hey, officer, stop that! I just need a parent to sign this permission form. No son of mine's joining the Bacon Brigade. McCool said you might feel this way. McCool? It's bad enough he's got me on the straight and narrow. Now he's brainwashing my boy? You got all the mentor you need right here. What am I supposed to learn from you? Plenty. Robbery, extortion, pandering. I'm like a college of wise guy knowledge. Oh, for God's sake. Here you go, sweetie. Thanks, Mom. You're letting him join the pork patrol? What kind of parent are you? He's just being a rebellious teenager. At least he's not getting drunk like his wino sister. Hey! Shut up, Rummy. Well, I ain't living with no 5-0. Don't worry, I'll make it look like an accident. Gina, no garroting your brother. When did you stop being fun? I can't believe Petey's turning his back on our way of life. He's giving up pasta? No! He's rejecting my whole family heritage. I rejected mine, too, when I gutted my father like a goat. Yeah, but Gramps had it coming. I guess the wisdom of our ancestors is gonna die with me. Don't worry, Jimmy. If you die, I'll eat enough pasta for both of us. Out of the car! Oh, no! Not you guys again! I'll give you a head start, punk. Please, don't hurt me. I'm new at this. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm pathetic. I can't mug anyone. I totally blew carjacking. I'll never figure out how to be a criminal. I'll never figure out how to be a criminal. Guess who's gonna be a junior cop? Criminal. Cop. Criminal. Cop. Criminal. Come with me if you want to learn. Are you a Terminator? No, kid. I'm a learninator. Enough with the fucking rhymes, Jimmy. Who do you think you are, Mother Goose? All right, Benny, this'll be your room. Wow. No one's ever been this nice to me. Thanks, Mr. Jimmy. This is nice, Jimmy. You're really giving back to the community. If Petey don't want my pearls of gangsterly wisdom, then I'll pass them on to Benny over there. Jimmy, I don't often throw around words like hero, so I won't. I'm just a simple man trying to make the world a worse place, one kid at a time. Grace, help me with my daughter's booze problem. That's good. Booze problem? Try raising a teenager with the power to turn water into wine. Ah, oh, mama mia, bathtub was permanently stained purple. Jesus was a lush? It got so bad we had to put him in AAA. Ancient Alcoholics Anonymous. Didn't work. Little punk refused to acknowledge a higher power. No way, ma. I am the higher power. God, the ego on this kid. 
So what did you do? I took him down to the Dead Sea and said, you turn that into wine and drink every drop. He chugged it like a champ. Then he punched the centurion, trashed the temple, and ran off with a whore from Babylon. But he never got drunk again. Wow. The things they left out of the Bible. No kidding. Like his brother Rusty. What? And I've said too much. Sorry, Petey. I know paperwork is dull, but it's a big part of law enforcement. Oh, I love paperwork. In fact, I just solved some cold cases. Which ones? All of them. Sweet Da Vinci's inquest. You solved 27 years of cold cases? I can see how they baffle a less intelligent cop, but it's all in a day's work for junior officer <laughs> Petey McNugal. He's not with me. Teresa, we need to talk. Whoa. Is not mine. It is now. You are going to sit here and drink this until you learn the terrible things alcohol does to a person. Works for me. Cheers. That's it. Drink it up, Alki. After I'm through with you, you'll never want to look at liquor again. Hmm. Is this a Chianti? It's nice. You want some? Well, since it's already open. Did I ever tell you how Gina happened? Your father got home from stabbing Frederico the Fink. And let me tell you, <laughs> he wasn't through poking stuff. Make it stop! Make it stop! If you're gonna hide out in Mexico, stay away from the senioritas. Before you know it, you'll have eight kids in a job cutting lawns in El Paso. <laughs> what the hell is this now? It's my mule. McCool lent him to me for being a junior super cop. Congratulations! An ass for an ass. Ha! <laughs> Good one, Mr. Jimmy. Uh, who are you? Well, since you're so busy being super cop, I decided to mentor this wayward kid. I gotta take a dump. That Mr. Jimmy's such a great guy. You're lucky he's your dad. Listen, Bernie, is it? You probably think you're special to my dad, but he's using you just like he used Cheech's Mexican stepkids to work his lawn care racket in El Paso. Papa Cheech, please don't go back to New York. Get back to work. So Mr. Jimmy's just using me? Why? To get back at me. And once he's done, he'll drop you right back in the gutter. Tell him not to bother. I can drop myself in the gutter. <laughs> Ma, you should not be driving. Shut up. I'm going to the store for wine. And breath mints, in case I get pulled over. Ma'am, have you been drinking? I'm fine. Step out of the vehicle, ma'am. I'm fine. I'm fine. Ma'am, you're under arrest for drunk driving. What the hell are you doing? Sir, I have the situation under control. I need you to step back. I'm gonna step into your ass if you don't take off those bracelets. Ah! Ah! <laughs> it burns! You were warned, sir. Petey, you should be ashamed busting your own mother and father. I was just following procedure. You threatened an officer of the law. Do the crime, do the time, Pop. <laughs> what are you doing? Something I should have done a long time ago. A Petey! <laughs> this is madness! Following the letter of the law is one thing, but pepper spraying your own father... Twice! ...is conduct unbecoming a piglet. You are so done playing CSI Regina. No, I'm not. Mom signed the permission form. I can be a piglet as long as I want. Permission revoked. Come on, Jimmy. Mama wants a cheeseburger. Sorry, Petey. I'll need your hat, uniform, and badge. And your mule. Uh. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! What the hell? Is it just me, or is the house roomier? Holy crap! Benny friggin' robbed us! The kid learned good. 
They even took the vent covers. I am so proud of that thieving, lying, low-down, dirty bastard. Too bad I gotta kill him. Betty stole my laptop! Benny stole all my shoes! Benny stole my Dora DVDs! What? I gotta hablo espanol for when I deal with the cartels. Benny didn't take none of my stuff. My eight tracks and thigh master are right where I left them. Too bad you got me kicked off the force or I'd totally catch him and get our stuff back. Don't even talk to me, Pepper Spray Patty. Fine! Enjoy sitting on your invisible couch watching invisible TV. What's he talking about? I don't see no invisible couch. What happened last night? Did I do this? No, but you did do this. Quit judging me! Jesus, Mary and Joseph, what kind of role model am I? I don't know, Ma. You tell me. <laughs> I can't believe Benny stole from me after I treated him like my own son. You treat your own son like crap. Well, there you go. I treated him better than my own son. We don't need Petey to find this clown. We'll do it our way. Where's Benny? Who? Where's Benny? What's a Benny? Where's Benny? Ah, shit. Sorry, sister. Such language! Oh! You know, Jimmy, as nuns go, she was actually pretty, uh, gentle. <laughs> Petey, I decided to forgive you for pepper spraying me. Can't find Benny, huh? I'm out of leads on this one. I can't help you. I'm not a junior cop anymore. From what I heard, you were the best junior cop this town's ever seen. Where'd you hear that? Down at the station, when I was signing you back up for Piglet. Really? That's awesome! Wait a minute. You're not using me to get back at Benny, are you? Maybe a little. Well, good, because I want to bust that son of a bitch. But if we're going to do this, we do it my way. By the book. You got it. This is going to be great. Just you and me. It'll be like an 80s buddy cop movie. He's a hotshot mini cop with a mega mind. He's a retired wise guy who just wants his couch back. Chief, I ain't this kid's babysitter. No. You're his new partner. You, do it more by the book. You, do it less by the book. Ah! Jimmy Falcone, Petey Falcone, in Jimmy's Way. Petey's Law. Jimmy's Way. Petey's Law. Fine, Jimmy's Way. All right, we agree on a title. Now let's quit wasting time and catch this guy. <laughs> Oh, God. This goddamn headache. Time to rub it in, huh? Well, go on. Tell your mother what an ass she made of herself. Actually, seeing you wasted was a real eye-opener. I can see how drinking too much can turn someone into a total loser. A total loser? Really? You mean it? Ma, I swear, no booze until I'm 19. 21. We're in Canada. It's 19 here. 18 if I go to Manitoba. In Quebec, it's like 12. You go have fun. But if a frat boy gives you a drink, make him take the first sip. Thanks, Ma. 12? Man, them French know how to live. I can't believe you tracked Benny down so fast. How'd you do it? Forensics? Informants? You hire a psychic? <laughs> no, I found them selling our stuff on Craigslist. Way to go, Columbo. And... My outfit's essential to the plan, right? Because if not, you're grounded. You must be Ingmar and Brunhilde. Brunhilde? Yeah, you're grounded. Which one of you is Ingmar? Yeah, yeah, that's me. My wife and I are looking to buy an entire house full of stuff. I got a house full of stuff to sell. A lot of this stuff is tacky crap, so I'll give it to you cheap. Yeah. You agreed. By the book? Oh, right. Sorry, son. <gasps> Mr. Jimmy! Ow! That hurt! Hey, I taught him that move. Pop, he's getting away. Don't worry. I got this. Oh! Petey, you're brilliant! It's
It's just like that game with the mouse trap. What's it called? Oh! Mouse trap! Petey, no! Do it by the book! Screw the book. This time, it's personal. Wasn't it always personal? Come on, take the shot. <laughs> I can't do it! Good for you, kid. He's a dumbass punk, but he don't deserve to die. You did the right thing. He could walk away from that. Maybe not. <sighs> Pop, stay with me. Pop? Pop! We're not that different. Sure, I'll never be a crook, but I'm still your son. Pop? Pop? Pop! <laughs> Knock it off, Cheech. It ain't funny anymore. All right, Doc says I can go. That was some interesting police work, Jimmy. It was all Petey. And he would have brought Benny in if that plane hadn't somehow got to him first. So, McCool, you gonna give him his mule back? Yes, about that. Unfortunately, Petey won't be reinstated as a piglet. What? He was so good, he was making the other cops look bad. And that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> no one laughed at work, either. That's okay. I think I've had enough of police work. And let's face it, cops don't earn sh**. Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? I'm Jimmy McDougal, formerly Jimmy Falcone. I used to be a big shot in the New York Mafia until I turned rat to keep from being whacked. It wasn't easy turning on my old friends, but them turning on me first made it a little easier. But the hardest thing I ever had to do was to tell my family we had to go into witness protection. So, guys, I got something important to say. You know how all my friends are trying to kill me? Yes, Daddy. It's all you ever talk about. You really shouldn't bring your work home with you. Well, I was thinking, to fix the problem, maybe we should leave town. What? I hate you! But I'm Blas Campo! We love it here! No freaking way! For once, I agree with your idiot uncle! No freaking way! <laughs> okay, let's move. And that's how we came to be living here in Vagina... Regina... Saskatchewan. But if you think it's going to keep this family from sticking together, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Okay, you, Elephant Man, your pony didn't come in, you're into me for 500. Dollface, you done all right, you got three big ones coming. This ain't been your week, Randy. Your no-show puts you in a hole for 10 large, and I want something now. This just ain't satisfying. But in for a penny, in for a pound. I see. No, thank you for calling Principal Pistagas. Do you know what your daughter did? I just got off with the principal. Got off with the principal. <laughs> this is serious. Gina's suspended for a week. Apparently, she's been selling candy to other kids, which is forbidden on school property. Look, I'm sure she has a good reason. It was probably just to make money. Hey, Ma, guess what? I was sent home early for good behavior. Oh, and how do you plan to explain the rest of the week, young lady? Busted. Damn straight you busted. Your principal called. No TV for a week. Pissed again! You done? Uh-huh. Ah. <sighs>
Teresa, can we have a girl talk? Of course. I'm just glad you're finally admitting that you're a girl. A guy starts one Twilight fan club and he's branded for life. I need help with a girl. That girl. <laughs> now, if she has bad taste too, you got it made. I can't even bring myself to talk to her. Aw, that's so sweet. Coming to your big sister for advice on love. All right, Petey. I'll have you banging her in no time. I was hoping to carry her books, but whatever works. First thing we need to do is get this girl to know who you are. But she can't know the real you or she'd set herself on fire. You've got to be strong, confident, sure of yourself. Okay, strong, confident, sure of myself. You think she'd like that? Petey, women don't like wimps. They want to be swept off their feet by a dominant, rock-hard son of an oil baron. What? Just go over there and be aggressive. She's yours for the taking. I'm strong, tough, alpha. Strong, tough, alpha. Hey! What? Uh, love me? Wow. Just, wow. That's it. My entire stash. You clean me out. No TV for a week, young lady. Never do something like this again. You've embarrassed the whole family. Come on, no one's really embarrassed. It's just a figment of speech. It's not that. How am I ever going to learn to be a no-good hustler if I ain't got no role models? <laughs> you got me, don't you? But you're all washed up. Washed up? You know, I still got a thing or two I can teach you. For example, I never would have got caught for moving cheap loot like this. Whoa, whoa, this Canadian candy is primo stuff. You can't even get this in the States. Try it. First taste is free. It's all free. We just took it from you. My God, he's choking. Someone call an ambulance. What's 911 in Canadian? Holy mother of God, that is good. It's better than good. It's, what's a word that means better than good? Oh, what's all this racket about? A man can't hear his own pornography. Try this. It's Canadian candy. I thought Pam Anderson was Canadian candy. Maron, this stuff's better than anything we got back home. Fat Americans are paid through the nose for this stuff. Hold it, hold it. I'm getting an idea. It's coming. It's percolating. It's percolating. It's dripping. Dripping. Got it! We'll smuggle this stuff into the States and make a fortune. We'll take prohibition to a whole new level. All right, boys, you're off the hook. This is the thing I've been looking for. Something to get my blood flowing. What do you think, Cook? Mm. Oh. Passport. See, Jimmy? I told you bribing a border guard would be a snap. Some suspicious looking boxes, but there's nothing we can do. They're taped shut. <laughs> Great to be back in the old U.S. of A. Hey, everyone. I'm Captain Candy Pants. Come and get your candy in my pants. <laughs> yes, yes, keep going. Get deeper. Scram, we're taking over. This is our turf now. But I always work here. I'll give you a free taffy pull. I got your taffy pull right here. <laughs> You're all working for me now. You got a problem with that? Like taking candy from a baby. And then selling it to another baby. Here's your taste, boss. The hell you doing in fur coats? I told you to keep a low profile. You're gonna get us all pinched. It's in my wife's name. What did I just tell you? Not too bright, but the good little learners. You know, I haven't felt this alive since that day I got stabbed at the racetrack. Yeah, those were good times. Mister, I'd like four of everything. Looks good. Cheech, give me stuff. There you go, kid. The finest uncut cocoa solids Canada has to offer. Don't do them all at once. Thanks, but I'm not the one who needs advice. We're shutting you dirtbags down! Freeze! Food and Delicious Candy Administration! 
You're under arrest for supplying a weak-willed American populace with treats from a different and therefore inferior country. I was framed! I'll wait for you, Jimmy! I can't believe how much this thing vibrates. Take your time, Jimmy! What in God's name is wrong with you? Uh, hello. I try and I try and I try. I play the bad guy, I play the good guy. Every day, I wake up and I say, today's the day they'll get it. But do you? No, we don't know. What more do I have to do? I mean, really, you tell me, what more must I do for you to at long last get it? I don't know. I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. Maybe if I can just understand what goes on in those warped little minds of yours. Why would you risk everything for just a few hundred dollars? Jimmy told me to! McCool, you wouldn't understand. Try me. I miss the action. I sit around the house being a dad. I go to work and have a job. What kind of life is that? But something like this, it gave me that adrenaline rush I used to get every day in the old life. Is that all? Well, why didn't you say so? Jimmy, if you want an adrenaline rush, I know just the thing. You gotta be shitting me. This, my friend, is action. Looks more like a bunch of dusty guys trying to put the moves on farm animals. On the surface, perhaps. But look deeper, Jimmy. Imagine it. You're on top of a bull, hanging on for dear life. Your blood is boiling in your veins, adrenaline flooding your brain. Your only thought, to best the beast before he takes your life. You don't hear the roar of the crowd flowering their adulation upon you. You can't hear them chanting. Jimmy, Jimmy. Jimmy! No, they're chanting McCool, McCool, McCool. Jimmy, Jimmy! McCool, McCool! A hundred bucks says Jimmy, Jimmy. Another hundred says I kick your ass! Jimmy, I don't gamble for money. That's what gambling is. But if you insist on humiliating yourself, I will wager you for honor. Great. How much is that in American? The loser must, in a clear baritone, extending from the diaphragm, declare that the other is a better man than himself. You're on. I got one question. If a man does it to a girl sheep, that's not gay, right? I mean, the church is okay with that. I don't know. I'm not Catholic. Hello? What do you mean, hello? I've been trying to reach you for two days. I figured I'd be your one phone call. Cookie, calm down. McCool was my one phone call. They took my cell phone, and by the time I got it back, I forgot. What? Oh, you forgot. I already told the kids you were dead. Gina, your father's alive. Put his cigars back where you found him. I just can't catch a break. Hello? Is this the guy who said, and I quote, I never would have got caught for moving cheap loot like this. Well, you did get caught, and now I'm smoking all your cigars. And that's what you get for cutting me out of my own scam. Cookie, who was that? Jimmy, the whole family's going to hell in a handbasket because of you. Look, Cook, I'm sorry. I'll be home as soon as I can. But I'm at a rodeo, and I gotta prove to McCool that I'm a better man than myself. Could you just say you're at a strip joint, you fat f**k? What did she say? The usual. I'm not sure about this, Teresa. Petey, really? This is how you have to dress if you want girls to notice you. It just feels a little busy. Listen, Dum Dum, I watch a show called The Way of the Pickup, and the guy who hosts it, Enigma, says if you want to get the girls, you gotta dress like a schizo freak. It's called peacocking. Well, I refuse to follow the advice of some perverted charlatan. My dignity is too important. He's been with 482 different women. Should I add a top hat? Okay, Petey, Enigma says that 90% of becoming a successful pickup artist is learning to overcome your fear of rejection. And to do that, you need to get rejected a lot. Teresa, I could write a book about being rejected. In fact, I have. But it was rejected. You're gonna ask out every girl who walks past you, and you're gonna get rejected so many times, you'll never care about it again. But what if one of them accepts? Petey, if you're not gonna take this seriously... Back off, bitch! Those shoes are mine! <sighs> Excuse me, ma'am, would you like to go on a date? Hello there, miss. You look lovely today. Excuse me, but I, I couldn't help but notice. Oh, 
Teresa's right. This isn't so bad. Who cares if they don't like me? It's very freeing. I'm a bedwetter. Do you think I have pretty eyes? I masturbate all the time. All the time. Hey, you want to play with my boa? Why, yes, I would, young man. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. It's okay, honey. I saw you. It's very sexy. Ah, sh**. You sure you want to go through with this, McCool? I'm not going to go easy on you. It's not my style. So I'll give you one last chance to back out. McCools don't back out, Jimmy. They thrust in. Okay, it's your funeral. I just got one question. What's with these freaking pants? Me? I like them. I enjoy the draft. Woo! <laughs> Yee-haw! Yee-haw! Yeah! Okay? I can't take it no more, Cheech. My face is cut, my muscles are torn, my ribs are cracked, and there's no skin left on my ass. You saying you're giving up? Jimmy, you can't. You'd have to tell McCool he's a better man. Plus, you can still win, because a bull riding's worth more points than all the other events combined. How's that for exposition? I don't know. Maybe I can pull it together for one more event. Watch this, Jimmy. No hands! <laughs> is the toughest, most manliest man in the whole wide world. McCool? Yes? I can't watch this. You are a better man than I. Thank you, Jimmy. It takes a big man to say that. And I think it's safe to say you found the action you were looking for. Oh, and one more thing. I found something I believe is yours. Hey, Jimmy. He just handed you your ass. I clob at him! Pops, Pops, what was the rodeo like, huh? What did that copper stupid face look like when he saw you're the biggest, baddest guy out there? Did you ride the horse like this, huh? Or like this? <laughs> oh, well, you know, I pretty much just rode the horse the normal horse riding way. Wow. I started to think that maybe you'd lost all your moves, that you'd gone soft, you know? But you sure showed me cool, didn't you, Pops? Yeah, I sure did. Too bad you couldn't have been there to see it, because turns out I did so well, so perfected it, that they decided there will never have to be another rodeo ever again anywhere, ever. <laughs> so much for walking me home, Petey. It's become such a dangerous neighborhood. You live between a church and a police station. Well, you never know. Well, I guess I should be heading off. No, no, stay. I'll make some cocoa. Um, I'm not sure this is appropriate. Well, why wouldn't it be appropriate? I suppose it wouldn't be if something untoward were to happen. Are you thinking about something untoward? No, 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 of course not. Well, good. Coco it is. Hot? Creamy? <gasps> Coco. You know, I like talking to you, Petey. People are so hung up with age, but really, it's just a number. But yours is so much higher than mine. You seem nervous, Petey. Are you nervous, Petey? I mean, I guess so. I know. It must be so hard to be a young man these days. All the rules are changing. The pressures, the contradictions, the confusion. Yeah, I'm pretty confused right about now. I know. And I want to hear all about it. There, there. 
There, there. There. <laughs> Quite the day you've had. You must be exhausted becoming a rodeo champion. Nah, it wasn't too bad. Kind of invigorating, actually. You're lying. Why do you say that? Because I found this. It's not mine. Oh, please. You didn't beat McCool. Odds are he mopped the floor with you. The man is practically built for horse wrangling. Or lassoing, or caressing the body of a middle-aged woman. Why is your upper lip sweating? It's not! And why'd you lie to me? You know I don't care if you win a stupid rodeo or not. It's not the rodeo. It's everything. I used to be someone. I used to be the big man in town. And now, I'm not even a man. I'm just some poor schnook who has to tell a Mountie he's a better man than me. It's demobilizing. You shut your mouth. You're Jimmy Falcone, and Jimmy Falcone's a fighter, not a quitter. I don't give a damn about a rodeo or losing it to some Mountie, but you do. So suck it up and be the man I fell in love with. You're right. I'm gonna take that Mountie down. Hand me my ass. Jimmy, the other way. Ass backwards, so that's where the expression comes from. <laughs> Smells like manure. Jimmy, what are you doing here? You already conceded. Yeah? Well, I'm unconceit. You know what I said you're a better man than me? Well, I'm taking it back. Even in a minute, bury this guy on As you wish, but I do advise against it. There's a reason bull riding is worth more than half the points. It's one of the most dangerous sports in the world. So is cheerleading, but I still do it. Now, out of my way. Where the hell have you been? So unclean. Oh my god! No effing way! You did it! Congratulations! Ah, ah, ah! No more touching! I don't ever want to be touched again! Or smell mothballs, or see a doily, or eat a hard candy, or see dentures come out, or see weird stockings that go just below the knee, or see breasts that go just below the knee. He just completely ignored me. That is so hot. Petey! Petey, wait up! All right, Bull. I've got a lot riding on this. So like I told my wife on our wedding night, give me eight seconds and I'll be on my way. Whoa! Ow! Oh! Okay, I asked nicely. Now we do it my way. Oh! Italian guy. Oh. Oh. Ah. Oh. Stay down, Jimmy! Don't get up, Daddy! You can't do it, Pop! Stop it, Pop! It's embarrassing! Jimmy, enough! <laughs> ah. Jimmy, stop! You're killing yourself! You have heart. Tremendous heart, I admit it, but no bet is worth this! It is to me. All right, if it will make you end this madness, fine. You're a better man than I, Jimmy McDougal. A better man than I. Tell me something I don't know. Jimmy, you did it! He said it! You won! Way to hang in there, Pops! It was amazing, Daddy! Jimmy, can you do it again? I was in the john. I began the day as a schnook. But now, I am a man! Me too. La 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 how you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, alias McDougal. 
Before I moved to the not-so-great white north, I was a capo in the mob. Crime's been in my family for generations. It all started with my grandpa's, Giuseppe. He was a shoemaker in the old country. Real handsome devil. Anyway, one day the village Don asked him to make a pair of shoes. The Don believed shoe size was a reflection of his manhood. His size for manhood. He could have drove a big car or bought a frickin' boat or something, but the guy wanted big shoes. What are you gonna do? Personally, I'd have blamed the whole thing on gravity, but gravity wasn't invented back then, so Giuseppe had to skip town. By the time he got to the next village, he was met by fear and respect. Dante Respect and Luciano Fear had a family that needed some muscle. Giuseppe just whacked at dawn, so he seemed like a good fit. <laughs> All those years dealing with feet made him kinda homicidal, so Grandpops moved up the ranks pretty fast. Then, one day, he came to America. You mean he got run out of Italy? Point is, even though I'm living like a schmuck in Regina, I like to think he's looking down on me and smiling. And wondering why the hell you threw his family business down the crapper. You know what? Just forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. All right, scumbag. You think you can come onto my turf and just take what you want? Do you even know who I am? You got three seconds to get the hell out of here. Now, is that nice? I give you a chance to walk away, and you just laugh in my face. Did you just eat a condom? All right, enough screwing around. Say hello to my enormous friend. Yeah, that's right. Go home to your mother, you overgrown rat. Ugh. To conclude my show and tell, if a man at the park asks you into the woods to find his lost dog, remember, there is no dog. Good job, Mary. You go sit with Prudence the safety hippo. Gina, your turn. All right, let's get this over with. I want to talk about personal safety. There's a lot of creeps and weirdos out there. Not to mention stoolies, deadbeats, and guys who just don't listen. You gotta protect yourself. So, you're gonna need one of these. <gasps> She's got a gun! Relax, it ain't loaded. Now it's loaded. <laughs> All right, who took my facial stuff? No idea. Jesus Christ, you look like a 60-year-old avocado. Well, I took care of that raccoon. Sent him running with his tail between his legs. At least I think it was his tail. If not, you should see the wang on that rodent. Breaking news. Celine Dion Elementary is under lockdown after reports of a gunman holding a class hostage. That's Gina's school. Oh, my God. We got to get down there right now. No can do. This stuff takes 20 minutes. Jimmy, we got to go. We got to... Where the hell's Jimmy? What are you waiting for? Let's roll! Good question, Billy. Personally, I like to go for the knees, but if you gotta take someone out, give them two in the chest and one in the head. After that, he ain't getting up no more. Okay, any other questions? <gasps> Besides, can I hold the gun? Aww. All right, we need firepower. Wanna take the Uzis? Nah, I don't want to look like a show-off. I hate to say it, but shouldn't we just let the cops handle this? You worry too much. We know what we're doing. Shots fired! We need guns, damn it! I'm filling out the requisition as fast as I can! Get your ass in there! And take some grenades! I can't remember which classroom's Gina's. I only been here once for interviews. And I was pretty drunk. Who? <laughs> There they go, Saskatchewan's finest. 
Fear not, Cookie. I came as soon as I heard. No time for pleasantries. I'd better get inside. But may I say, it's a glorious morning today. Damn it, McCool, there's no time. No sh! Get in there and save my daughter! For Canada! Where we downplay our increasingly frequent gun violence! If there ain't any more questions, I guess I'm done. Oh! Ah! Gina! I've been looking all over for you! Oh, crap. You're the guy with the gun. Whoa! You brought shotguns? And a troll! This ain't good. We better beat it. Hey, McCool! You here for safety week? It appears you own a number of illegal guns, Jimmy. I'm going to have to conduct a thorough search of the premises. Do you have any idea the paperwork this is going to generate? Do you? You're blowing this way out of pro 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 size. Pop, this fell again. I told you it's too heavy to use as a curtain rod. Daddy, you left this in the bathroom. I almost dried my hair with it. Really? Both of you? Exactly now? Jimmy, I can't keep this under my mattress no more. Keeps poking me in my sensitive areas. Sweet Kiefer Sutherland, Jimmy. Why you gotta make such a big deal? It's just a few home security items. Just having that one within our borders violates the Geneva Convention. This is just like Chuck Heston warned us. One day the government's gonna show up and take all our guns. Next thing you know, we're in camps, getting brainwashed about evolution and global warming. I got a constitutionary right to bear arms. Yeah, you can't tell people what to do with their sleeves. Perhaps you possessed that right when you were American, but you're Canadian now. It's true, Pop. Canada's Charter of Rights and Freedoms does not protect gun ownership. Or as they say in Quebec, la Charte canadienne des droits et libertés ne protège pas la possession d'armes. I memorized it in both official languages. Now you're turning my own son against me. And you got him talking Spanish. Is this everything? You're not holding out on me, are you? Me? Hold out on a cop? Never! Then what's that slight bump on your waistband? I'm a little excited. Thanks for noticing. Lift your shirt, Jimmy. Is this how you get your kicks, McCool? You really ought to see a therapist. For Christ's sake, just hand it over! What? You too? McCool's right. Like it or not, we're Canadian. Don't you think it's time you assimilated? No! I've had this gun since I was ten. No one's taken Remington Steel! Hand it over, Jimmy. What if I don't? Then I shall be forced to arrest you. You'll be charged, tried, convicted, then remanded to jail. The days will be lonely and the nights long. Until your cellmate, Rusty, sells you to the skinheads who run the yard. No amount of toilet-brewed prison wine will erase the memory of their oddly gentle love. You want this gun, McCool? You're gonna have to pry it from my cold, dead pants. Hands, Jimmy. I think you mean hands. Whatever, you're not getting it. I'm a responsible gun owner. Hey, where'd it go? Ian! Motherfucker! Ian! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I was just getting my rhythm. <laughs> Look who's back in town. Feeling strong today? Cause I got something for you. Oh crap. All right, let's do it the old fashioned way. Put up your dukes, uh, claws, hoofs. What do you call them foot hands? All right, which one is first? Well, kid, you really did it this time. They're gonna kick you out of school. Yes! Unless you take this medication. No! They're putting me on drugs? It's called a pacify. It reduces psychotic tendencies in children. Side effects may include dry mouth, disorientation, nausea, and increased thoughts of murder. Huh. Well, I'm sure they wouldn't prescribe it if it wasn't 100% safe. Tell that to Mr. Flip. His ma took thalidomide. Look how he turned out. Mr. Flip turned out just fine. It's not his fault he's a monster. I ain't taking him. I don't like this either. But if you don't, they'll take you away from us and send you to a special school where you gotta wear a helmet. You always told me drugs was bad. This is medicine. It comes from a nice man in a laboratory. Drugs come from a bad man on the street corner. You mean like the guys who used to work for Pop? Quit stalling, kid. Pill or helmet? Your call. There. You happy? Your daughter's a freaking druggie now. 
Yeah, congrats! You just won Mother of the Year! Oh, God, I hope this is the right thing to do. Ah! Ah! Don't touch me with that thing! Ah! I just got rolled by a f***ing raccoon! Ever since I got up today, I've been feeling off balance. And I got a persistent itch in my trigger finger. Don't you see, Pop? When you gave McCool your gun, you gave up an essential part of your American identity. You're right! Now I gotta steal it back. That's gonna be hard to do with no gun. Or you could finally embrace life as a Canadian. How the hell do I do that? By embarking on a long voyage of introspection and self-discovery. Self-discovery? Like what you were doing when I walked in here? No, I'm talking about a spiritual makeover. Did someone say makeover? What? My fashion sense was tingling. Jeans, jean shirt, and a jean jacket. It's a Canadian tuxedo. <clears throat> These jeans are too tight. <clears throat> ah! What was that? My balls just went back in. <gasps> and they're out. I still don't get why I'm tied up. I'm gonna teach you the most important part of being Canadian. You need to suppress your innate American urge for self-preservation and apologize to me. For what? Ow, your mother! It's the Canadian way. I wrong you, you say sorry to me. Ow! Ow! You're grounded. What are you doing? I'm using aversion therapy to turn pop Canadian. Thanks for grounding me last week. Thanks for taking away my makeup. Thanks for not letting me date a black guy. It wasn't racial. He was 40 years old. Oh! <sighs> Thanks, Petey. I feel a lot better. Sorry. Sorry. Really f***ing sorry. I believe we've made a breakthrough. What's going on, Petey? What's the big surprise? I present to you... Canadian Dad. I don't get it. He looks the same, except he's dressed as a village people. Go on, Pop. Say it. Sorry. No, the other thing. <sighs> Forget about it. Oh my god, he's a whole new man! This calls for a celebration. You're finally a real Canadian. I'm so proud of you. What the f***? Hi, Mommy. Hi, Daddy. Guess what? I did all my homework. You did your homework? Uh-huh. And then I cleaned my room, and then I cleaned Petey's room, and then Uncle Chichi and me had a tea party. Who wants huggy boos? Gina, you feeling OK? Petey made you Canadian, too? Oh, no, Daddy. It's because of the magic happy pills Mommy gave me. These rainbows are made of smiles, wishes, and good dreams. <gasps> Speaking of good dreams, I'm gonna skedaddle off to bed. Night-night! Wow, I guess that Apacify stuff really works. If you want me to babysit tonight, I'm gonna need a bottle of whatever she's on. Jimmy! You didn't yell at the parking guy for scratching the car, you didn't send back that pink chicken, and you gave the squeegee kid a loony instead of running him over. Frankly, I'm blown away by the new you. Hey, we're standing in line here. Those were our tickets. Jimmy, do something. I got it. Sorry my wife yelled at you. Oh, hold this. Here's your purse back. Keep it. Looks better on you. Some night out. I really wanted to see that movie, but no, Captain Canada here had to drive those mooks to the hospital. You're the one who wanted me to be Canadian. The Jimmy I know would have taken apart those line jumping jag offs. Being Canadian doesn't mean you gotta let people walk all over you. I didn't let them walk all over me. I took the high road. Yeah, the high road to Warsburg. I wanted you to give up your gun, not your entire freaking manhood. What are you saying, I ain't a man no more? Because if you want a man, I'll show you a man. Come here, baby. Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> oh, there's my big, strong man. There's those big, strong arms. And there's your big, strong, your big, strong. Give me a sec. Where are you, big fella? Well, let me concentrate. Come on, come on. Come on, what's the matter with you? Up. Come on, Sozich. 
Says each, not a meatball. Says each, says each. <sighs> we could just cuddle. Tonight on TBS, Matthew McConaughey in Failure to Launch. <laughs> Hey, Jimmy, who died? What? I'm fine. You can't fool me. I know something's wrong. Spit it up. Well, I got this friend. See? He's having a little problem. Stop right there. Who's this f***ing friend? I thought I was your friend. Shut up. The guy's in trouble. You don't want to help? Get out of here. Okay, relax. I'm listening. All right, look. Not to get too specific, but let's just say my friend, who is not me, is no longer able to achieve or maintain a viable erection. Quit beating around the bush. What's your friend's problem? His ring-a-ding-ding's got no dung. Oh, why you gotta be so graphic? Okay, I got this. Old Cheech knows a thing or two about a thing or two. You do? Oh, yeah. There's a simple solution. Really? Thank God. Tell your friend to blow his brains out. What? That's right. It's over. He ain't a man no more. Tell him to make a dignified exit. You'll be doing him a favor. Jesus, I was mad at the guy. Now I just pity the poor son of a bitch. <sighs> Hi, Daddy. Can I nudge in there and brush Mr. Chompers? Sure, kid. Whatever. Oh, who's a big glummy pants? Let's see a smile, Captain. Frowns a lot. Mommy! Daddy's being a grumpy puss. What's going on in here? Daddy's sad, Mommy. Do you think we should give him some of my magic happy pills? Huh, Mom? No! Those are for you. And not for much longer. Run along now. I don't know about you, Jimmy, but that kid's starting to freak me out. Leave her alone. She's happy. What's wrong with you? A little girl ain't a little girl no more. Can't you see that? Hey, she's Canadian. What do you want? Now, excuse me, I gotta go pay protection to some raccoons. <laughs> What's wrong, Ma? Did you see Petey's internet history? Worse. He turned your father into a Canadian, and now he's not himself. You probably don't want to hear this, but our walls are real thin, and I know you and Dad are having a <coughs> intimacy problem. Oh, God, the thought of... <clears throat> you listening? I know this is gonna sound wrong, but... <clears throat> But I think I can help. Not another uh, uh, word. Teresa, this problem runs a lot deeper than what Oh, you're talking about? Ma, he's an Italian guy. It don't go any deeper than that. You need to make him jealous. When one of my boyfriends doesn't pay attention to me, I flirt with someone else. You should do that. Jesus, forgive me for talking to my daughter about this. Let me get this straight. All I need is some stud to slobber all over me. Jimmy gets jealous, turns into the gorilla that he is, and everything's back to normal? Exactly. And then we never speak of this again. Yes. <laughs> Please. But first... <laughs> we're going to confession. Normally, I wouldn't participate in such subterfuge, but seeing as it's for Jimmy, count me in. All right. When Jimmy walks in, we're going to be on the couch smooching and canoodling. I'll be rubbing your muscles. Don't worry. It don't mean nothing. <laughs> you might want to lose the shirt and oil yourself up a bit, big guy. <gasps> Cookie, get a hold of yourself. It's been a few days. My hormones are raging here. I'll behave. <gasps> Quick, get on the couch. <laughs> Oh, no! My husband has caught us in a compromising position. Surely now he will be so enraged he'll beat the crap out of my lusty paramour. What? No one said anything about- And sweep me off my feet, carry me upstairs, and make angry, righteous love to me. Cook, what are you doing? Or he could skip the beaten up part and go straight to the hot, crazy baboon loving. Look, it's real sweet of you to try and snap me out of this, but you don't gotta debase yourself with this greasy Latin hustler. Jimmy, it's me! Uh... Silencio, muchacho! This is between me and my wife, who I can no longer pleasure. Snap out of it! All of this because you had to give up your stupid gun? The gun was the last thing I had from the old life. I used to be Jimmy Falcone, king of New York! Now I gotta accept that I'm Jimmy McDougal, king of the schnooks. Jimmy, you're a lot of things. A good breadwinner, a loyal husband, a totally half-assed father. 
but you'll never be a schnook. Cook, that's the sweetest thing you've ever said to me. And I wish it was true. Oh, for God's sake, he's killing me here. What do I gotta do to get through to this guy? Jimmy Can't McDougal, former man. Gina, slow down. Jump into a lion cage? Put the kids in danger? What's that, Gina? Just You're in danger? Clear. What do I do, McCool? Tell me. I gotta get down to the school. <laughs> Where's he going? What the hell just happened? I don't know, but this spray tan is giving me a tremendous rash. <laughs> Long enough to get down here, you moron! Oh, what's with you? Why are you being so mean? I thought you was on them good girl pills. I never took those stupid pills. I've been faking it the whole time. What? Why? To get Ma off my freaking back. I've been dumping the pills in the teacher's candy dish, and Prudence, the safety hippo, got into them and went nuts! Hang on a sec, I'm not following. What's a hippo got to do with safety? <laughs> That is one angry, angry hippo. Come on, you son of a bitch. Whoa, I think you killed them. You think? Let's make sure. Come on, yeah. one more. Okay, one for me, yeah. one for you, yeah. Oh, that felt good. All right, kid, I gotta go. You be good now. Good? I mean, you be you. Will do. You know, I kind of feel bad for the kid in that suit. Suit? Jimmy, what happened? I deserve that, Jimmy. Oh my god, you're you again! Did you get a gun or something? Oh, I got one, baby. And it's made of wood! <laughs> Saskatchewan, la 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 Greetings, friends and potential bullies. Before Pop bravely tattled on the mob, there was a time when he had to go what wise fellas and good guys refer to as straight. <laughs> Why are you crying? I just got this hot ass parole officer who's <laughs> making me get a regular job. <laughs> That's for getting pinched in the first place. Once Pop's shattered testes healed, he was well on his way to rehabilitation. Give me two abortions in a basket, double tap and bloody rye toast. Coming right up. First National's got a payroll coming in. You know what to do. Oh. I'm confused, Pop. I understand why you work here, but why does Cheech? The guy likes eggs. What do you want from me? Okay, but Uncle Aldo also works here, and Uncle Sammy, Tootie Marcone, and isn't that Don Gambini delivering milk? <gasps> Petey, shut up. If I didn't know better, I'd think you were still running your organization under the very nose of the New York parole system. Kid, I'm on the straight and narrow. Just trust me, will ya? You once said that trust me was gangster talk for f you. Oh, if my suspicions prove true, I will be very disappointed, Pop. Very disappointed. Thanks for waiting till my kid left. All right, hands up! This is a bust! I had to do another 18 months because of your big mouth. Now that we live in Regina, Pop works a legitimate job every day, and I've never been prouder of him. <laughs> That's for being a rat, which reminds me. <laughs> if you think I'm ever going to forgive you for that, forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it! Oh, forget about it! Petey! I know what's going on in there, and it sure ain't clean! Your son's in there, pile driving his crotch into a coma. Bust the door down! Why would you want to see that? Oh. oh, my God! Pull him up! He must have fainted from shame! What the hell? 
Between you and me, jerk Cousteau, that is not how you masturbate. So what the heck is an Ocean Lab 6? It's a three-month undersea education program I was accepted to, but it's prohibitively expensive. I was underwater so no one would see my tears. When it comes to my kids, there's no such thing as prohibitionally expensive. How much we talking? Whoa, yeah, that ain't happening. I've never had to say this in my life, but I can't afford that. Nice going. Now your father's drowning his sorrows in hot sauce, you selfish little prick. Leave him alone. It's not his fault I'm a workaday schmuck who can't afford underwater nerd school. <sighs> On top of that, I went and ruined my breakfast. I can help with one of them problems. I used to make this for Don Gambini. The man was a notorious overspicer. He'd cover his cannelloni in pepper flakes, and then he'd piss and moan about how hot it was. And when he pissed and moaned, chefs lost their thumbs. Holy crap, these taste like eggs again. The spice is gone. Like I said behind the Don's back. You're welcome, you whiny bitch. I think you got the solution to your money problem right there. Cookie's right. We could use this to extort every Indian restaurant in town. Pay up, or the Vindaloo gets it. Haven't you idiots figured out there's legal ways to make a buck? Course not. Luckily, I have. Now, let's go take the spice out of life. I thought your family could afford Ocean Lab. Teresa's always got so much expensive clothes and jewelry. She gets those from men I'm not supposed to tell my parents about. My family's taking me camping this weekend to cheer me up. Hey, do you want to come along? Maybe we could comfort each other in our time of mutual disappointment? I literally have no experience in this area, so I'm just gonna ask. Are you coming on to me? <laughs> no, silly. Why would I do that? What are you even talking about? Yes! Well then, I'd love to go camping. In fact, I've already pitched my tent. <laughs> Welcome to Scorpion's Hive, the publicly funded